Do What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening. If I guess you're having a fantastic free noon. We are live and alive, ladies and gentlemen, from the sunny district of Pyongyang, from the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the best Korea. The popular Korea. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and MBs. That is where I'm at right now. I have the exact same studio set up inside of the better Korea. Live from Pyongyang, Democratic People's Republic of Korea. You sung that so well. Thank you. I've been studying up on my North Korean dialect. I'm live and alive, ladies and gentlemen. And it's a fucking Tuesday. That's right. It's Tuesday, ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday, April 9th, 2024, yeah? And I'm fucking live. And I'm fucking alive. I'm live. I'm alive. And I hope everyone's having a beautiful Tuesday as well. You know what it fucking is, yeah? You know what it is. You know what's happening. We're not doing a fucking ice today. No ice. No more fucking ice in it. Um... But yeah, I'm live live. This is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news, about what's going on in the world of Asan Asanabi Piker. And let me tell you, a lot is happening. A lot. Last night, I ended the broadcast. I was tired after a half day, eight hours. Ridiculous. Who, why are we paying this guy? I mean, what is happening here? Really? Really? A fucking eight hour day? Really? Half day ass. Most difficult job in the world looking ass. Anyway. Uh, did that eight hour, eight hour half day, obviously. I fucking cooked you guys, you know, basically stole money from you from the hardest job in the world and the on um, the universe, part time, part time piker. And what did I do? I watched Warrior. I've been watching Warrior a lot, and it's it's fine. It's honestly fine. It's not like I don't know. It's just not that good. It's good, but it's not like great. It's good. It could be better. It leaves much to be desired, I would say. But that's right, I finished the first season of Warrior. I think it's good. I will say this much. I think the Kung Fu fight sequences got significantly better by the end of this season. And I'll tell you this much. I'm excited for Shogun. Because tonight is Shogun night. It gets carried hard by the stunt work. The main guy does his own stunt work. It's awesome. Yeah. At first, I, I would say, what do you think of Singapore? It's great. What kind of Chinese is Singapore? And it gets it gets hard carried by that guy sean the black thank you for the raid hope you had a good stream um overall i think i think that i'm just excited because it is tonight is the night baby tonight is the night is shogun night and i get very excited for that guy your merge they sent me the crew neck sweater instead of the tea am i gonna have to send the sweater back or should i give it away i really want the doing a i don't know man just talk to them don't ask me i can't give you answers 
Have you been watching Three Body Problem? I was very disappointed. Not really. Um, I never. I watched the first one. I watched the first one and the first episode, and I didn't like it that much, so I just stopped. But yeah, this morning I woke up. I uh, took I took Kai out to the park. She made so many friends. It was a phenomenal. I mean, incredible major W at the park. I've decided that because I can't get her to fetch like boring toys, you know, like a ball, I've decided that the way to try to get her to fetch, try to get her invested in the fetch game is by playing tug of war with her as a playing tug of war with her as a, as a, you know, after a successful retrieval as a bonus, as a thank you. So yeah, that's what I did. Wait, what? That Civil War movie, they thank Andy No? No fucking way, dude. Are you serious? It can't be the same fucking person. It can't be the same per. It can't be the Andy No we know, bro. Come on. Come on, bro. There's no shot. <laughs> no fucking way. Liberals are so angry. Oh my god, great. I think liberals are angry, but it might be valid, chat. The Civil War movie might get the smoke from a lot of people i'll watch it and i'll give you guys my take inevitably what glasses do you use a brand sold on amazon was recalled i use these bro i think it's good i, I think it doesn't really matter i'm gonna be honest with you i think it doesn't fucking matter okay i'm a, like it's fine my eyes are fine the fit goes harder they classic dad vibes thank you um liberals might be uh, warranted for being angry at this movie because i feel like it boofed it a little bit you got to use Oliver's blast off. He accidentally sent it in a work document and couldn't fully delete it. That's awesome. Daniel Day Kim went to Mogwarts. I yeah, I, I seen that. Um, we'll look at all that stuff. Hold up. Uh, I sent you a discord message regarding connecting you to a legal expert who has uh, provided advisory opinion on the ICJ hearings against Israel. Valuable suggestion in my opinion. Hope you reconsider. Wait, am I blocked by fucking Rob Schneider? Wait, this is crazy. Hello, bro. Oh my God, Rob Schneider blocked me? What the hell? Rob Schneider. Why did he block me, bro? We'll talk about Elon Musk uh, going up against Brazil, Brazil and everything like that in a second. Uh, that's crazy. Pinoy King Rob Schneider. Oh my God. You can donate your Eclipse glasses to Astronomers Without Borders by dropping them off at Warby Parker. Yeah, I'm not going to do that, man. I'm going to keep it a buck 50 with you. I ain't doing that. But we will be talking about the whole like, oh my, why do my eyes hurt shit as well? It's too much work, bro. You're out of your mind. What do you want me to do? Lie to you and be like, yes, I'm definitely doing that. I love recycling and feeling like I'm helping someone at the same time. Anyway, this is why he blocked you. Yeah, he's a conservative. I know he is. I know he's a fucking freak. I just, I'm shocked. If you lived in a 15 minute city, I would. That's true. I would do that. Anyway, I'm going to blast off quick because there isn't that much in personal news. Other than that, I did a, I, I done did a lot of big business deals. Obviously the fucking, I have a bunch of podcasts lined up coming up. You are very Barber Jeff coded today. Uh, thank you. He's very handsome. So beer and back to the original set. Maybe this week we might not be able to do that either, but potentially next week. We'll see. Anyway, uh, let's blast off. Republican reaction to Trump's abortion takes. Can pull as a suggestion for you. Really? This is a Sam Piker's viewers shattered. I still mog him, dude. What is what are we talking about? If he wants his views back, his only hope is to go full MAGA. Yeah, okay. Republican reaction to Trump's abortion takes. Arizona just banned abortion. Um, Arizona just wants the Democrats to win. AZ Aborabo ban. They're begging to join. They're begging you to join their side. I know. They they know I'd be so fucking good. I'd be so goddamn good. Actually. Um Republican reaction to Trump's abortion takes Arizona abortion aborabo ban. Um, people are asking, people are Googling why, why my eyes hurt. John Stewart, John Stewart on U.S. allegiance to isn't real and more. Lots of news today. Get in now.
Anyway, Austin show with long hair and a beard. Oh, come on. Don't do that to me. He needs to grow a beard out. I don't know why the fuck he won't do it. I don't know why he won't do that. Huh. Anyway, here it is. We, we've blasted off already. I've blasted off. I've blasted off. Also, unban what? Me on Discord. I'll make more memes if you do. Joja Knight, stop asking me to unban you. You have to ask and, and beg for forgiveness from the Discord moderators themselves. In fact, I'm a black woman, early 30s, doctorate degree, and 300 debt in uh, 300k in debt with no house, no major assets, and no children. I pay fifty dollars to my loans, and the balance has only increased. I'm the exact person they speak of. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, the the student loan debt relief is good. Okay, if it happens, we'll see. It is fucking abysmal that the the structure that we have. Read their bios. They ignore ban request on um, ban requests. Dude, I don't know. I, I don't I don't want to like I barely do ban appeals on here. I don't want to tackle Discord as well. Okay, I'm sorry. Discord is for you by you. Okay, it's run by you guys. It's for you guys. All right, all right, all right. Uh, random question, but what happened to little Kerr? Little Krish? I don't know. He's just you know becoming an adult. I hope. All right, here it up. Here we go. We're blasting off. Let the people know this is this is it. This is our thing. This is today. You. This is today's news. First, let me sh let me show you Daniel Day Kim. Let's get us let's get started on this beautiful day with a beautiful face. I'm through playing games here. Yeah, he's he did go to Mogwarts. During Brazil, Twitter news could potentially also go over his leaked deposition from a lawsuit against Elon by a random dude he attacked on Twitter. Deposition shows Elon just generally dumb and not knowing how anything works, or it could skip if you don't want to do more Elon stuff. Fango, you have taken over the mantle. You've taken over the fucking reins from, weirdly enough, Megaphonics. It's shocking. Well, it's not so shocking. You guys are both, like, EV uh, evangelists. I guess that's what, like, uh, keeps you guys going at it. But anyway, what is it? Another fake podcast strikes again. Wonder why they cut out the microphones. Maybe because it's clearly a fake podcast, you know, the rage bait and everyone is falling for Our it. Our actions don't just have, like, doesn't affect not just only you, but it also affects me. Like, next year, I'm going to be applying for colleges, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. Things are on the internet. I might not even be able to get a girlfriend, because people, like, they already know. Um, in public, people ask me, do you really like your sister? Do you really approve of this? Like, I actually don't think this... <laughs> he said he can't go to college because his sister does OnlyFans? Bro, that's a major skill issue. Meanwhile, you should fucking literally be asking your sister to pay for your college education. That's so funny. Dude, what's wrong with these dummies, these dumbos online? They're like, oh my god, have you guys even considered that, like, uh, because everybody fucking shits on sex workers? Like, what if their family members get harmed by those who are shitting on sex workers? As I'm in the process of shitting on sex workers and saying that sex workers shouldn't do sex work. Nice, man. Like, this entire fucking process is bunk. There's so many goddamn... That was my best lock. That was my lock of the year, okay? When I figured out that, like, 90% of podcasts on TikTok are just fake, okay? 90% of podcasts on TikTok are just fake, and it's rage bait clips. They don't have, like, a real podcast. You can never find the actual full-blown podcast. There's no additional context. They've just figured out that, like, podcasting is a more representable, more respectable medium than TikToking, which is hilarious because podcasting is not a respectable medium at all. And I say this as a podcaster. So now it's just like, now they just do these rage bait TikToks with the fucking fake mics. About to make a TikTok podcast clip with a Lego mic? Yeah. It's just, it's, oh, it's so stupid. Anyway, let's finish this out. In my future. I, I love uh, accounts like censored men being like uh dedicating their whole fucking feed to being like israel is just ruthlessly murdering palestinians and then like randomly they'll just be like whores are really fucked up am i right we should kill them like how it's just so weird to me christian with everything that i'm doing like i've never once wanted it to affect you like this also, why broadcast on the internet rather than have a private conversation about this? I saw another clip of these two, and the brother is just shaming his sister for going to college and not using her degree. Will you miss TikTok if they ban it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, do, I do fuck with TikTok heavy lately, okay? I do. I've been fucking with TikTok a lot. I like it. I consider making fake stand-up clips trying to break in. Get your funny up. No, dude, get your money up. Not your funny up, dude. You learned the wrong lesson. Oh, I'm sorry. I really 
don't want it to affect there's, you. There's nothing else I can say. Like, oh. Oh. I'm leaving. <laughs> L, dude, the devil works hard, but you know who works harder? Girls and boys on the motherfucking TikTok timeline trying to get you to watch their live streams. Okay? In all of my endless scrolling on TikTok, I've never seen, there'll be like, my favorite setup is like, there's this guy and a girl and they're sitting next to one another. And he's like, guys, if I fall, my sister's going to do turbulence. Don't let her fall. Please don't go in the chat while I'm live. If you see me live right now, don't click on that. And then try to get my sister to fall. So she does turbulence. And of course I'm like, the fuck is a turbulence? I have to click on this. I assume it's some weird, like, sexual thing. I click on it every time. I'm such a dumbass. I'm, like, cognizant that this is probably breaking my algo. But honestly, I'm like, what is, what is this? Like, what, how does this work? How is this working? How many, I immediately want to know, how many people are fucking watching this? Like, does this actually work? I'm doing turbulence, oh, this is it. This but is my the lady keeps coming in and ruining everything. If you don't believe me, just join my live, because he's really annoying. I'm about to come in the room yeah i'm about to come in the I'm room and ruin room. everything oh yeah and then you click on it and it's just like her promoting her instagram like you guys think you guys think instagram is bad bro i mean uh, you guys think fucking t uh twitch is bad this is a whole different ball uh, game <laughs> no! No! This is it. just said they're gonna drop a galaxy Dude, listen to me. If we ever, guys, yes, I am doing, guys, guys, listen. I am doing turbulence right now. So if you're watching, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Right now, I am doing turbulence. But someone just asked, what is her Instagram? Her Instagram is in the bio. That's Kate. That's my sister. And this is her account. I'm co-star. I'm guest starring. Yeah, I'm right Okay, you know what? Why don't you just tell them then? Since you care about them so much, tell them here. Look, zoom he in. He hates there it. You go. Guys, this is her account. Okay, you can sit down. But He's so look sad. Look at me while I do you can tell it's, this tell is real. Look. Guys, this is the moment. Don't look at me, okay? You have to turn around. Turn around. Don't look. Don't look. You guys ready? Tell her I didn't do turbulence, guys, okay? Three, two, one. Oh, no. I did it. Okay, I did it. Kate. Kate. Knock, knock, Kate. Look, they, they want to talk to you. Kate. Okay. I'm going to take a breather. Play your role. Hey, Play your role, Kate. Act like you're more into it. Act like you're more invested. Dude, this is some nutty shit. What the hell is turbulence? I think it's just like another word for shaking your booty or something. I don't fucking know. I actually don't know what turbulence is because I only, I've only clicked on it like one time and he just kept saying that he was going to do turbulence and then never did it. I think that's the whole meta is that they like try to, um, they're just basically trying to fucking, uh, farm as much money as possible. Turbulence is shaking your meat. How the fuck do, does the girl do the turbulence you then? and them, you guys keep yapping about your Instagram. I'm trying to do turbulence. Because they're asking, duh. And you guys don't really care. Everyone put yes or no. Do you guys want me to do turbulence? Bottom or back? Everyone comment. It's really just farming off of FOMO? Yeah. So, the fuck? So basically, you know, like I said, the devil works hard, but ain't nobody's working as hard as fucking Kate Rax and all these other people. If you fall, will you do turbulence? No. This is edging content? Yeah. Oh my god. Anyway, um, do you think Austin Show knows about bottom turbulence? Are you going to do turbulence? Guys, stop asking me about turbulence. I'll do it, bro. I'll do it, bro. I'll do turbulence, bro. I promise. <laughs> His ass cheeks are clapping, I think. Um, I think that's the whole move. God, TikTok is so brain broken. It's so busted. There's no recovery, dude. Throw the whole fucking platform away is what I would say if I was Senator Tom Cotton and terrified of the Chinese, but I'm not. I love the Chinese, which is why I think this kind of weird clout-based opium that they are, uh, you know, that they're giving to our children is objectively good. Here's Austin with long hair and a beard, okay? Top of the hours upon us? No, it's not. It's literally... 11 30 anyway um if biden wasn't doing genocide they'd have so much going for them yes for sure 
Like that Twitch streamer who would change the office but never come back on screen and would just talk about coming back on screen for the rest of the stream for like five hours. Yeah, respect. New people joined in on the TikTok. We can party. Do better than that. Three, two, one. Wait, are those Costco guys? Are you for fucking real? Costco guys joined the TikTok Riz party? Oh my god, dude. This is the greatest up update since Baby Gronk and Livy Dunn. You know what I mean? Like, since Baby Gronk rizzed up Livy Dunn, I haven't been this enthralled by uh, a crossover episode on TikTok. TikTok Riz party? Costco guys joined the TikTok Riz party? And things got out of control. Big Justice! Big Justice! Give him a boom! Hold on, hold on, hold on. I love Big Justice so much and his dad. They're both they're so they're so big. They're so awesome. They're just sick, dude. Calling your calling your fat Italian son, who's actually not even Italian, but instead Cuban, but he's just very Italian coded, so I'm gonna keep saying he's a fat he's my fat Italian son. Calling him Big Justice is the American dream. Okay? I am telling you right now, this man is what America is all about. And anyone who does not understand this is lying to themselves, is refusing to reckon with the reality, okay? America is about having a big, fat Italian son and taking them to Costco to eat 7,000 calories in one sitting, okay? I know, I know that Big Justice and I, we're the boom boys. And right here tonight, we got the Bar Mitzvah boys. Nate, you're gonna have to give me your best. You ready? On three, two, one, you gotta give me a big boom. Three. Hey, everybody, count it down with me. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, that was weak, son. Bro, you don't have it in you like Big Justice does. Bro, Big Justice has, he put his fucking whole chest into that boom. You gave a weak ass boom, bro. Bar mitzvah over. Okay, we're done. Pack it up, okay? Pack it up. You are not allowed to be a man yet, okay? You have more. Ah, uh, you are still but a boy. Not yet a man. That's it. I'm sorry. Jordan, you, Jordan, you ready? Bro, I would not even give you a chicken bake for that boom. Honestly, like, I would not take you to Costco. You would not be able to get a chicken bake. You would not even get a double chalky chocolate cookie. It's so weak, dude. It's so weak. You got to give this man more chicken bakes pronto. Actually, I take it back. We have to feed him a steady diet of chicken bakes so his boom improves. Here we go. Nice. Look at that. Turn that picture. Turn that picture around. Take a look at that. All right. We ready for Jordan. Count it down. Three, two, one. Boom. boom. Sean, you're not. Get over here. You're not free, Sean. All right. Let's hear it for the father. Three, two, one. Oh my god, bro. You're a whole ass adult. Okay, I'd be lying if I if I I'd be lying if I wasn't fucking hitting a big ass boom. If if Eric Justice be Justice come up to me, the Costco guys that are like, hey Hassan, we heard you're big fans. Let me hear your boom. I would be putting my whole fucking chussy into that boom. You know what I mean? I'd be breaking the goddamn I would be breaking the goddamn microphone with how fucking hard I boomed, okay? And then we'd hit up Costco to get some chicken bakes. Boom! Hey, hey, yo! Jessica, over here. Come on, Jessica. Hey, should we let, should we let Big Justice count it down for Jessica? All right, Big Justice, count down to three, two, one. I just woke up a bunch of cats, dude. Anyway, um, what the fuck am I doing? Why are we looking at, like, random TikTok shit? Jesus Christ. All right, we're going to do an update on... We are going to do an update. Found your twin for real, the real Q Jones. CCP supporters, staunch communists. You think this guy is my twin? Deep cover spies, members of the occult, theory and girlfriend. I can't think of, I can't think of anyone that is less my twin, bro. Like this guy, I feel like this guy is literally the exact opposite of me as a person. It's so wild. Are you guys okay? I mean, he's way sicker than me. He is way cooler than me. Don't get me wrong. He's fucking dope. All right, we're done with this shit. All right, let's talk about the eclipse. Ladies and gentlemen, the solar eclipse happened yesterday, and obviously a lot of you guys ended up in the hospital. Why? Because you listened to me when I said you should definitely stare into the sun 
with your eyeballs. It will not be bad. As a matter of fact, it'll be good. Turns out that was a real problem. I Obviously, we covered some of the conspiracy theories. We covered the eclipse. It was kind of mid here. In California, it was like 48% coverage. That shit sucked. We didn't even get any fucking, no lights off, no nothing. You know what I mean? It, it felt like it was literally nothing. Kaya didn't even notice what was going on. I thought it would be sick, like, to see a real animal, a real animal like this one, like a fucking real wild, savage animal go, whoa, what's happening? What's happening with this? Whoa, why the lights go down? You know, why the lights go down? What's happening? That's what I thought she was going to do. And she was basically exactly like that. She was like, I don't give a fuck. This sucks. I'm napping. Look at how smushed her face is right now. It's so funny. Anyway, um, so obviously we covered the conspiracy theories associated with it because you can't have like a normal thing that people have known about since like medieval times not be received in the United States of America from the framework of like the nuttiest conspiracy you've ever done heard of. So that happened and everybody was like, Oh, we're in a different dimension. Oh, it's, uh, actually, uh, you don't get it. Like, you know, this is Joe Brandon's America. The eclipse actually is, uh, the eclipse actually is just, uh, you know, going to cause people to start seeing demon face and whatnot. Um, you know, many such cases, many such conspiracies, fucking awesome, wonderful stuff. But the funniest part was that apparently a lot of people did end up looking directly at the sun. And it turns out when people look directly at the sun, especially during eclipse, you get a little prize. You get a little gift, like a, like a take home basket. You know what I mean? Like a, like a gift bag. Okay. And it turns out that gift bag is a uh, permanent hurting of your eyes it seems that's right here is my eyes hurt as a search term and uh yeah lolo sent me a really funny meme about this i'm gonna play it right now for you because like i think this perfectly demonstrates honestly this perfectly demonstrates how we are as a uh, as americans in this day and age you know what i mean like there's no better representation of this there's no better snapshot of the American consciousness than this 29 second TikTok that captured the essence. Okay, let's take a look. My eyes hurt. Relevance over the last 24 hours peaks at 3:20 in the afternoon Eastern at 100% interest level, the highest that you can get on Google. Let's see who was interested in it. Everybody from Maine to Texas was interested in this thing. It's pretty much a straight line. Shout out to West Virginia, who was 100 interested in it. They were very, very interested in why their eyes were hurting. Path of totality of the eclipse, Maine to Texas. Congratulations, everyone. We've done it. I mean, dude, this is it. it, it like, you don't even need to reduce this to 29 seconds. You can reduce it to the two seconds, which is why my eyes hurt. Where, where did people ask this the most? And then look at the fucking path. It's perfect. This, in my opinion, is a perfect snapshot. Okay? It is a perfect snapshot of American consciousness in general and how we are in general. I don't know if we were always this fucking stupid or I don't know if the internet just like brought it out of us, if the internet made it worse or not. I am leaning on the side of the internet making things worse, I think. Um, Chinese-style Social media control is, is a must, even though I feel like our fucking dipshit capital owners are never going to do social control that is, like, ultimately beneficial for the broader populace. So we can't even have that shit. So, yeah. Um, also, uh, another thing I want to mention for everybody who's searching why my eyes hurt, that's a skill issue. I personally looked up at the sun. I often look up at the sun when I leave my house because I want to sneeze. And if your eyes hurt, then that's on you. That means you have weak ass eyes and that you should get better eyes. All right. Solar eclipse that captivated so many of us across the country yesterday afternoon. Almost all of the continental U.S. saw at least a partial solar eclipse and many millions found their way into the path of totality where the moon blocked out the sun and cast that shadow across America. We were there from Texas all the way to Maine to capture the excitement and I could not contain myself. Standing by until totality. Oh my goodness. It just got really, really dark here. I 
am getting a chill right now. The wind is starting to blow. <laughs> There's Venus. After finding the path of totality, solar glasses at the ready, <laughs> millions of Americans looked up in wonder. There it is. The Look at the ring. <gasps> Look at the <gasps> ring. There you go. Wow. And the heavens sure did deliver. Put that in a science book, but these kids got to see it first hand. In small town Careville, Texas, the clouds parted just in time for totality. The gloom also lifted when it mattered in Niagara Falls, New York. I cannot believe we're seeing this right now. It has been cloud cover all day. How lucky are we? It is a miracle. It's, it's, it's incredible. You see the corona? Yes! And while dark. You didn't travel for the eclipse, surely that's a worthwhile use of resources? Yeah, dude. I was gonna go to fucking Texas to get a 100% totality eclipse snapshot. I don't give a shit, dude. I'm gonna be honest with you. I traveled from my studio to the outside of the house. That's the best you're gonna get, okay? Did you watch the new Shogun? I missed it. No, tonight is the new Shogun, I'm pretty sure, right? Or does Shogun come out last, last night? Did it come out last night? I think it's tonight, right? Darkness lasted less than four minutes. It's out already? Bro, that shit sucks. I was lied to, bro. I always think it's going to be on fucking Tuesday, but it's actually motherfucking Monday. All right, I'll watch it tonight. Who cares? <laughs> the experience for first-timers like me now lives forever. For days, I've been asking people what it's like. Now I've seen it, and I ask myself, I can't even describe it. A moment of awe shared by so many of us together as one. It kind of feels like we're bonded to everybody here. Like, we yeah. just went through something together. Yeah. Yes. But I don't know these people, but, like, I feel some special, like... Some connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. connection to yeah. them. I have never seen anything like this before. I don't want to wait another 20 years for it to happen again. <laughs> I feel like it'd be cool for, like, us to tell the future generation that we saw. The best part of the article I saw of a loss of $500 million in productivity because of this event, lol. That's so I dope. Like what it looked like. Humans never change, and they should never change. Most saying Eclipse take came from Marjorie Taylor Green. Obviously, we talked about this when she first popped off with this four days ago. God is sending America strong signs to tell us to repent. Earthquakes and eclipses and many more things to come. I pray that our country listens. Of course, Marjorie Titan is fucking awesome. The way the Earth looks during the eclipse is insane. Oh, and actually, we have the International Space Station flying over right now. So they are actually seeing not one, but two views of the eclipse. They're able to see not just the moon passing in front of the sun, but they're also able to see the shadow of the moon passing over Earth, which is absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's fake because we know the Earth is not round. Okay, it's flat. Yeah, wait till she hears about the cicadas. Yeah. Maps show where trillions of cicadas will emerge in the U.S. this spring, and they potentially have, like, some kind of zombie virus, too. Like, just wait, bro. Just fucking wait. Anyway, we are too dumb. We are dumb. Also, turns out the glasses were sold as bikini solar eclipse glasses and are labeled ENISO 12312 uh, 2022. If you have them, don't use them to watch the eclipse. Urgent recall. Certain eclipse glasses sold on Amazon, but also in stores are being recalled. Uh, turns out maybe that's why a lot of people's eyes hurt in America. It's just me and, uh, you know, tens of millions of my closest friends now bonded forever. Yes. The, uh, the, the moon blocking the sun. I, 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 trying to explain it to somebody. I know because, listen, yeah, to somebody, <laughs> that would be me, Gabriel. Yes, that's you. When Tony came in, I was on a plane flying back yeah. from Austin. So the flight attendant gave me glasses. I saw a little bit of it. And I came home. I recorded everybody. I recorded you, Nora, Robin, and Witt, everybody yeah. to see. And everybody had the same reaction. And so I was like, what is it? I think it's pretty. I th you complain when Chad has no fun, but you don't care about one of the most fun things to ever experience. All the haters didn't get to see the totality. Lamau, fuck out of here, science haters. Wait, what? What? Uh, first of all, you're a fucking nerd if you think that the totality is the most fun thing ever to experience. Okay? Have you ever gotten your dick sucked? Are you insane? Like, or, you know what? Let's not even, let's not even shoot that high. Okay. Have you ever had a fucking incredible burger? Like a good burg. What do you mean it's the most fun thing anyone can experience? Let me tell you, okay? I would much rather get head or eat a burger than fucking watch the totality. Sorry, never had In-N-Out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be In-N-Out. 
Have you been on a fucking roller coaster? Great. That's another good one. The totality is much better than getting my dick sucked. It's not even a debate. It's an incredible experience. It gets dark, cold. All the animals stop. Birds don't chirp. They roost. It's eerie, but awesome at the same time. From people I know who've seen the totality, they say it's a life-changing experience. These, pe these are people who would not travel across countries for a blowjob, but did it for a totality. Yeah, those guys are taking L's, dude. I'm sure it's fun. It's just, I don't know if it's like the most fun thing of all time. You know what I mean? Anyway. I think it's interesting, but the way the emotion that everybody felt, and I wanted you to explain to me what was it. You are touching something profound and deep. It is time with millions all of other of history. People. It is all of the future at the all same at time. once. At the same time. I'll be honest with you. It most it most likely I most likely am hating because I didn't see anything beyond a forty eight percent. That's what it is. It was so mid for me. I'm sure if I saw one hundo p, it would be a little crazy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure it would be. I'm just like, but it for me, it was so mid. I'm I'm hating. I'm hating. 100%. The 48% was so ass, bro. It was so ass. It didn't even feel like anything. You barely saw the sun get blocked out a little bit. Seven hours of New Hampshire traffic was worth it for this picture. I mean, it is a cool picture. Nah, I saw it in 2017 in totality. Getting my dick sucked is still way better. The people who did the eclipse right were the ones who went... On the special Delta flight specifically for the eclipse, and the people who went to Cedar Point and roller coasters during it, they had good foresight. Have you seen this Ben take? Yeah, of course, dude. Joe Biden is Hamas. Are you kidding me? Ha, huh, bro, you'd be on here like zone of interest, but for nerd shit. Okay, dude, if we're all nerds. We're literally just a bunch of nerds calling a bunch of other nerds nerds right now, okay? I read the newspaper for fun. I listen to podcasts recreationally, okay? I know. I have no business telling anybody that they are nerds. I get it. Together, and there's but nothing like it. people were crying. Gail, Spain, 2026. Yeah. <laughs> Girls trip. All Oprah. Um, dude, also, have you considered getting your dick sucked during the totality? Honestly, I feel like that'd be disrespectful to God. Because I feel like there's some stuff going on in the totality where it's like, I don't fully get it. You know what I mean? I'm not a firm believer. I'm not like committed to anything like that at all. I'm not like a spiritual person at all. But it's one of those things where you're like, ah, I don't, I'll take my chance. I, I don't want to take my chances. You know what I mean? Why? Why do something? Why do something that might possibly be bad? <laughs> you know, you just you just got to. You just got to cover your bases. It's like those who whisper the Shahada, you know what I mean? Who At their deathbed. Because they're like, I am covering all my bases, okay? Let me tell you. I'm Catholic my whole life. I went. I fucking uh, did all of the, you know, I had the Catholic guilt. I went to church and I told the father I did like fucked up shit and he forgave me for my sins. Yada, yada, yada. But let me cover all bases, you know what I mean? You got to hedge your bets, baby. What if Islam is the light, you know? <laughs> it's like, you don't want to be disrespectful during the totality. It feels like there's some otherworldly shit going on out there, and you don't want to fuck it up. You don't want to disrupt the flow, okay? Yeah, you're spirit maxing, exactly. People theorize that if interstellar, interstellar travel becomes a thing, Earth will become a galactic tourist destination because it's incredibly rare for a planet to have a moon sun the same size in the sky. Yes, uh, except that theorizing is hilarious. It is a one in a trillion odds to have a moon and a sun that perfectly align and block one another out uh, because the sun is like 400 times larger than the moon and the moon is 400 times, uh, I guess, like the moon, the distance between the moon and the sun and the earth is so perfect that it ends up, you know, completely blocking it out. That's the whole point. It is very unique. It is a unique thing, okay? Uh, if that's what you learn from your spiritual talk experience, I consider myself satisfied, my brother. Your IRL cam captured the eclipse well. Ay, ay, ay. I'm just never going to click on Oliver links ever again, dude. Really, the first one of the day? That's kind of fucked, honestly. We've never seen another planet that gets a full solar eclipse. Hawking said this is why aliens might find us one day. You got the numbers wrong, but I'll give you the nerd badge of honor from an astrophysics major. Okay. The moon and sun are not the same size. No, they're of course they're not the same size. I'm saying, given the moon's distance to the sun and the earth, it perfectly aligns with uh, with the sun 
um, and and is capable of perfectly blocking it out. Like, I think I thought it was four hundred. Yeah, relatively from the Earth as a viewpoint, they are four hundred times the size and four hundred times further away. Yes. So wait, I am right. Why did the guy say I'm wrong? I got the numbers right. Meanwhile, you should get your money right because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for five dollars or for free with a Twitch Prime. If you no longer want to see those ads, baby. And you can also get gifted a sub if you are lucky. Here is the three-minute ad break now. It's 400 times, 400x diameter. Got to specify the dimension. Yes, I know. Turkey is restricting, restricting aid to Israel, which is pretty funny because that mean, that's going to fuck up Erdogan's bag a little bit. Um, eclipses are not rare at all. What? We're talking, we're talking the likelihood of a planet having a moon that is the appropriate size in comparison to the sun or a star that is the appropriate size and the appropriate distance is statistically very rare. Not, not necessarily because like, um, I guess not necessarily considering that, you know, there's infinite possibilities, but we just haven't found one, I think. Right. Oh my God. I'm done with this. Oh my God. I'm done. I'm done with this nerd shit. I'm sorry. Y'all are nerds. I'm going back to fucking giving you all cyber wedgies. Okay. It's it's done. We did the nerd hour and it was it was devastating. It was terrifying. Uh I I'm so done. I'm so done with this. Cyber wedgies for all of you. Shut up. Shut up. We're done. Um we are going back to uh Arizona. It's rare that you have an eclipse that allows the study of the sun's corona. Yeah, we're moving on. We're moving on. We're moving on. Nerd son or jock daughter? Jock daughter immediately. Jock daughters are on top right now. Have you seen? At the NCAA, what are we talking about right now? Women's sports has never been better. Did you see the prayers? You say that, but you're pulling up CNN. Yes, we are going to talk about Arizona, which is a state. And of course, before it was even a state, there was a law in Arizona. And now that Arizona is a state, they're using said law to ban nearly all abortions after this one rare, unique court ruling. It seems like the Arizona state is trying desperately to ensure a W, a fat W for the Democratic Party. Let's take a look. CNN breaking news. And this is big breaking news just into CNN. The Arizona Supreme Court just issued a major ruling on the future of abortion access in that state. And CNN's Natasha Chen is going through the court's opinion right now. Natasha, walk us through this ruling. Yeah, this is a 47-page decision, and right now our teams are going through all of that language. But the bottom line here is that Arizona must adhere to a, an abortion ban, nearly all abortions banned except in the case of saving the life of the mother. And this law dates back to the Civil War before Arizona was even a state. There has been a lot of confusion back and forth in Arizona on which state law applies here because right before Roe versus Wade was overturned, the state had instituted a 15-week abortion ban. So there had been pauses to abortions in the state and then res resumption of that and pause again, all in hopes that the state Supreme Court could offer some clarity here. And today, this is what the court has said, that the state must adhere to this 123-year-old law banning near all abortions. Now, the text of that law says that there is also a punishment for providers of the abortion uh, between two and five years in prison. The important things huh. to note here so far that... Yeah, we, we should just start killing women for even thinking about having abortions. Fuck it. Cut out the middleman who... Dude, it's great. Great stuff overall. Fuck it, you know? We, lo we love life so much. You don't understand, okay? The life of an unborn child is sacred, which is why the woman carrying the fucking fetus takes an L in that situation, okay? It's like, oh, you lip cards love abortion so much. How about we give you an abortion, light term abortion for trying to have an abortion to begin with? Is this one of those laws that view women as a man's property? I mean, pff, maybe <laughs> this is fucking insane. Oh, my God. We have this is we we do not have a normal country. I've been saying we don't have a normal country, but this is like this is beyond abnormality i feel like i feel like these people like people that have these ideas should go to prison for wrong thing i think like people that are like this seems like a good idea should be 
at the very least, like put into re-education school or something like to, to just, we should study their fucking brains and try to comprehend how you can live in 2024, how you can live in 2024 in the modern era where we have access to internet. We have access to so much fucking information right in front of us. And they still think like, no, we should do this because God told me to. Oh, non-DC liberal Dems could so easily snatch the trajectory of this country back if they weren't, if it weren't so goddamn Democrat party purposely standing in his way. I, I agree. I mean, it's wild, bro. It is wild. It's like, first of all, this would be like, you know, reorienting a law that, that says you can enslave a black person by utilizing a law from that time when black people were not seen as people, but property. You know what I mean? Which... I hate to put that out in the fucking ether because I feel like that's where we're moving in the direction of where Republicans are going to be like, yeah, actually, that's a good idea. Hey, hey, shit, write that down. <laughs> what did he say? Write that shit down, dude. Fucking sounds good to me, brother. What? This isn't as dumb as courts interpreting obscenity as applying to abortions. The law is explicitly but stupid. There's a ballot initiative that already has the required signatures. It will almost certainly pass in November. I know it's not going to be. Here's the thing. This is not going to pass. This is not going to be implemented because the reality is that the uh, Arizona attorney general has already come out and said that uh, she will not enforce the state's abortion ban. This immediately got enough signatures uh, and it will be on the ballot uh, uh, in the upcoming election. So this is going to be a major fucking benefit to the Democratic Party as far as like drawing out new elections. I mean, uh, drawing out new uh, voters to go out in the fucking ballots. People are going to be motivated for me, however. For me, however, I'm not thinking about that, right? That's the good stuff, and obviously that's fine, and that's great, and I'm glad that it's happening. But for me, there's something beyond this. There's a deep illness, okay? There is a deep illness in the minds of some Americans, okay? The notion, the very notion that this is like even permissible for you, the notion that you can be a person in a position of power and say like, actually, this is great. Let's do it. That is terrifying to me because it's terrifying for a multitude of different reasons. But one of them is like these people don't have self-preservation in mind, right? Obviously, I've moved beyond the notion that they care about women as human beings and like don't want to harm them because they very clearly do. This is their policy, right? The entire purpose of bans like this are to simply harm women, to stop them from getting access to medical care that is uh, easily afforded and, and you know, given to people it would be akin to saying i don't like i don't fuck with fat people no more insulin dog i don't think the constitution uh should should uh allow people to get insulin if they have diabetes like it's just like why what do you mean that's a, a psychotic thing this decision should not be left up to you nor jesus this decision should be left up to the medical professional so you can moralize around it as they did with abortion and then have the underlying arguments kind of make sense, I guess. But ultimately, that is what's going on, right? In practice, the abortion ban is simply to be like, if you fucked, you got to fucking be punished with a pregnancy. Sorry, sucks to suck, okay? You shouldn't have fucked out of wedlock. And when you do fuck in wedlock, you should carry that pregnancy to term. Doesn't fucking matter. That's basically the underlying motivation behind it, right? And same with if you're raped, same with if you're a victim of, of pedophilic incestuous rape. Um, doesn't matter. A life is a life. Sucks to suck, right? God is punishing you. That is usually the underlying motivation here. So I just don't. So we've already decided. We already know why people want this to, to go through, right? Like we get that. But how do you not have any interest in self-preservation, in in your overarching project? How do you not recognize that this is like making you look insane? Are you that lost in your own sauce? Is that what happened? This is something I've been thinking about quite a bit. And I think some of these people genuinely are. 4824, the day before the Arizona Supreme Court decides if a near total abortion ban is passed in 1864, goes back into effect. 
anti-abortion extremists pray in tongues on Senate floor, led by January 6th and fake elector Senator Anthony Kern. I really do think these people need re-education camps. I I'll stand on that. I do. I legitimately do. Anyone who thinks like, Hassan, you're a fucking commie. You want to fucking punish people for wrong think? Shut the fuck up. These people literally need help. They need state-sponsored education camps, okay? They need to be forcibly clawed back from the collective psychosis that they are engaged in. I'm sorry. If I'm fucking president, I am literally doing that, okay? Re-education camp. No way out of it, okay? All those fucking libtars that were like, oh, I can't believe you're saying this is on. Oh, my God. Like, what do we do with this? What do you do with this? What do you do with this? How do you deal with this? You can't. You cannot deal with this. That's fucking nuts, bro. Yes, not all mentally ill people are conservative, but all conservatives are mentally ill. Racist? The reason they don't punish women is because to them, one, women don't have agency. Why would you punish them when they can't make their own decisions? And two, because it's much more unpopular as an idea. Yeah, don't even fucking... My favorite quote for him is we need to turn Texas into Xinjiang. Uh, yes, I do think that, okay? Xinjiang for all red states, okay? Mass surveillance, round the clock, one party apparatus member has to live with the family for an extended period of time if you are founded to have extremist beliefs such as this, Okay? Yes. Yes. Re-education camps. Yes. Oh my God, dude. What is going on, dude? These are people in power. Okay. These are not like fucking random Toms, Dicks, and Harrys. Okay. These are people in power. Put lithium in the water supply. Re-education camps. Put lithium in the water supply. 24-7 surveillance. One party member has to live with you for an extended period of time. There's an onboarding. Okay. Fuck me. Ay, 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 dude. I just, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know how to do, what to do with this. This shit makes me so mad. This shit makes me so fucking mad. I'm going to say, if it were up to me, we need to cut their tax exemptions ASAP. It's religious and religious is called bullshit all around. Islam, Christian, Muslims call scum. Dude, dude. These people are not like every fucking religious person, okay? Stop. Okay, but it's not up to you. What is your point? <laughs> That's my point. It's so funny. Oh, uh, okay, but it's not up to you. Okay, I should just stop fucking doing political commentary because, you know, capital owners have completely captured this goddamn country. It's a bourgeois democracy, so obviously the outcomes are always going to be corporate aligned. So there's no real point in fucking covering this stuff and trying to educate people on the matter and to try to explain to you why you feel the anxieties that you actually do every single goddamn day because of systemic failures that are actually not really failures when you think about it, but a, a byproduct of the way that the system is designed. Fuck it, you know? Yeah. Just give up, dude. What do you mean? What do you mean? It's the reason why, I, why, why do anything? What is this? No re-education camps this America. We end up like China with the Uyghurs or the Japanese internment. It's so funny. We did do that. Um, but yes, no, that's what I'm saying. We do Chinese style Xinjiang policies to the American counter, uh, to the American counter revolutionaries, the American fascists, the American reactionaries need to be re-educated. Okay. If they want to be reintegrated into society, by the way, I love the guy being like, this is not us. Also, this was us. Austin, thank you. Holy moly, dude. Anyway, oh my God, these people are so fucking insane. Anyway, here's the attorney general uh, saving the day a little bit. This decision made by the Arizona Supreme Court today is unconscionable and an affront to freedom. Make no mistake, by effectively striking down a law past this century and replacing it with one from 160 years ago, the court has risked the health and lives of Arizonans. The Arizona Court of Appeals decision, which the Supreme Court has struck down today, was well-reasoned and aligned with how courts harmonize different legislation. Today's decision to reimpose a law from a time when Arizona wasn't a state, the Civil War was raging, and women couldn't even vote will go down in history as a stain on our state. This is far from the end of the debate on reproductive freedom. And I look forward to the people of Arizona having their say in the matter. And let me be completely clear. As long as I'm attorney general, no woman or doctor will be uh, prosecuted under this draconian law in this state. The opposite of this happened in Kentucky. For those of you who are wondering, Daniel Cameron was the attorney general in Kentucky. And Kentucky voted for a ballot initiative to actually defend abortion. 
And that fucking piece of shit, Daniel Cameron, who is uh, obviously Mitch McConnell's project, decided, I don't give a fuck about uh, the ballot initiative. I'm still prosecuting people. Fuck the citizens. Fuck democracy. Just something to remember. This is why I always tell you elections do matter and that you should vote, especially for shit like this, especially down ballot. The least significant part of the election is the motherfucking president. A lot of people think that it's just the president. It starts and ends with the president. No. Okay? This stuff is infinitely more important for your lives. Infinitely more important. This person won by like a couple hundred votes. That's why I've been telling you since day one. Always vote local. Always vote. Always vote for ballot initiatives. Always vote for these people. Okay? It's so goddamn important to vote. Ugh. Never think about it, but this is how... This, this is how you, you at least marginally improve your living conditions. You can call me a lib all you want. I don't care. Like, even in Oklahoma, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. What did this person say? Insulin is required for a diabetic to survive. A pregnant woman doesn't need an abortion to survive. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yes, they do. In many instances, they do. Hello? Bro, just say you don't understand pussy and move on, okay? Why is it? That we have given so much credence to no sex having asses who have the last time they saw a pussy was when they crawled out of their mothers. Okay. Why are we having this conversation right now? Why? Why do you feel the need to chirp when you don't know what the fuck you are talking about? In very rare instances, it's not rare. It's not rare at all. You're wrong, man. You're fucking wrong. And it's not just health complications. That, are, that arise through ectopic pregnancies. But guess what? You're a fucking idiot. You're not a doctor. And that's why you don't know any better. That's why medical professionals do not have this kind of se uh, setback. They don't have these uh, weird takes on the issue. You're just a random fucking dumbass. But because you're an American random dumbass, someone along the line told you that your stupid fucking opinion matters. Because, unfortunately for all of us, for the rest of this fucking country, for 75% of Americans, the fucking 25% that decided this is a big fucking deal and shouldn't go on is listened to. And there was a 50-year project by the Federalist Society to basically fucking reorient our entire court structure so we would make this thing that is profoundly popular and just not legal in many states. Oh... It's crazy. So much of politics is about yelling at fucking dumbasses who are just like, you don't get it. This is actually my opinion. And I am a special boy. And because I came up with this special opinion all on my own, you have to take it seriously. Fuck. My mommy said I'm a special boy and my voice must be heard on this issue. What? Please stop yelling at me. I agree the yelling hurts my ears and is a stressful. Manage your emotions a bit, geesh. Bro, there is there is genuinely a, a, a new kind of brain disease that occurs in the minds of so many fucking like 30 month subscribers where they think like, you know, I've been in here for 30 months. Like if you get passionate and emotional about someone saying some dumb shit, okay, uh, I'm going to chirp at you. It's like I'm the only person in this chat. There is an entire stadium full of people in here, man. Why the fuck do you think? Why are you doing a different version of the thing that I was yelling at the other guy for? Which is me, 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 me. It's literally just always the same. It's like me, me. Hello, me. Can we talk about me now? Can, when are we going to get to me? It's the most important part of this conversation. Me. Hello? Hassan, it's sarcasm, please. You're getting secondhand autism. I don't think that person was being sarcastic. What? Agree, but what was the court supposed to do when row reasons are now moot? I do not see how the court could have construed the, uh, what? The pith and substance of the case law relied upon any differently, sad, but objectively true. I blame SCOTUS and Trump. You are ridiculous if you think that there was any sort of serious legal reasoning for overturning Roe v. Wade. That is insane. You are out of your mind if you think this, this is the case. There is a reason why three or two of the three... Supreme Court appointees openly stated in a congressional hearing that they would not overturn Roe v. Wade, that the super precedent would stand, even if you are a debate law pervert, okay? 
And obviously, as I say all the time, Supreme Courts, Supreme Court justices are the highest level of debate perpetry. There is no one higher than them as far as like as <clears throat> as far as uh, the the highest uh, layer of debate debate perpetry. It is ridiculous. There is no real legal reasoning for why they did that. As a matter of fact, they said the exact opposite and lied about saying that they were not going to overturn it because it was a super precedent. Oh, pregnancy in this fucking country, depending on especially if you're looking at like uh, lower income areas or if you're, for example, black women, pregnancy is like a 50-50 coin flip half the time. It's ridiculous. Obviously, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but like pregnancy is fatal. fatal. Okay, it doesn't have to be. Uh, just an ectopic pregnancy. There's numerous complications associated with it. It's crazy, man. Yeah, Supreme Court justices are debate pedophiles. They are the highest level of debate pervert, pervertry. No higher level of debate pervertry. Obviously, all lawyers are debate perverts to a certain degree, but there is no higher level of debate pervertry than the Supreme Court. Debate pedophiles. Debate bestiality, lolly animal porn pedophiles. Not 100% on the statistic, but black women are something like four times as likely to die from pregnancy complications than their white counterparts. Yes, that statistic is, I think, correct. We have one of the worst, like, um, maternal mortality rates in the developed world, too. In the United States of America. Okay, in 2021, the maternal mortality rate for non-Hispanic blacks, subsequently black women, was 69.9 deaths per 100,000 live births, 2.6 times the rate for non-Hispanic white, subsequently white women. At 26.6, it's not four, it's 2.6 times higher. Here, let's look at the maternal mortality in developed countries. Whoo, sheesh, look at that. Maternal deaths per 100,000 live births in select countries for 2018. The United States, 17.4. France coming in second place at 8.7. Canada at 8.6. UK at 6.5. Australia at 4.8. Switzerland at 4.6. Sweden at 4.3. Germany at 3.2. Netherlands at 3.0. And Norway at 1.8. Number one, baby. Number fucking one, baby. Let's go. Land of the free, home of the brave, motherfucker. That's right. That's right, baby. Let's go. This is probably not accurate. We fucked up the data collection. U.S. says U.S. maternal death rate crisis is it really is really a case of bad data. What do you mean? A new study calls into question the extent of the maternal mortality crisis, which has long posed a disproportionately high rate of maternal deaths compared with peer nations. Data classification errors have inflated U.S. maternal death rates for two decades, according to the study published Wednesday in the American Journal of OBGYN. Instead of the maternal death rate doubling, more than doubling since 2002, it has remained flat, research has found. Uh, there has been a lot of alarm and apprehension surrounding the fact that some of these reports show a threefold increase in maternal mortality, and that is not what we found. We found low and stable rates, said K.S. Joseph, the study's lead author and professor in the departments of OBGYN. A change in the way pregnancy is noted on death certificates 21 years ago improved to improve the detection of maternal deaths led to substantial misclassification and an overestimation of maternal mortality. But the box was checked for many deaths that were unrelated to pregnancy or childbirth. Researchers found, for example, hundreds of deaths of people 70 or older were mistakenly classified as having been pregnant. Deaths from cancer and other causes were also counted as maternal deaths if the box was checked. As a result, the maternal mortality rates showed dramatic increase since 2003. <laughs> Research noted that gaping racial disparities remain, especially between white and black pregnant people. Black pregnant people die at nearly three times the rate of their white peers because they face higher rates of pregnancy complications such as ectopic pregnancy and eclampsia, as well as chronic diseases such as high blood pressure, heart disease, and kidney failure, researchers found. By the way, I wonder, I wonder what happens when they, when they reorient it, though, because I, I feel like it's still, it's still not going to be good. <sighs> You can still look at the data broken down by state. Unsurprisingly, blue states have lower maternal mortality by a long shot. California, an abortion sanctuary, has the lowest mortality in the country. Shocked. Chatter is wrong. I just did my capstone proje project on this. Okay. We're not bad at delivering babies. We're just bad at numbers. Guys, this does not change the reality that when you paywall access to health care, you end up with the absolute worst, worst health care outcomes Across the board, if you look at it country by country, the United States of America is absolutely one of the worst nations in the developed world for healthcare. Okay. Everyone always sits around, like the Republicans that want to defend privatizing medicine, consistently bring up how phenomenal we are at medical research for like a specific type of brain cancer, right? And that is true. 
We have a lot of money. We have a lot of people. We have a lot of brain drain. So obviously, we do excel in certain cases. But that's not how healthcare works, okay? You can have a fucking football team with the best kicker, but ultimately, if you don't have a solid O-line, you're still going to fucking lose games, okay? You can't just be like, we're the best at kicking, okay? We are the best kicker in the league. It doesn't work that way. That's precisely the entirety of the right-wing argument when it comes to healthcare. I had to throw in a fucking sports reference there for, for all the real ones out there, you know what I mean? Now, having said that, having said that, there are numerous complications surrounding pregnancy, okay? Pregnancy is a very difficult task to take on. And if someone is not ready for it, then they should be able to get a safe procedure. And 90% of abortions obviously happen in the first trimester. We already know that. And the rest in the second or even in the third trimester, those abortions are always always due to medical complications okay there is no world there is no world in which there's not a single fucking state in this nation where you can just get a abortion especially in the last term in the third trimester for no reason okay you have to provide a medical reason a psychological reason but like it needs it requires the carrier to give a medical profession a valid a medical professional a valid reason healthcare related valid reason nobody is carrying a, a a fetus for nine fucking months no stop saying actually there is this is not true this is a republican right wing framed bullshit counter argument for an issue that does not exist in the real world Hassan should just stop bringing up counter arguments because all it does is give credence to the ghosts that conservatives are fighting and winning against. No, you are also wrong. You are also wrong about this, for the record. I'm giving counter arguments and disparaging the counter arguments or addressing the counter arguments for how ridiculous they are, specifically so that you are equipped with those tools. Many people don't know what the counter arguments are, so they are quick to believe the lies. Where they'll go, oh, wait, what the fuck? People are having recreational abortions at fucking nine months? Come on now. Man, he is so ignorant. How can you say medical complications are a valid reason for an abortion? No one is arguing against providing abortions if it would threaten her life. 100% of type 1 diabetics die with no insulin. Less than 0.1% of women die from pregnancy. Brother, do you think healthcare complications begin and end at killing the fucking carrier? You're like, hey, man, take the L. Carry this thing. You know, you have to. You have to carry this thing. How is it possible to be so wrong when your brain is just warped from listening to Ben Shapiro, okay? When your brain is warped from listening to Ben Shapiro and the Steven Crowders of the world who are basically constantly pumping right-wing propaganda into your fucking brain, you will, of course, turn around. You will, of course, turn around and, and fucking repeat that propaganda in here. We haven't even arrived at the application of this uh, kind of restriction and how damaging it is either. We've, I've only covered why it is invalid to make an argument, okay? I'm telling you why the arguments that Republicans bring forward on this issue are fraudulent. We haven't even talked about the application because once the application sets in, the difference between a miscarriage, okay, and a back alley abortion requires investigation. What level of what level of regulation are you willing to fucking put in? If you see a woman drinking wine and you think they might be pregnant, are you going to arrest them? If you see a woman maybe shoveling snow outside of their house, that could lead to a miscarriage. Physical activity could lead to a miscarriage. Are we going to start arresting anyone and everyone that maybe seemingly is pregnant? How do you actually regulate? Once abortions are illegal, this, of course, also brings up another problem. Studies have been conducted on this matter as well. Criminalizing abortions does not make abortions rare because ultimately, whether an abortion, whether a pregnancy is is carried the term or terminated is still up to the carrier. So you know what that does? Criminalizing abortions don't actually make abortions rare. It just makes abortions uh, it just continues to, women still continue to have miscarriages. They just have back alley abortions. That's it. 
And back alley abortions lead to one million plus permanent medical complications, which, you know, if you want women to have more children by force, you're going to not like this part, which lead to permanent damage that renders them sterile, incapable of giving birth in the future. As a matter of fact, more than a million women worldwide every single year develop complications due to back alley abortions. What is the statistic exactly? One million per year? More than a million. <sighs> the prosecution of miscarriages is insane. No, that's not national. It's global. I'm actually pro-abortion, but I can still understand that there needs to be stricter rules for it. I also believe that if women can choose to abort, men should be able to choose not to have child support. Yeah, dude, let me tell you something, okay? You are just a fucking men's right activist, okay? This is completely irrelevant to the conversation. Men should be able to choose not to have to pay to, for, for child support has nothing to do with this conversation at all. And also, you are not pro-abortion. You are literally advocating with false data and with a complete misunderstanding of what it means to be pregnant, okay, and a litany of medical complications that arise from that process to further restrict abortion access in this country, okay? You and other dumb fucks like you are the reason why the Republican Party was able to put forward this project and passed it through undemocratic means. <laughs> and now you have women in red states that have to travel outside of the state to get a fucking medical procedure that they previously already had a hard time getting. Um, I think it's the Guttmacher Institute that uh, tracks the, uh, that has all of the relevant information for the record. For those of you wondering, can you link the back alley abortion statistics, please? Thanks. <sighs> abortion takes... Affects 50% of people, but takes up 100% of the stream. Can dudes at least get a divorce court segment? Sure. But come on. Please be realistic. There needs to be better regulations of abortions. Like, come on, man. Just compromise a little bit. Please just see both sides. Yeah, no, there is no both sides in this argument. It is fucking idiotic. It's completely idiotic to try and make a both sides argument. Like, what do you mean better regulation? This is a fucking routine healthcare procedure, routine medical procedure. It's already incredibly well regulated we've gleaned from this document is that no one who provided an abortion prior to this ruling today will be subject to the penalty and that there is a stay on this decision for 14 calendar days, so two weeks out. Um, the Arizona Attorney General tweeted today that this is unconscionable and an affront to freedom and said, make no mistake that the court has the health and lives of Arizonans. You can see that tweet right there on the screen. There's a lot more to that statement. Um, again, this is a, a long, twisted path to get to this moment. And at the same time, there is a group trying to gather signatures to enshrine abortion rights in the state's constitution. They are gathering those signatures in, in a hope that they can put this to voters. Boris, Brianna. Yeah, I mean, that, and that is their hope. Talk about the future of this issue because this obviously may not bro said no one's banning life-saving abortions during a segment covering a story about banning life-saving abortions yeah also all abortions are life-saving abortions okay come on it is a healthcare procedure ridiculous ridiculous to make it seem like it is not a life-saving measure okay it's i'm sorry the notion, the very notion that we're having this conversation about like abortions being uh, somehow recreational is already right wing framing on the matter. That's it. Like people are not getting recreational abortions, man. Shut the fuck up. People are like, oh, I love getting cummed inside of. I can't wait to go and get an abortion. Be the last word. And it seems that the state, as well as some other states that we've seen, have gone through this back and forth twisted path since uh, Roe versus Wade was overturned since 2022. Since that moment, there have been um, nearly, I think, a couple dozen states who have severely restricted or banned uh, nearly all abortions. And so this is something that not just Arizonans are dealing with. Uh, there are also multiple states doing what they're doing here, at least from a citizen standpoint, of trying to gather signatures to make it part of the state's constitution. Uh, so as of right now, as we are still reading through this 47-page document, again, we understand that within two weeks, or two weeks out from today, that the state must adhere to this law from 
really Civil War era, before Arizona became a state in 1912. Um, and again, this is a ban on nearly all abortions, except mm. in the instance of saving the life of the mother, carrying a possible penalty here of two to five years of prison time for those providing the abortions. All right, Natasha Chen with the latest there. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let's discuss this further now with defense and trial attorney Misty Maris. Uh, Misty, obviously this is something that uh, activists are going to try to take to the ballot. So we will see where that will go. But in the interim, what you are going to see, uh, it appears after two weeks here, is no more abortions with only an exception for the life of a mother in Arizona. Talk to us a little bit about what that is going to look like, considering there has been a lot of confusion around that. It seems clear on paper, the life of the mother. It's not so clear. We know that in other states, it has actually cost some women who had wanted pregnancies uh, the possibility of being able to have future uh, pregnancies. Absolutely. So first of all, I'm sitting here trying to figure out how a court found that an 1864 law supersedes a 2022 law regarding abortion. But I've read, I, you know, reading through the decision and I've read the court's rationale. But to flip to what you're speaking about, you know, 14 days for complete upheaval of the medical industry uh, of, of any woman who is having any kind of treatment or was seeking treatment, that's not too much time. And to your point about uh, what does it mean to save the life of a mother, you nailed it. It has not been clear what that means from the legal perspective, as there's been confusion between which law applies in the state of Arizona, which was the precipice for this case. The question is, what is a life-saving measure? How far does that have to be? Uh, is it truly that someone is at death's door or is it a condition that, that could impact the mother's life that qualifies under the statute? So all of that has to be hashed out. As far as what happens immediately, the governor had actually gotten ahead of this and there is an executive order that says that the attorney general is responsible for enforcing uh, this statute for enforcing this decision and the attorney general has said and I imagine we're going to hear from that today uh, that they're not going to move forward with enforcement now that leads to a lot of other legal issues and challenges from local prosecutors so this is a thorny road ahead with a lot more legal well, a lot more legal issues that are going to come yeah you can bet that there's already a lawsuit being crafted against the attorney general for the claim that they, they won't enforce this. Misty, I, I want to dissect the, the rationale here as, as you were describing it for this uh, decision. Uh, the Supreme Court of the state of Arizona apparently is saying that they are constitutionally obligated to uh, go by the legislature's judgment, which is accountable to, in their words, the will of citizens. They're effectively arguing, and I quote, that to date, our legislature has never affirmatively created a right to or independently authorized elective abortion. Essentially, what they're saying is that the legislature has never enshrined abortion as a right in the state constitution, and therefore they have to revert to what's on the books. And what's on the books is this 120 plus year old law. It, it how do I counter the argument of it's a life, the moment the sperm enters the egg? Bro, that is not a real fucking argument. That's not a valid argument at all. And and if if you want to encounter if you encounter a dumb argument like that in the wild, the question for you is an e the the answer for you is an equally dumb counter argument, which is a hospital's maternal ward is on fire. There's one alive baby, okay, crying. One alive baby that is sitting in a crib. Next to the alive baby is one thousand fertilized eggs, okay, which do you do, which one do you save you only have time to save one you can either save 1000 fertilized eggs that are you know fertilized in vitro fertilization or you save the baby which one do you choose you choose the baby of course most conservatives would choose the fucking baby and not the goddamn fertilized eggs it's ridiculous we do not think that petri dishes are the same as a fucking actual life we don't we don't think that Anyone who tries to act like they do think that is wrong. They're lying, okay? Because it's not. Is that basically what they're saying? 
Yeah, let's take it step by step. So here's what happened. In 2022, there was a law passed in Arizona relating to a 15-week gestational period, so a 15-week ban. Obviously, uh, that is more expansive. What if they choose the eggs, though? Yeah, they're lying. That's it. Anyone who says they would choose the eggs are fucking lying. You know, there's not really anything you could do to that person at that point. You're talking to a person who's not being honest. Yeah, what if they lie and say they choose to fucking fertilize eggs? Okay, then they think that, like, millions of people are being murdered every fucking day due to in vitro fertilization, which is a process that requires a shit ton of eggs to be fertilized with sperm, and many of them don't make it through the process. So I guess doctors, through in vitro fertilization, are actually fucking murdering even millions. Millions of additional life are being ended through in vitro fertilization. This is a position that the Alabama Supreme Court had, as a matter of fact, which is why they wanted to ban in vitro fertilization. It's a position that is so unpopular that Donald Trump immediately came out against it. You are now to the right of most of the Republican Party. Okay? What? Okay, you're actually getting it now? Speak for me? What are you saying? Oh, I mean, that is what these nutters believe. Religious nuts holds those convictions. Honestly, they're not lying. They're just actively fucking delusional. The number of people that do legitimately believe that is 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 so much smaller than the people that even want to ban abortion okay sorry it's ridiculous what i'm pro abortion however life begins as soon as the egg is fertilized in the womb the argument of 1000 eggs versus a live baby is not a good argument in reality we don't have to choose between them brother it's an idiotic argument for a for a million different reasons the fact that this the underlying premise is stupid okay that's why i said if they're making a stupid suggestion you can make a stupid argument. This guy's like, dude, I'm pro-abortion, except like, you know, I need this abortion to only happen under what I believe is permissible. It's great. Medieval Catholics did not believe life started until the baby kicks. Yes, but as we've seen with the fucking eclipse shit, we've moved beyond the stupidity of an era where we did not have access to so much more uh, scientific knowledge, okay? We've, we've reverted. We have devolved. Chatter needs a vasectomy minimum. <laughs> Brother, that chatter has an automatic vasectomy. Okay? Why say 1,000 eggs instead of one? Because the difference is that severe. What do you mean? Why say 1,000 eggs instead of one? 1,000 fertilized eggs that are going to uh, be 1,000 successful uh, children, okay, inevitably, when, led, uh, when, when those pregnancies led the term, still outweigh the one fucking fully alive child because the fully alive child is a life of right than this 1864 uh, law which says abortions are essentially illegal with the exception of when uh, the mother's life is at stake because that 2022 law was predicated on roe v wade the right to an abortion was predicated on roe v wade and therefore the 2022 law stood without roe v wade there is no independent right either in the state of Arizona or in uh, or federal uh, or the federal law that would serve as the basis for what Arizona did in 2022. Therefore, it's gone. And so the 1864 law, which was always on the books, but was essentially just inactive and stayed because Roe v. Wade provided that right constitutionally is now in effect, and that there's nothing on the books in Arizona or the federal law that says it couldn't be in effect. There's nothing to negate it. And so since it existed, it's simply back into effect at this point. So that is the logic of the court. And that's why they say it supersedes what they did in 2022 as a state, which to me sounded like 2022. Well, that would be the will of the people. But because that was contingent on Roe v. Wade. Yeah, I mean, these guys don't have any arguments whatsoever. That's why the whole states' rights argument also doesn't fucking matter. Because, like, then the states go, okay, we don't want this then. And then they go, never mind, we're going to find a different way to still enforce our will upon the population. That's it. Wade, they said, nope, back to 1864. Very interesting and clear. Thank you, Misty, for that. If you could stand by for us, because actually Governor Katie Hobbs uh, in Arizona, they're just reacting to this ruling. Let's listen to what she said. 
We don't need to call a special session. The legislature is in session right now, and they can do this right now. They can do it today, um, and they should. They should listen to their constituents, nine out of ten Arizonans who support access to abortion, uh, and do the right thing so that we are not living under the confusion uh, and chaos and uh, act, lack of access to health care that's needed. As you heard from those two stories, uh, they can do it right now. Uh, right there. All right, there you hear it. Governor Hobbs saying they don't need to call a special session. The legislature is already in session and could clear this up. Uh, but obviously, that is very much uh, in question. Misty Maris, thank you so much for being with us. Obviously, a lot of breaking news here today is the Arizona Supreme Court has said that the state has to go all the way back to this law, 123 years old, but actually even older in, yeah. in its original formation, all the way back to the Civil War uh, that makes... Uh, a, the abortion completely illegal only with an exception for the life of the mother no doubt this is going to have electoral consequences because there's this group trying to put uh, abortion rights on the ballot in arizona a state we have to mention that could be critical for either former president trump or current president joe biden to get to the white house just became much more motivating right. certainly for biden voters that yeah. is very clear former president donald trump is taking heat from the democrats and the republicans it's all over a campaign video where the presumption okay um now donald trump understanding the fucking uh room as a permanent room reader recognize that the situation is not great as it pertains to his electoral outcomes uh in the upcoming election first they did a little bit of a trial to see if he could get away with saying oh i'm gonna do a national abortion ban at 16 weeks if you remember I think it was 16 weeks, right? Whoa, what was the original one? Hold on. He floated, or 12 weeks? Or was it 16 weeks? Because originally, originally, his take was very different than the one he delivered uh, yesterday or two days ago at this point. Former President Donald Trump has declined to endorse a national abortion ban. So he, he actually had pushed for one, or at least like they leaked it to the news that he had pushed for one. That was his idea. Okay. I'm trying to find where it er, where the original uh where the original oh here it is. Trump signals support for a 15 week national abortion ban. Now obviously this frustrated a lot of people, myself included, where I thought this was uh fucking insane because then he would be enforcing other states that don't have a 15 week abortion ban uh some kind of federal uh protocol, federal legislation that he believes he can pass, which I think is obviously uh draconian uh and utterly ridiculous now the the liberal media in its endless uh way in its endless interest in both sides in every fucking argument made this seem like this was a objectively positive thing from trump and it was actually moderate okay that is it was a moderate position like see he's actually allowing states to do 15 weeks uh up to 15 weeks of abortions which is you know not correct that's that's not what this law was going to be. Now, even that obviously didn't work. Uh, and they read the room. They tested it, saw that people were not too happy with that either. So then he turned around and said, it's actually, uh, it should be left up to the states. Just kidding. Abortion should be left up to the states. Now, this, of course, has led to a lot of pro-lifers in the Trump camp to actually criticize Donald Trump, Lindsey Graham being one of them, as a matter of fact. Fake-ass Lindsey Graham, who of course will never have to have an abortion because he only fucks men. So for him, this conversation is, you know, it's nothing. It's nothing for him. He's just, he's a gay man. So of course, he doesn't give a shit about uh, further restricting women's autonomy. Um, if GOP nominees said each state should decide its own abortion laws. I'm going to pee real quick. Ed O'Keefe is at the White House with more on this key issue in the election. Always hard, Ed, when you're getting incoming from both sides. Good morning to you. You said it, Gail. That's right. Good morning. For months, Trump has been teasing possible support for a national abortion ban, which is why this is so closely watched. And based on the reaction from conservatives on one side and the Biden campaign on the other, he is now facing new pressure. Former President Donald Trump still won't say whether he supports a proposed national abortion ban. Instead, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both 
and whatever they decide must be the law. That means he backs the 14 states that have passed near total bans on access to abortion procedures since Roe v. Wade was struck down, and others, like his home state of Florida, that have signed six-week bans into law. On Monday, former Vice President Mike Pence called Trump's failure to endorse a national ban a slap in the face to the millions of pro-life Americans who voted for him in 2016 and 2020. Marjorie Denenfelser is president of a leading anti-abortion group. I was surprised and disappointed uh, in the context of the great opportunity that he has uh, made, made real in this country. Trump campaigned promised to nominate conservative Supreme Court justices who would overturn Roe, something he now boasts about. I was proudly the person responsible. Dan and Felser spoke with Trump by phone Monday and says he could still change his mind. I still see an open door for signing a 15-week bill if it came to him. President Biden's trying to make that exact same point. If my Republicans put a federal ban on his desk, he'd sign it. Within hours of Trump's announcement, <laughs> she's literally, her position is literally like, no, don't worry, he's fucking insane. I promise you, he's fucking insane. And the Biden campaign released this new ad about a Texas woman denied abortion services after a miscarriage. She says she now may not be able to get pregnant again. <laughs> Boy, that makes a point. And before you go, we're hearing there's a new development in, in Donald Trump's federal election interference case. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, Gail, so special counsel Jack Smith is urging the Supreme Court to reject Trump's sweeping presidential claims of immunity, saying Trump's position has no grounding in the Constitution. In a filing Monday, Smith and his team argued that even if the high court were to find that former presidents <sighs> are entitled to some form of immunity for official acts, Trump's action... You hate that ad? It's a phenomenal ad, dude. Are you kidding me? It's a very powerful ad. That's a very good ad. I disagree with you. If you don't like that ad, I don't know what to tell you. That's like, that's how politics are, is done. This is exactly what they should be doing all the time, nonstop. Speaking of ads at the top of the hour, here's an ad that you will see, a three-minute ad break. Now, of course, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. All the haters of that ad and all these other ads... Don't have to see any ads. All you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free, and you will not see any ads whatsoever at the top of the hour or in the middle of the hour where there's a secret ad break. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's a three-minute ad break now. ...were private conduct carried out to remain in power. The justices are going to hear arguments in this case on April 25th with a decision expected by July. Gail? All right, Ed, thank you very much. So no position on a national ban, which conservatives wanted to hear. After Trump's announcement, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina telling reporters that former president... The girls are fighting, and I'm here for it. ...was, quote, making a mistake and that he, quote, <coughs> respectfully disagrees with Trump's assertion that abortion is a state's rights issue. In response to that, Donald Trump unloaded on his old buddy, Lindsey Graham. In one post, he wrote, I blame myself for Lindsey Graham because the oh only reason God. he won in the great state of South Carolina is because I endorsed him. In another post, Trump wrote, Senator Lindsey Graham should spend more time focusing on all the many people being killed because of our now non-existent border and the millions of people dying in senseless, never-ending wars that he constantly favors and promotes, adding... Great job, Lindsay. There it is. So, uh, do we need to keep reading these? I think we get the idea, right, Jonathan Lemire? So, yeah, we're good. I guess the question is... It's pretty wild because, like, every single one of these dudes were like, oh, yeah, states' rights for abortion, states' rights, which was already bullshit. And now they're like, wait a minute, why no federal, uh, why no federal level restriction on abortion, actually? No longer am I in, position, in, in favor of states' rights for abortion because blue states still let you do abortions. I don't like that. It is... It is wonderful to watch them openly go back on those positions. Like, yet another uh, moment of vindication for old boy here. I uh, told you it was never, I mean, obviously, this is not even like a, not even like a very, uh, it doesn't take a smart man to recognize that Republicans and Democrats, but especially Republicans, lie all the time.
question is, what's the over under a number of days that Lindsey Graham rushes to Mar-a-Lago to apologize? He's at a boarding gate at DCA right now for the next <laughs> flight to West Palm <laughs> Beach. Uh, um, yeah, this is, I mean, they have clashed occasionally on foreign policy issues. Um, and Trump does have this hold on Lindsey Graham, where every once in a while he just whacks him. Um, and that's what's happening, uh, certainly here. Um, but, the, the, but the Graham thing is interesting in a way that it does reflect, and we heard from Mike Pence mm -hmm. as well, uh, from some Republicans, some real conservatives who really believe in the pro-life movement who want this national ban and who were disappointed by Donald Trump. What Donald Trump did yesterday seemed to anger everyone. And you could tell, as so often, the, the tell for Donald Trump these days is truth social. And as the day went on, his posts got more and more angry and more and more incoherent. And Lindsey Graham took the brunt of them because it was clear, and aides later sort of confirmed this to, to a few of us, that he didn't like how yesterday went. That that video he thought didn't land well. He was getting heat from all sides. The Biden ad, in particular, that young woman in Texas, Molly, uh, was very, very powerful. Uh, the caption there, and if you those listening on the radio couldn't see it, it read, Donald Trump did this. Yeah. That's going to resonate with voters. Uh, but they're and not, and look, they're pro-life Republicans. They're not going to suddenly vote for Joe Biden. But if enough of them are angered that they might stay home or seek another venue, that's interesting. Well, fuck no. No, they won't. No, they won't. No, that's silly. I think these guys love... Donald Trump, and they will continue loving Donald Trump. Donald Trump punishes their enemies so hard. He owns them. He owns them with regular frequency by even, like, being in a position of power. His existence is a permanent own to the libtards that I hate. Trump, I think Trump feels he has those evangelical voters in the bag and that they're not going to go vote for Biden. And look, he did, he installed these justices who are still looking at abortion. I mean, the idea that they have two cases right now in the Supreme Court again, and they had said they weren't going to keep going on abortion. And we see very clearly they're going on abortion. And we see these Republicans, you know, talking about birth control pills, coming for birth control pills. I mean, this uh, far-right contingent. These evangelicals are not satiated. They want more. No. And if Trump wants to give them more, mm -hmm. he's going to alienate all the swing voters. So he Isn't it crazy that, like, the Democratic Party cannot capitulate to the left-wing loonies and the left-wing crazies ever? What did the left-wing loonies and the crazies want? Health care for all. Uh, free college education. You know what I mean? Uh, for everyone to pursue a life of dignity. Uh, what do the right-wing loonies want? Uh, to kill you if you even think about having a fucking abortion. Obviously, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. But it's like, you know, to jail mothers, to jail doctors who offer abortions. Like, and yet the right-wing is perfectly fine with capitulating and caving to them to a certain degree. There is no equivalence in this country. There's no moral equivalence in this country. Okay. It's ridiculous. He's really painted himself into a corner. So hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis live. Anyway. On Donald Trump's legal troubles. Was All right. We're not done with the Aborabo conversation, of course. Where the fuck is it? There's more I wanted to talk about. But yeah, uh, Trump uh, signaling 15 weeks. What does Ben Shapiro have to say about this, by the way? I would like to hear from him. We haven't heard from him in a minute. I want to know what the fuck's going on in the world of Benny Boy, uh, in the world of Benny Hanna. Let's see. Ben Sharpino. Uh, I, I... Did Joe Biden just save Hamas? How radicals erode reality. Trump calls Biden high. How to make your first one million. Hmm. Wait, why does Ben Sharpino not have any fucking videos on this? That's interesting. Why is Ben Sharpino not talking about the new abortion stuff? Huh? Where's the abortion video, Ben? I want to hear your take. Does he have like, uh, does he have a tweet or something? Maybe we can, because whenever I hear about like, uh, you know, stuff happening, I'm always thinking like, where's Benny boy? What's he have to say about this? You know, apparently according to our new pagan elite earthquakes and solar eclipses are the result of climate change. Abortion is approved by the 10 commandments and trans women should be allowed to play NCAA basketball. What the fuck? Man, he has lost the plot. He's just constantly tweeting out a storm about Israel, I think. <laughs> I am now signing out for Shabbat. I plan to be in Nashville for this conversation on Monday. He's at the clinic having an abortion for his mistress. You think Ben is cool enough to have a mistress? Are you crazy? And herein lies my problem with Donald Trump's message on abortion. Oh. So President Trump, y'all know that I'm a supporter of President Trump's so giving money to his campaign. Donald Trump is taking a position on abortion that is eminently politically pragmatic. His position on abortion is that this is a state's issue, that this should be delegated to the state. Now, you could say two things about this. 
One would be moral and one would have a real moral problem attached to it. The one that is moral is to say, yes, abortion is wrong. Yes, abortion is a great sin against God, against man. It is it is a it's like Hillary Clinton. <laughs> you know what I mean? Abortion should be rare, safe and legal. OK, thanks. Uh, I guess you've arrived at the Hillary Clinton position. Like what's happening? A terrible thing. By the way, of course, uh, Ben Shapiro is an Orthodox Jew. There is no religious uh, there is no religious uh, reason for Ben to be this ride or die for restricting abortions. There is one reason, though, and that's called money and clout. And he is a dog to the white evangelical Protestant Christian fascists in this country. And that is why he, he sits there and talks consistently about abortion. Ugh. Abortion is horrific. Also, the federal government of the United States has delegated powers. Those delegated powers typically do not extend Mr. Christ Cook into state criminal law with regard to things like abortion. The Supreme Court has kicked this back to the states and has made fairly clear in its own decision making that it does not want the federal government sounding off on this. Not only that, we have pragmatic concerns about pushing forward a significant piece of abortion legislation in a highly divided country at a time when the country appears to be splintering. Thus, for pragmatic, not moral reasons, for pragmatic reasons, we wish to kick this back to the states so that there can continue to be a building of a co- So, oh, wait a minute. So abortion is murder, but it's okay to murder in some states? Is that what's going on? Am I led to believe that Ben Shapiro thinks abortion is murder, but like some states are going to murder and we just have to be pragmatic about how much murder is allowed in, in blue states? It's okay to murder people? It's okay to murder millions of babies, Ben? I thought this was like genocide happening. I thought this was like uh, every year there's another holocaust on the fucking unborn children. What happened, Ben? What's going on, Ben? It's pragmatic. It's pragmatic. Oh, lessons around a stronger abortion position federally. That it takes time to actually get most Americans to accept a more moral position. And that on a pragmatic level, if you want a more pro-life country, you need to take that time to do it. And that is why I'm not supporting an immediate piece of significant abortion legislation because the country is simply too divided. But when the opportunity presents itself, of course, from the executive level, I will do what I can to prevent abortion. And of course, I am personally pro-life and hope for a time when the American people are ready to accept an elected government that would in fact ban abortion, right? That would be the moral position because that distinguishes between two different types of rights that we've talked about a lot on the program. One is- Oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, interesting. Just like a little bit of murder is fine, dude. We're just too divided, I think, on this murder stuff. Dude, dude, you guys don't get it. One day, one day Americans will understand that it's murder and then we can, you know, then we can advocate for, for what is possible. I just, me, I think abortion is murder, so I'm full blown, you know? I'm a, I'm a honest and consistent conservative. I'm much more ride or die than Ben is here. He's like, oh, well, we gotta win the hearts of minds of these baby killers, you know? is a moral right and one is a legal immunity. Those are not the same thing. A moral right is the idea that, for example, in the United States, I do not have a moral right to say the N-word, to take a, an obvious example. There's no moral right because it's not like a good thing to say. God, oh, he's hitting the, dude, white boy swag right here. The the comparison to, to the, dude, debate pervertry all day, every day, baby. The N-word, it's a bad thing. I do have the legal right to say the N-word because you don't want to delegate to the government the ability to crack down on speech. And any government with the power to crack down on somebody saying the N-word also has the capacity and power to crack down on things that actually are good, necessary, and truth. By the way, this argument literally extends to the entirety of the abortion conversation, not just blue states, dumb fuck. Oh, I personally think abortion is murder, or I think abortion is bad and immoral, but everyone should be able to have it if they need it. Truthful. And when you're talking about delegating powers to the federal government, you have to be very careful about which powers get delegated to the federal government, including in the realm of criminal law, right? That would be the distinction. So abortion can be extremely wrong. And also because of the extraordinary diversity of the United States and the internal fissures of the United States, it is difficult to pragmatically find a piece of... Now, listen, I disagree with him positionally. I think that on a federal level, you could push a piece of 15-week abortion legislation. This is Mike Pence. I just rewatched your video on Ben... Reacting to the row leak yesterday, this is almost a recreation. Yep. This is proposal. He happens to be right about that. But if Trump wanted to make the pragmatic case for why he is doing what he is doing, 
You could do that and still do it morally because you'd say you actually distinguish between the moral and the pragmatic. The problem with Trump's statement on abortion is that he takes a, a relatively morally unclear stance on abortion itself. And that's a problem. So here's his statement yesterday. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both. And whatever they decide must be the law of the land. In this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative than others. And that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Do what's right for our country and vote. So important to vote. At the end of the day, it's all about will of the people. That's where we are right now, and that's what we want, the will of the people. Okay, so this is the part where I have serious moral differences with President Trump on this matter. Okay, when President Trump says it's about the will of the people, no, it really isn't. It really is not about the will of the people. That is a bad answer. That's a bad answer because if the will of the people were to enshrine slavery in a particular state, obviously we would not allow it. This was actually in, it was a position taken by Stephen Douglas during the Lincoln-Douglas debates. The position of, of Stephen Douglas during the Lincoln-Douglas debates prior to the Civil War was what he called popular sovereignty. In 2019, Ben's take on abortion is directly connected with a strange interpretation of the Declaration of Independence. Life is a right. In fact, unlike abortion, which is not a right, life is specified directly in the Declaration of Independence, as well as the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments, and remains the most fundamental right of all. Hashtag abortion is a woman's right. Wait, abortion? Hashtag abortion is a woman's right. What the fuck? I guess there was a hashtag that was going on at the time, and he's responding to it. He's just using a trending hashtag at the time. Yeah. No, Ben is a staunch supporter of abortion. Yeah, it seems to me like he is. The idea was that if a state wanted slavery, it could vote to enshrine slavery. And if a state didn't want slavery, it could vote to not enshrine slavery or to ban slavery. That is a not good moral position. Now, again, you can make a pragmatic case for the Stephen Douglas position on abortion by simply saying this is the structure of the federal government. And until such time as we have a full scale. I like the guys who are defending the uh, states rights arguments are the same guys defending the state's rights arguments now, but he's making the exact opposite comparison. Like, abortion is just like slavery. <laughs> I guess pragmatically, we should have allowed uh, Texas to maintain slavery. You know, pragmatically speaking, we should have done that. Just like what Donald Trump is doing now. Scale consensus at the top level of American government, it's going to be very difficult on a pragmatic level to push any significant abortion legislation. And so... My job is to help build that moral consensus until we have a political consensus, right? That he could say is the moral relativism in the position. That's the problem. Hey, okay, that's my problem with it. We will never arrive at a political uh, consensus on the matter because there there is a political consensus on the matter already. We will never arrive at a politi political consensus on the matter that Ben likes. That's why he has to say it's divisive. It's not divisive at all. 75% of the country believe that Roe v. Wade and has consistently believed that Roe v. Wade should have remained. Okay. That number, as a matter of fact, increased. That percentage increased after the Supreme Court decision. So obviously, it has never been divisive and it never will be divisive. It's just divisive if you want to make it seem like there are both sides of this issue. It is such an unimaginably, undeniably undemocratic thing that the Republican Party did that they're suffering electoral they're suffering electoral consequences uh, as a consequence of that which is why Trump is taking a position that's different than abortion is murder or rather i guess taking the opposite uh stance which is some murders are allowed murders in blue states are allowed over red states and Ben is defending that i guess some murders fine then oops you know anyway um i want to take a brief aside now that we've uh, moved beyond the Ben Shapiro stuff Apparently, NBC says Biden is hemorrhaging votes among Americans under 30. In the 2020 NBC News exit poll, candidate Biden led former President Trump by 24 percentage points among voters under 30. But an NBC survey in January had President Biden up by just eight percentage points among that group. Another poll last month showed Mr. Trump ahead by 18 points among voters under 30. In the 2020 NBC News exit poll, candidate Biden led former President Trump by... So Tim Pool goes... This is why Hassan the Hun's viewership shattered. If he wants his views back, his only hope is to go full MAGA. 
What should I say to this man? That's the real question. Because I thought about it. There's a couple different avenues here. A couple different avenues is, you know, unlike Tim Pool, I don't compromise on my views. Since October 7, my advocacy for Palestinians, a third of my community leaving never to return. This does not bother me. Stop saying a third. They use that as ammo. Respond like the classic Elon uh, tweet. You actually spoke the truth. I'm like you, Tim. My values to to the right. I need to do. Is that true? I thought it was a natural reduction in Twitch users overall. No. Um, Post October 7, this community did uh, like we go, we went from 30k to 20k. The virtual pocket watching is getting out of control, which is true, but it doesn't matter. Ultimately, Tim Pool, famous predictor and contributor to the national sentiment during the 2022 red wave. It did. We were a 30k average before October 7. 20k average after October 7. That, like after the original, um, after the the uh, like the original interest of of Israel Palestine stuff uh, died down. What remained was definitely 10,000 around 10,000 um, liberal Zionists that fucking left. <sighs> but and everyone always everyone always fucking points to like a, a bunch of different reasons but that is as someone who is like you know pretty in tune with what the fuck's going on here it's that's what it is happy staying this plus minoxidil finasteride has given me the liberty to not wear a beanie indoors 24 7 you should try it Unlike you, Tim, I don't need to sell out my values and grift to the right for financial gain. This plus finasteride has given me the liberty to not wear a beanie indoors 24-7. You should try it. There you go. It's too late for him, though. It's never too late. Bad advice. He's far. He's too far gone in both respects. His hair isn't coming back. Yeah, it might be too late for his hairline. Who knows? Bro, anytime we talk about view counts, there's like a thousand people here that are like, Hey, view counts is down across the board on Twitch. Like Lyric is lost views, blah, 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 his lost views and shit. Thinking that I don't like look at the algorithms and look at like view counts across the board as a part of my job. It's like, I do. Okay. Yes. View counts have been on a steady decline for every single content creator for a multitude of different reasons. This goes beyond that. Okay. And Lyric isn't even losing viewers. Lyric is actually gaining viewers and he deserves it. He's phenomenal. Uh, he's great. Link it so we can ratio. Yeah, let's ratio. My point is that um, while everyone has maintained uh, a steady loss, maintained a steady loss, I'm confused. Didn't you prove the numbers were wrong in the first place in Australia? Yeah, I mean, my 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 view count is stable at 20K, but the, but the average 20K went down from the average that was 30K before October 7th. If you want to talk view count, only do it with your peers. It's a lose-lose talking about it here. I know. Now, it doesn't really matter because ultimately um, that view count loss is insignificant, is inconsequential, okay? It's fucking inconsequential. I'm not going to obviously stray away from what I truly believe just because it is unpopular. A lot of the things I talk about are unpopular. My job is to make those unpopular concepts more popular and more palatable to a broader audience. <sighs> this is my uh, this is my job since day one, and ultimately, ultimately, uh, I don't care to talk about it that much, especially because the loss of like 10k average people in this community is is nothing. You know what I mean? It's nothing in comparison to the loss of 30,000 plus Palestinians in Gaza. So you're admitting it's unpopular? Heh, yeah. What do you mean? On what planet is like, no, you don't have to block that guy. Come on. On what planet is like socialism a popular concept in the Western world, especially in the United States of America? I am banned him. Yeah, it, of course it's not popular. That's why I always laugh about people being like, you're grifting to the left. It's getting more popular than it once was, but that doesn't change the reality that like, yeah, no, most people are still very much pro-capitalism and terrified of socialism, okay? It is against the status quo. Of course, it is not going to be profoundly popular. A lot of people, I think, and this is a major part of it, 
this is a this is genuinely a big part of this process too. A lot of people, I think, want to be on board with <sighs> a lot of people want to be on board with a with a meta. You know, everyone loves this. That's why they were bandwagoners that hopped on in like the 2020 era. You know what I mean? It was very popular to have radical opinions against Donald Trump, especially when those radical opinions were never going to be realized anyway. That's it. That's it. Once they realize, okay, maybe it's maybe this shit's not that popular. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, I'll look for evidence of the contrary. Yeah, you had Pelosi acting like Antifa in 2018, 100%. <clears throat> I just wanted to force Tim to describe your grift in full. Can you make him try? Maybe. Hey, yo. By the way, once again... Once again, penis reference, but also with an animal attached to it. Yes, of course, I've seen the clip of Tim Touch Pool me. getting his beanie fucking uh, pulled off of his head. Definition of the word bigot. And you are the All right, have a good day. Bro, you come near me ever again, you won't have any teeth. You understand that? I understand. Don't fucking touch me. We have a Come here. You want to know why I fucking wear the hat? Yeah. So these motherfuckers, so these motherfuckers can't fucking recognize me when I'm on the street. You want to take a picture of me so I'm easily identifiable? There's, the no There's no photos of me. There's no photos of me, bro. You literally have a camera on you, like all the time. No, it's because you're bald, bro. It's fine. Like he really needs to be more chill and more confident about his his baldness. Bald is beautiful, baby. He put the beanie on. Yeah, he put the fucking he put the hoodie up to be like, I'm gonna protect my beanie now. You see Gianmarco Cerezi posting a clip of yours and asking to come on his pod? I did not, but I like him. He's funny. Wait, where did he post it? Is it on Twitter? Where'd he post it? On Twitter? Where'd he post it? It probably expired. Oh, was it a story? Anyway. Gianmarco Cerezi is a comedian. Chatters. He's a comedian that follows me. I just followed him back. Um, anyway, I'll figure it out. All right. Special counsel urges Supreme Court to reject Trump's immunity claim. Special counsel Jack Smith coined the Supreme <laughs> Court to reject Trump's claims of immunity as the former president tries some last-ditch legal maneuvers to delay his Manhattan trial and election interference. Aaron Katursky is at the courthouse in downtown Manhattan. Good morning, Aaron. And George, good morning to you. We're less than a week before former President Trump's supposed to stand trial here in New York. And an appeals court here has already rejected one of his attempts to delay and is expected to take up another one a bit later today. Trump's attorneys would like to stop everything and move the case out of Manhattan. They say there are too many potential jurors around here who've been exposed to pretrial. Can he wear what he want? Why are you of all people sitting and talking about him wearing a freaking beanie? Because he's bald and he's afraid of his baldness being exposed. Chatter, that's it. Why are you defending Tim Pool? Is this Tim Pool? I don't even think Tim Pool fans would fucking go to this length to defend his beanie usage. Negative publicity. Prosecutors say Trump should have nothing to complain about, though, since much of the publicity is his own doing. He talks and posts about the case so much. To weed out bias, potential jurors will fill out a seven-page questionnaire that asks whether they've attended a Trump rally, have strong opinions about a former president being charged with a crime, and their feelings about how Trump is being treated. And today, Trump is going to ask again to delay the case and relax a gag order the judge imposed that stops him from attacking the judge's family, prosecutors, and witnesses. George, as you know, Trump would like to push all of his criminal trials, all four, past the November election. So far, the one here in New York is the only one set to go on trial next week. And Aaron, what can you tell us about the special counsel's filing in the Supreme Court? Special counsel Jack Smith. Yeah, they're going to, me, I'm the one guy in New York that has not heard of this Donald Trump guy. Oh, what? Who's this Trump guy? I'm willing to listen. Says there's nothing in American history, the Constitution, or even policy debate to suggest that a former president cannot be held criminally accountable, that no president has ever been prosecuted before, is not because he's immune. Jack Smith says it reflects the unprecedented nature of Trump's alleged conduct. George. Okay, thanks. It's been our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. We're seeing all these last minute maneuvers to delay the Manhattan trial. Any chance of success? Very, very small. At this point, it seems pretty clear that this case is moving to trial. These issues have been litigated. Wait, the, the Trump, the real estate developer who was on home alone, what happened? Did he do something? Wait, you're fired, right? That's the guy, the television guy. He was an actor. He had his own TV show. See, I'm ready for it. Yeah, the, the, the real estate guy, he had a casino. What happened to that? 
treated, they've been addressed, and I think that the chance that this isn't going to begin on Monday is very small. So then Monday, the courthouse opens. What are you looking? For? Courthouse opens. What are you looking for? Well, the first thing I'm looking for is jury selection, right? You heard Aaron there talking about the sorts of questions the jurors are going to be answered, uh, but it's not just the big picture ones, like have you been to a Trump rally? It's what media do you watch? Where do you get your information? They're going to be little subtle questions that are going to be able to tell these uh, lawyers a lot about these prospective jurors. And that's going to be the most critical thing in this case. We can sit here and we will talk about all the legal issues, all the factual questions. But the most important question is going to be who is on that jury. And that'll be number one. Then number two are going to be at the trial, legal and factual. From a legal perspective, are they going to be able to demonstrate that this falsification of business records was an effort to conceal another crime? In effect, he I'm not going to lie. If I somehow, if I lived in New York and I was selected for jury duty, I would hope to God that it was this case. And I would fucking, I'm not saying do this. This is not advice that I'm giving you. I'm just simply stating that what I would do in that situation as a weak man would be to lie my face off to make sure I get selected for jury duty. <laughs> I'm just saying, I would literally be like, yeah, Trump, who is that guy? Uh, what is he? Is he the president? I mean, I don't really, I'm unsure. I'm unsure as to what he, what he is, what he does. I would love to be on that jury. You tank the case as a mistrial? Here, the election uh, crimes that the prosecutors say were also committed, even though they weren't charged. And secondly, factually, is the former president going to continue to deny that he had any relationship with Stormy Daniels? I think he's going to. I think his position is still, it didn't happen. You assume he has to take the stand? No, he doesn't have to take the stand at all. I'd be surprised if he takes the stand. I know that his team is talking about him potentially taking the stand. I would be very surprised if he does take the stand, but... Then again, this isn't a classic legal case, right? You have to view this case through the legal and political prism. And as a result, the typical rules that apply may not apply here. Dan Abrams, thanks very much. Israel says it has now set a date for an... There we go. All right, we're, we're moving on from Trump's legal troubles to Israel. Um, also, we're going to talk about inside the messy battle for the biggest swing state of 2024. Pencil motherfucking Tucky, baby. Uh, we got that lined up. And we also have uh, two senior Hamas leaders being interviewed, uh, which I'll cover as well. And we got, should politicians be allowed to trade stocks? We got, I did a thing video. Don Lamont's wedding was the worst. Don't really care about that. Dave Ramsey, don't care about that. Potentially, I got these two uh, stories as well. All right. Uh, before we get to like John Stewart and whatnot, Israel's date. Israel sets date for full-scale invasion of Rafah despite U.S. objections. Invasion of the city of Rafa, despite strong objections from the United States. Palestinians are returning to scenes of destruction in areas where Israeli troops have pulled out for now. As Holly Williams reports, many are finding there's hardly anything left of their homes. Most Israeli forces have now left southern Gaza, and thousands of Palestinians are moving around freely for the first time in months. For some, that's meant a homecoming to the city of Han Yunus, but in their once bustling communities. There ain't no way this person just said, did you mention the Hamas interview? I spaced. Like I literally, no, you didn't space. You heard me say it. And that's why you just brought it up. There is no way you just literally fucking linked the tweet that I spent time addressing that I'm going to cover in a second. It's just too, that off, that has to be entirely too close of a coincidence. For it to be a coincidence. They found a wasteland. Half a year of war has brought destruction on a colossal scale to Gaza and an unending descent into despair. <laughs> Malak Mahmoud showed CBS News producer Marwan Al Ghul the ruins of what was her home. I can't find anything, she said. I lost my books and all of my belongings. Israel's military says it now has no operational forces in southern Gaza and just one division inside the Gaza Strip. The other division that was there moved out over the weekend. The remaining troops are positioned along Gaza's border with Israel and to the north, where the Israelis have built a new road cutting across the Gaza Strip from east to west, thought to be part of Israel's planning for after the war. 
The military says the troops who've pulled out are recuperating and preparing for future missions. And despite US opposition, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel's now set a date for an offensive in the southern city of Rafah, where around one and a half million people are sheltering. That date, though, is unspecified. The US says there's a ceasefire deal on the table for Hamas. But a spokesman for Hamas told CBS News the latest negotiations in Cairo over the weekend were a, quote, setback. Gail? Oh, that's... Wow. Shocked, I tell you. Oh, watch. Awesome. The United States says, uh, or Lloyd Austin says, the US has no evidence that Israel committed genocide in Gaza. Once again, shocked to find out that uh, the American government is still defending Israel unconditionally by lying because we are also genocide heirs. We have to, we have to, no matter what, we have to just be mentioned in history as those who did not simply look away when our ally was engaging in ethnic cleansing, but instead defended it unconditionally, uncritically, supported it, gave it weapons. We are the bad guys, okay? We are the bad guys. Make no mistake. Austin, thank you for acknowledging in response to Senator Wicker that uh, Hamas committed war crimes on October 7th and has been committing them every day since by using human shields. Um, I want to address what the protesters raised earlier. Uh, is Israel committing genocide in Gaza? Uh, Senator Cotton, I, we don't have any evidence of genocide uh, being uh, created. Uh, so that's a, that's a no. Israel's not committing genocide in Gaza. Uh, we don't have evidence of that, to thank my you. knowledge. Yeah. Better than Director Burns and Director Haynes did last year, last month at the Intelligence Committee when they dodged that question. Um, you stand accused by those protesters of greenlighting genocide. Would you like to respond to that accusation? Uh, what I would say, uh, Senator Cotton, from the very beginning is that we uh, committed to help uh, assist uh, in, uh, Israel in defending its, uh, uh, its territory and its people by providing security assistance. And I would mi remind everybody that, you know, what happened on uh, October 7th was absolutely horrible. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, by those very same standards, by those very same metrics, what has happened? Since October 7 is unconscionable and definitely uh, constitutes ethnic cleansing. But of course, we can't say that, you know? Yeah, no, the real genocide was on October 7, actually. Uh, and and the, the, the fake genocide that has happened since then is not a real genocide. Numbers of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Israeli citizens uh, um, killed. Uh, and then um, a couple of hundred uh, Israeli citizens uh, taken hostage. American citizens as well. American right. citizens as well. So, so you deny the accusation that you green, greenlit genocide? I, I absolutely deny. Okay. For the record, I don't think Israel's committing genocide. I don't believe you greenlit genocide either. Um, uh, you talked a lot with Senator Reid about Israel's responsibility to provide aid in Gaza. Why does Israel have a responsibility to provide aid to Gaza? Israel was the victim of an unprovoked vicious attack on October 7th. Why should they provide aid to their to the aggressor nation? Or aggressor, uh, Gaza's not a nation, to the aggressors on October 7th. We didn't provide aid to Germany and Japan during World War II. Uh, what we, we did provide aid to uh, and assistance to many of the countries that we've operated in recently. As but not we, in World War II. If you had been in George Marshall's or Dwight Eisenhower's position in World War II, would you have wanted to provide aid to Germany? I, I, I really do believe, Senator, that if they want to create a, a lasting uh, effect and in terms of uh, stability, then I think that uh, something needs to be done to account uh, to, uh, to help uh, the, the Palestinian people. I get, I, I get that, but they're in the middle of the war. Like we, we believe that, too, after World War II. That's why we had the Marshall Plan. That's why we rebuilt Japan. But that was after the war was won, not in the middle of it. And in the meantime, like, if it's, it's not Israel's responsibility to provide aid. It's certainly not our responsibility, but we're spending t our tax dollars to build this giant pier to send aid into Gaza. Who's going to accept that aid? So Tom Cotton is against any aid to Palestinians? Is that what's going on? Oh, I am once again reaffirming my commitment to re-education camps. Re-education camp for this man. This man needs to be saved because obviously he has a deep moral rot okay salvation can happen for tom cotton only with state sponsored re-education camps firm commitment to re-education camps for tom cotton put senator tom cotton in a re-education camp 
Who's going to be at the end of the pier on the shore taking aid from American forces? It, that's, that's still uh, being worked out, but there, there will be uh, uh, NGOs that, uh, that, that will help to distribute that but aid. Not, uh, that Hamas is in charge of Gaza. When aid goes to Gaza, Hamas doesn't divert it or commandeer it or steal it. It accepts it. And anybody operating in Gaza is under the thumb of Hamas. I just think it's very ill-considered, and I don't think it's going to end very well. Let me move on to Ukraine. Um, the Biden Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to Ukraine. Administration has discouraged Ukraine from launching refinery strikes against Russia. Why is the Biden administration discouraging Ukraine from undertaking some of the most effective tax attacks on Wait, he's I didn't know Tom Cotton was like pro unc pro Ukraine. My man just loves my man literally fucking just loves chaos, okay? Yet another yet another perfect obviously inconsistent position which is he's pro Ukraine but anti-Palestinian emancipation. It's not a how. It literally is just, this is the senator that is invested in Raytheon. That's it. This is the senator that's invested in Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman. This is the senator that no matter how much he deviates from uh, the, the public position and what is norm, what is the norm, he is pro-American State Department. Okay? That's it. That's it. He's like, yeah, uh, you know, we should fucking... We should not discourage Ukraine from, uh, you know, striking Russia at its heart. Also, simultaneously, we should let Israel finish the job. That is the American position, the American State Department position. On Russia's war-making capabilities. Certainly, th those, those attacks could have uh, uh, a knock-on effect uh, for in terms of the, the global energy uh, uh, situation. Isn't it popular on all sides? Who is this for? <laughs> Good question. Great question. It is. It is. The numbers are insane now, okay? Six months into Israel's ethnic cleansing campaign in Gaza, and the numbers are insane, okay? It's like 80% of Democrats and 60% of Republicans that want to deliver aid. Uh, similar numbers for similar numbers for Israel seizing its hostilities and uh, engaging in a ceasefire, both permanent, uh, both sorry, permanent and temporary. And yet, for some weird reason, if you look at the congressional outlook, if you look at the uh, members in Congress and their positions, they seemingly are not on board with it. And, and, but quite frankly, I think Ukraine uh, is better served in, in going after uh, uh, tactical and, and, uh, and operational targets that Joel Sieverud, thank you for the 10 community to give the subs. Yes, he's evangelical Christian. That's why he's fucking uh, positioning himself this way. But even if he wasn't religious, like, he would be positioning himself this way. This is the position of those who don't care about the humanity, who don't care about ceasing hostilities globally, but instead accelerating it, accelerating the demise of people. Uh, that can directly influence uh, the current fight. So, so it sounds to me like, Wait, what did he say? Hold on. A knock-on effect uh, for in terms of the, the global energy uh, uh, situation. And, and, but quite frankly, I think Ukraine uh, is better served in, in going after uh, uh, tactical and... and uh, Who is it popular with? Um, Right-wing evangelical freaks and also the, the defense industry. That's, that's who. That's it. That's like a big part of why the Republican Party operates the way it does. That's why he's positioning himself like this. Uh, and operational targets that... Uh... What's Assange's position on Russia-Ukraine? Uh, Russia has committed an unjustifiable act of war by invading Ukraine. Russia needs to cease his hostilities instantly. Russia needs to withdraw his troops from Ukraine. And that um, I still do believe that... I still do believe that inevitably the cessation of hostilities is going to come with a reoriented version of the Minsk agreements, which of course means that I'm pushing Z and I believe Russia is infallible and I love Vladimir Putin and I am a tanky who loves Vladimir Putin almost as much as I love the top of the hour ad break, which comes to the top of every hour. Um, and I will tell you once again, that if you no longer want to see those ads, 
you really think at this point that DPR and LPR will accept Western Ukrainian rule? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what will happen. I think that uh, some form of like autonomy under the Ukrainian banner is probably what the, what the best scenario, best possible scenario is, but I don't know. I don't know if, uh, if Vladimir Putin will fucking give back all of the territories that it annexed in Western Ukraine. I mean, uh, Eastern Ukraine, sorry. NATO caused the Ukraine war. NATO accelerated the likelihood of a Ukraine war, but it doesn't mean NATO caused the Ukraine war alone. After all, Vladimir Putin is the one who made this decision to invade Ukraine. It is a ridiculous decision. It was a bad decision. Just to simply state that it was a NATO-born war is, is you know, at least uh, this far into the conflict is, you know, missing the forest for the trees. Oh, yeah. Vladimir Putin is the number one NATO dick rider of all time. No one... No one has loved and, and solidified NATO support from Western countries more than Vladimir Putin has by invading Ukraine. Like, holy shit. What a gift. What a gift. What a gift to Joe Brandon. What a gift in general to NATO, to the generals, to the defense contractors. It's so awesome. Anyway, you know what's not awesome, though? The top of the hour ad break. A real gift would be to get a gifted subscription the Hasanabi broadcast at the top of the hour so you no longer see those ad breaks. Are you okay? You always look miserable. Is your mental health doing okay? Yes. Wait, what? I look miserable always. No. You already did the ad segue? I know. I was just compete. I was completing the ad segue. I think you just have resting sad face. Do I? What do you want me to do? Be like this? Fucking hit the Mormon uh, perma smile. Joel Sieberud, thank you for the 5 2 one gifted subs allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour that can directly influence uh, the current fight. So. so it sounds to me like the Biden administration doesn't want gas prices to go up in election year based on all the other actions they've taken to drive up gas prices further. But anyway, I want to turn uh, to one final point about the recruiting crisis our services face. The Army is the most acute. It's challenging all services, though. I've spoken to uh, numerous recruiters, frontline recruiters, heads of recruiting battalions. Two of the most common things I hear is Genesis, and a lack of medical providers to process new recruits. Um, do you have a memo on your desk from the services to place a pause on Genesis? Uh, no, uh, not. Have you received that? Because I, my sources tell me you've received a request from the services to pause Genesis. No, I, I, you know, I talked to the services about the service uh, secretaries about Genesis, and also have talked to the service chiefs about Genesis as well. Uh, and uh, I've, I don't have knowledge of any any. Okay of that memo. But what I will tell you is that, you know, we're, we're doing uh, everything we can to uh, improve uh, the number of uh, health care providers that are available and to streamline uh, the operations with Genesis. Now, Genesis. Okay. I'm not even kidding. My fucking, maybe I don't smile that much because my fucking smile muscles hurt already. This is a, you know, it's an issue that our recruiting force had to work through, but it is not the sole cause of, uh, of, well, no, it's, I, I know it's not the sole cause. There's a lot of other causes. I just say it, it comes up constantly. And just for those listening at home, Genesis is not just the first book of the Bible. It's this giant medical records system that now catches everything that's ever happened to you. So, you know, every drill sergeant accuses recruits of lying to their recruiters so they can get into the service. But Let me tell you something. My favorite take about people being like, no, Russia had nothing. Like Vladimir Putin was back in the corner. He had to invade because he wanted to defend LPR and DPR, the people of LPR and DPR, is that it is such a hilariously bad take, okay? It is such a hilariously bad take because, like, so many more people died in LPR and DPR since he invaded. And not only that, but also many, many other people who may have even been supporters of Russia or might have even identified as Russians in Eastern territories, no longer feel that way at all. So it's, it's a tactical misstep on every front. Even if you're like pro-Russia, even if you are literally pro-Russia, it is so ridiculous to think that what he did was great. If anything, he should have just continued funding and facilitating uh, disruptive uh, defense initiatives in LPR and DPR instead of fucking invading. See, you're saying it. They were being killed by militias from the West for years, currently not being killed anymore. I mean, that affects some people. No, fuck Putin, etc. See, that's why I knew that the I knew that people were gonna say this. Brother, that's insane. So many more people died in eastern Ukraine. 
now as a consequence of his invasion. So many Russians died as a consequence of invasion. It's like you're talking about 14,000 people that died, right? Leading up to the invasion as though hundreds of thousands haven't so far as though that's like a, somehow a better as though so, that's somehow a better outcome like it's not it doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense dude you 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 make no sense if you have this position anyway but now genesis catches all that so if you broke your arm when you were 12 playing peewee football genesis knows it if you were prescribed an SSRI because you were depressed when you were 13 because your parents were getting a bad divorce, Genesis knows it. And you got to go through a whole lot of rigmarole to get a waiver. Now, look, we, we can't have psychotics during the military, but if a kid was on an SSRI when he's 13, does that really matter? Does it really matter? If he broke his arm when he was 13? He can't have a degenerate bone condition, but he broke his arm. And I, I know you, you'll say, because I've heard it before, that there's waiver approvals here. It takes a long time. And like if you... Yeah, I'm worried of this part. Move beyond it. All right. Um, last part about uh, Israel Palestine. Uh, more information I wanted to give you on that front is that Turkey has imposed export restrictions against Israel. It will impose restrictions on. This is going to hurt Recep Tayyip Erdogan's bottom line. Let me tell you something, okay? <laughs> if they're, hey, call your loved ones who are engaging in import export uh, to Israel right now in Turkey because honestly devastating for his bottom line I mean devastating oh man oh dude uh, really 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 suffering who's really suffering around these parts exports to Israel until it reaches a ceasefire with Hamas Israel called it a unilateral violation of trade agreements and has promised to respond these new measures come a day after Israel declined Ankara's request to airdrop aid into Gaza we had submitted a request to participate in the humanitarian aid operations with cargo planes of our Air Force. We've learned that this request, which was welcomed by the Jordanian authorities, was rejected by Israel. There can be no excuse for Israel to prevent us from providing aerial aid. This is how I found out Turkey sends jet fuel. <laughs> to starving Gazans. In response to this situation, we have decided to take a series of new measures against Israel. Well, for more, let's speak to our correspondent, Sinem Kosyolu. She joins us now live <sighs> from Istanbul. Sinem, this is obviously a, a symbolic gesture on the part of Turkey, but talk us through the details. What do these restrictions relate to in terms of exports? Anastasia, this is the first significant measure that Turkey has imposed uh, against Israel since the beginning of the war. Rare Turkey, Turkey W or nothing burger? No, it's not a nothing. It's not a nothing burger at all. It is actually very much a something burger. I told you guys this already. Like, I I've told you this since fucking October 10. That Recep Tayyip Erdogan is all talk. Okay? One must ask the question, why were they exporting so much to Israel? How did that happen? He said a lot. He said so many things. He said, I'm going to tell you one minute. Fuck you, Israel. Satan Yahoo. That's what he said. So what happened? The fuck happened? Now, many of you are obviously uh, American, so you don't know this, but there was uh, in the first month of Israel invading uh, and, and completely sieging Gaza, there was a bit of drama in the Turkish part of the internet as it pertains to your boy. Because of my bilingual dual nationality status, I'm able to offend the hogs both in the United States of America, but also in Turkey as well. I said some things, I think it was on like October 10 or something, calling Turks dogs for supporting Israel, saying that you dogs that support Israel don't understand that you are seen as dogs to the Western world. That they do not distinguish between you and the Muslims in Gaza. You are the same to them. Thinking that you can parse your way through this and thinking that you can say like, no, those are Arab, those are different, is not going to change the way that the Western world sees you. This upset a lot of hogs uh, who caused them to speculate that I was a uh, Fethullah Gulen supporter, which is laughable, a uh, Siyasa Islam Jew, which is an uh, Islamist fundamentalist, like a political Islamist. Uh, which is also, again, laughable because simultaneously, simultaneously, uh, I am also a homosexual man in the eyes of many Turks because I paint my fingernails. Uh, do they call you an Arab lover? Yes, that, that too, of course. 
and that um, that I did not know what the fuck I was talking about. Now, a lot of those Turks that were chirping at me, of course, uh, had to reckon with the reality quickly where there was a shit ton of support for Gaza internally in Turkey. Some of those Turks in power, some of those politicians in power had to go back on their statements, right? There were a lot of like nationalist anti-Arab parties that were uh, hyper-focused on Hyper focused on on talking about how um what was it what did they say if you want to defend Gaza so much if you want to be an Arab so much you should just go to Gaza we'll send you there what happened to those guys what happened to those takes even Erdogan had a shitty take after October seven which he quickly had to realign when he saw the groundswell of support for the Palestinians inside of Turkey now now it's okay. It's okay to the, all the Turks who, who were uh, very upset. I said, I even went as far as to say that Israel could do Mavi Marmara a thousand times over to the Turks and the West would not even, uh, not even bat an eye. Okay. So since then, Recep Tayyip Erdogan has changed his stance. Of course, he said when he realized that, uh, when he realized that, uh, that, that, this Israel shit was not going to fly. He, uh, the watermelon salesman, turned around and, and offered full and unconditional support to Hamas, to the Palestinians, yada, yada, yada. Meanwhile, of course, of course, while Recep Tayyip Erdogan was saying such things publicly, Recep Tayyip Erdogan's son, a shipping magnet, was still facilitating shipments and, and facilitating trade with Israel. That never changed. We give weapons to Israel. We ship uh, jet fuel to Israel. Not only that, but also Turkish pipelines connect Azerbaijan to Israel. Israel gets around 30 to 40 percent of all of its gas. Everything that uh, like Israeli energy is hyper reliant on Azerbaijan. That uh, those pipelines go through Turkey. If Erdogan wanted to, he could shut off. He could cripple the entirety of the Israeli energy infrastructure. Of course, that would never happen. Let's be real. We are a NATO country in Turkey after all. So, interestingly enough, Recep Tayyip Erdogan got absolutely shafted. His party got absolutely shafted in the local elections that took place. I covered this uh, this past week, if you recall, where the opposition parties won massively. And since then... A lot more anti-Israeli sentiment and demands have come. And now Turkey is finally imposing restrictions on exports to Israel until it reaches a ceasefire with Hamas. Look at that. Or in October uh, uh, last year, uh, the uh, products uh, that include uh, uh, iron, steel, fertilizers, chemicals, aluminium, and many other, mainly construction products. And... Uh, I have to remind that Israel is Turkey's third biggest trade partner. So, whoa, what? Whoa. Uh, according to the trade ministry, the exports and imports have already declined within the last six months, around 33 percent. Ba uh, mainly, Turkish exports to Israel declined 43 percent already. But uh, let's remember that these are all mostly private uh, sector exports uh, to Israel, and they have uh, declined without uh, the imp uh, with, without the governments uh, imposing on those companies so far. But uh, one of the major uh, incidents, besides uh, Israel's rejection of Turkey's airdrop uh, uh, to airdrop aid delivery to uh, Palestine, is the backlash from the. Uh, Turkish society, mainly the is pro-Islamist uh, young people who have been demonstrating and who have been calling out for boycott against Israeli products. That has actually found a ground among the Turkish society uh, as from <laughs> right to left uh, when it comes to Palestine. It's a common issue. People are very sensitive and they have been, the, uh, they have been uh, individually boycotting some Israeli products that have also led to decline in the uh, commodity products, but of course, uh, as I said, Israel is Turkey's largest trade partner. And this so, this is actually a very weird position. No, it li they're not wrong. Okay, there are a lot of Islamists in Turkey who love Palestine, who love uh, obviously who love Palestinians. That's not 
a fucking, that's not a joke. What ended up happening is because Erdogan has a major Islamist uh, constituency, okay? Because Erdogan has a major Islamist constituency, what you have to understand is that his own fucking supporters were like, no, big dog, we love Palestine. Fuck you mean, okay? Do you see Al Jazeera as a credible source? They've repeat they reported a lot of disinformation about on this conflict. Please tell me what kind of disinformation they've reported on this conflict. That would be awesome. I I want to I'd love to hear what you consider to be disinformation. Especially if we're like comparing it to fucking CNN, the New York Times or any number of different western media outlets, Al Jazeera, while of course uh, if you ask them what their position is on like the Qatari government or whatever, you're going to get a lot of weird shit. Uh, but if you're talking about Al Jazeera, especially the English version of Al Jazeera and their coverage of Israel, it's literally one of the best, if not the most consistent and best reporting done on this. Al Jazeera also happens to have some of the only fucking journalists that are inside of Palestine, inside of Gaza. Okay, let's continue. This is a big step uh, since uh, uh, Turkish Foreign Minister Fidan announced that uh, oh, what I was trying to say is Erdogan has a lot of fundamentalists, like Islamist fundamentalists in his own, uh, like a big chunk of his supporters are Islamist fundamentalists, and a big chunk of his supporters, of course, are like pro-fucking-Palestine for understandable reasons, because like, you know, Israel is doing a genocide, but that also offers them additional reasons, because like, this is a genocide against Muslim people, so like, obviously there are a lot of Islamists who are uh, anti-Israel and pro-Palestine, for those reasons but the other side is also even like all the way from liberals all the way to like rugged leftists who also are in defense of uh palestinians there's a lot of fucking uh understandable anti-israeli uh understandable anti-israeli sentiment in turkey the measures will be uh, so they're doing bds finally immediately in place as of this morning uh, this pro uh, the mentioned products uh, 54 uh, materials, uh, products in construction uh, industry uh, will not be... Why is this guy not mentioning what? why Al Jazeera is not credible? Is he looking at Wikipedia or something? ...exported <laughs> uh, to Israel. What the fuck? Why are they burning the American flag? Why wouldn't they? Wh who do you think is... Who do you think is most responsible for Israel's genocide outside of Israel? This is what a lot of people don't understand about the way that many that you consider to be, like, barbaric... OK, uh, many in the many in the region that you think are like barbaric anti-Semites or whatever. And sure, some of them might be OK, for sure. Um, absolutely recognize this as Western imperialism. This is very difficult to, to understand from um, from an American perspective, because you're like, what do you mean? All of America's actions in the region are good, usually, or at least for some reason, even if I don't agree with it. Right. Many people do recognize it, though, as such. If you recall, I showed you guys Hassan Nasrallah's uh, uh, own sentiment talking about anti-Semitism being silly and how this war is not against Jews, but instead is a war against Israel and also, more importantly than Israel, America, because Israel, Israel uh, uh, represents the interests of America. Sorry, I might have been wrong. I just saw they rescinded a report pretty recently. I've never really interacted with Al Jazeera before. Okay, well, if you can find whichever report you're talking about, we, we can have that conversation. But rescinding one report is fucking, oof, that's like infallible in comparison to many reports that should have been rescinded by Western media that never even got uh, rescinded. Um, but regardless, I hardly see a USA flag touch the ground. This is wild in my programming. But of course, Israel has another chance. For instance, Germany is another supplier, but uh, this will be costly for huh. Israel. Uh, we will see how it will end up. As Turkey says, these restrictions will be lifted as, as soon as a ceasefire is in place. Back mm. to you. Selim Kosyalu there with the latest for us from Istanbul. Well, let's now get the view from Occupied East Jerusalem and speak to Imran Khan. Imran, are you hearing anything from the Israelis by way of response here to Ankara? Well, there's a very strong response from the Foreign Minister of Israel, Israel Katz, who actually said Erdogan is once again sacrificing the economic interests of the people of Turkey for his support of Hamas. 
We will respond <laughs> accordingly and prepare an extended list of additional products that Israel will prevent Turkey from exporting. He's actually also gone on to say that Israel is going to appeal to pro-Israel countries and organizations in the U.S. to stop investments in Turkey and prevent the import of products from Turkey. It's also going to reach out to friends in Congress to try and figure out if, Israel, if Turkey is actually in violations of boycotts against Israel and try and apply some sanctions on it. So a very tough response there from uh, Israel. It remains to be seen how quickly all of that can take place. Ceasefire negotiations, like I say, are taking place, uh, being downplayed by Hamas and uh, by Israel, but they're certainly... Yeah, no more ways, huh? I bet you won't like it if you no longer have access to ways. Fuck you, terror children. Turkish people will no longer be able to access our ways. Are you, are you familiar with ways? taking place and any kind of trade boy yes use google maps <laughs> because do take a long time to be able to put it in place so at the moment this is not airways ways bro ways the app ways it's a meme for the most part but ways is israeli yeah no more soda stream very much a war of words what practical um element it has on the ground whether it's an immediate stoppage of trade between the two countries. Let's see what happens in the coming days. Imran Khan there following that spat for us from Occupied East Jerusalem. Thank you, Imran. Google owns Waze, so they can't even ban it anymore? Oh, shit. Major L. Major L for Israel. They lost Waze, bro. Also, breaking uh, from Barack Ravid. Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant told the U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin during their phone call on Monday that Israel has not yet set a date for an operation in Rafah, according to a source with knowledge of the call. The source told me Gallant said to Austin that Israel would have to carry out several necessary actions before an operation in Rafah, mainly an orderly evacuation of the civilian population and an increase in humanitarian aid. Here's Alan Dershowitz talking to the Forward magazine, saying he would actually defend Yahya Sinwar. I have a deal for Sinwar. If you surrender, I will defend you. If you surrender and turn your... It's like, listen, if you need the most eminent pedophilia scholar, I got you. Okay, trust, trust, dude. Yourself over to the Israeli authorities. They will put you on trial, and I will be your defense attorney. Deal? Got a deal? Come out with oh, your. We'll, we'll, we'll mention it, but is got yourself a pro bono lawyer. I will <laughs> fight Israel. I will defend you without cost, and I may even win. But <laughs> uh, but you have to come out and surrender first, and then I'll be your lawyer. Is there anybody you wouldn't defend? Obviously, I wouldn't defend somebody who's a continuing criminal. Uh, who would go back and commit more crimes. I draw a line there. I don't defend people. So he doesn't think Yahya Sinvar would uh, commit more crimes based saying he's saying he doesn't even think what Yahya Sinwar did is a crime. That's what he's saying. Well, a second time. I have a deal for Sinwar. <laughs> Your Honor. The big October 7 was a crime of passion. <laughs> uh, okay, we got John mother freaking is this Lolo's mentor? Oh my God, that's so funny. Oh, that's fucked up, but that's so funny. We're going to go with that going forward. Yes, Alan Dershowitz. Alexander Lolo overruled's mentor, Alan Dershowitz. No, that's fucked up. That's too fucked up. I don't think we should make that joke. That's like, that's too much slander. No, no, I don't want to, I don't want to do that to him. I think that's so gross. That's actually, that's too much. That's definitely too much. No, I don't. I don't agree with that. Yeah, the fix is in uh, on Ukraine. Okay, let's talk about some. Uh, this is the last part of my coverage on Israel stuff. I do want to talk about this red heifer prophecy slash conspiracy theory that is unfolding. Um, red heifer, sorry. Uh, apparently, people fucking think that there. I mean, there's a apparently like a like this conspiracy that's popping off for some time now about this red heifer, Winnie the Moo. Okay. A lot of people in this chat have asked me about, uh, this conspiracy. I'm not super familiar with it personally, but, uh, you know, it's, it's time. It's time that we look into it. What these red cows from Texas have to do with the war and peace in the Middle East, Jerusalem, when a mosque spokesman, Abu Obeida began a speech marking the 100th day of the war in Gaza. One confounding yet eye-opening proclamation escaped the headlines. Listing the motives of the Palestinian militant group's October 7 massacre, he accused Jews of bringing red cows to the Holy Land. 
Mikowski was talking about are red heifers, <clears throat> which now graze at a secure, undisclosed location in the Israeli-occupied West Bank. Some Jews and Christians believe they are key to rebuilding the Jewish temple that once stood in Jerusalem and to beckoning the Messiah. To understand, you have to look back at almost 2,000 years in the tumultuous history of the Middle East, when the ancient Romans destroyed the last temple in Jerusalem. To rebuild it, fervent believers point to the Bible's book of Numbers, which commands the Israelites to offer a red heifer without defect or blemish, and that has never been under a yoke. Only with that offering, they insist, can the temple rise again. It is fucking nutty. From Texas to the West Bank, instrumental in bringing the heifers to the Holy Land was Yitzhak Mamo of Uvne, Jerusalem, a group committed to seeing a new temple built on Jerusalem's old city. You can check to see if they have any white or black hairs, he told CBS News, explaining that any hair that isn't red would disqualify the cows from fulfilling their prophesied role. Finding the red heifers took years. The quest led Mamo, not the Jewish breeders, but the Christian ranchers thousands of miles away. After a long search, we found them in Texas, he said. Texas Red Angus. To bypass strict laws in place at the time that banned the export of U.S. cattle to Israel, the red heifers were classified as pets, Mamo said with a laugh. But to those following biblical commandments, commandments the cows are no laughing matter, he added, stressing that this was no publicity stunt. Harry Potter is a good story. The Bible is not a story, he said. The Bible is a way of God to lead us. But while they're classed as pets, there are no plans to let the red heifers live out long, happy lives. A massive white altar awaits where they are bur to be burned on a plot of land overlooking the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. Mamo said the ceremony must be performed looking directly into where the ancient Second Temple stood until it was destroyed by the Romans in the year 70. What Mamo didn't mention is that what stands in the temple's place now, the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque, which are among the holiest sites in Islam. Yeah, I know. This is the red heifer, by the way. And notice, I'm noticing that there is not a single white nor black hair on this beautiful baby. Here is a, here is a Hamas militant trying to single-handedly capture a red heifer with his bare hands in order to stop Israel from building the temple. What if I told you that the world is ending? And it's all because of a red cow. What? Sounds crazy. But stay with me. Because as unusual... What are these fucking jump cuts, bro? This is so TikTok adjacent. Okay. As this sounds, this isn't sensationalism or clickbait. You see, on January 14th, 100 days into the war, Hamas spokesman Abu Ubaidah released a statement reiterating the motives for the October 7th attack against the state of Israel. During his speech, he cited the arrival of the red heifers into occupied Palestine and described it as a provocation, which seems like a totally random point, especially against the backdrop of the other justifications for the October 7th attack, such as the ongoing occupation, the expansion of illegal settlements on stolen Palestinian land, the thousands of Palestinian hostages illegally held in Israeli prisons, the blockade and siege of Gaza, and the normalization deals between Israel and the Arab states. But upon closer examination, the arrival of the red heifers is... I'm confused, he's got bisexual lighting. Pretty sure that's not true, right? What do you mean? Like, as in the conspiracy? Yeah, no, I don't think that when they sacrifice red heifers in Jerusalem, that the Messiah will come back and the rapture will happen. Yes. I don't believe that, Chatter. What would lead you to make me feel like, what would lead you to believe that I think that? I am not a believer in the end times rapture conspiracy. What will they say when nothing happens? Bro, what do you mean? When have cults ever stopped? If anything, they literally reaffirm their commitment in times like that. Is a significant event, not only for the people of Israel and Palestine, but for the entire world. You see, the red heifer plays a central role in a prophecy of epic magnitude. It isn't just a cow, it's a dumb. I'm sorry, but <laughs> bad, bad Photoshop like this with a star of David on it immediately gives me, <laughs> immediately gives me 4chan vibes, okay? Not saying that these guys are, but it is funny that like the only ever time I see bad Photoshop like this with a star of David on it is when it's like some fucking groiper posting memes. <laughs> it isn't just a cow. It's a dumb. Just needed the fed, the fed in the background. Yeah. In what many around the world perceive to be 
the end of times. By the end of this video, you will understand how the religious beliefs of the world's most influential religions regarding the final destiny of mankind, known as eschatology, are converging onto a single point, a single event, that could have ramifications so great that it brings about the end of the world as we know it. And it all starts with a red cow. Now before we continue, I need you to understand something. It doesn't matter who you are or what you believe. Whether you're Muslim, Christian, Jewish, agnostic, atheist, these ideas are real to the people and influential groups acting upon them. These ideas can thus affect you, regardless of your personal beliefs, because their actions could trigger catastrophic events for not just the Middle East, but for the whole world. Let's start off with a brief introduction. There are many who insist that the Palestinian <laughs> is- Oh my God. Little bro went back to fucking 1948, dude. That's crazy. He's like, my man is fucking splitting atoms over here, dude. He's like, uh, the world was a gas cloud, okay? The conflict isn't a religious one, that it's a geopolitical one and a story of settler colonialism. While this is true, the religious undertones at play cannot be denied. We all know that Jerusalem is one of the holiest cities in the entire world, revered by the three Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And at the very heart of Jerusalem- Yes, by the way, of course they had to get to the US to get to the cow. The US's hamburger champion is just as you said, prophecy. I stand, I, I stand before you, vindicated by history. Once again, by the way, I told you this, number one burgles, dude. Nobody comes near our burgles. Okay, as much as I love Wagyu, as much as I love Japanese cows, okay, America consistently is number one on burgles, okay? Very important site, the Al-Aqsa Masjid compound. And at the center of the compound is the Golden Dome of the Rock. To Muslims, the Al-Aqsa compound is the third holiest site in Islam. To Jews, it's believed to be the site of the Temple Mount, where the first and second temples once stood. The first temple was built by the prophet king, Solomon, destroyed by the Babylonians when Nebuchadnezzar conquered Jerusalem, rebuilt as the second temple by King Herod, and destroyed again by the Romans when they conquered Jerusalem in the first century. This temple is central to the Jewish faith, and there is debate within Judaism over how and when the temple will be rebuilt. To Jews, this isn't just wishful thinking, it's a prophecy. The construction of the temple and the arrival of their Messiah is an event that will come to pass and vindicate the Jewish faith. Religious Jews long to reestablish not only... You need more revisionist history to align with your echo-chambered morons? You need the Arabic, wait, what? Our, aren't you prevalent Turk? Groypers aren't Jewish, Lamau, you gotta be dense. Lamau, when are you gonna debate your beliefs or do you actually know yourself? They're too faulty. You need the Arabic subtitles to feel in tune. That said nothing, Lamau, our? You need more revisionist history to align with your echo chambered morons, Lamau? Bro, it doesn't seem like you're laughing your ass off. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna keep it a buck 50 with you. It doesn't seem like you're Lamauing. It seems like you're seething, as a matter of fact. I am? Yeah, no. You keep saying Lamau, but you're like, Pfft. We'll keep this guy on the back burner. He's going to have some really funny takes eventually. Their historic kingdom, but also their relationship with God. It is believed that before the first temple was conquered and destroyed, the spirit of Hashem, <laughs> God, abandoned the temple. So in a way, the relationship of the Jewish people to God has been severed and cannot be fully restored until the temple is reconstructed. For God's promise to the Jews to be confirmed, the temple must be rebuilt and the Messiah must appear. For thousands of years, this was completely out of reach until Israel reconquered Jerusalem from the Arabs in 1967. When Commander Gore declared that the Temple Mount was back in Jewish hands, it rekindled hope for a long-awaited third temple. The Six-Day War was a miracle of biblical proportion. So I go Christian trying to get the Jews genocide. I mean that, but also you have to remember like, it's hogs of every fucking variety. It's perfect. Hey, 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 down. What's wrong? You bored? Is that what it is? She bored. She's like, come on. Don't even wag your tail at me like that. Oh my God. Anyway, am I crazy? Would this be the exact same vibes if you inserted Yakubian names into it? Yes. Um, it's hogs. It's hogs across the board, baby. You got like, you got like a, a, a select a few 
group of religious nutters on the Jewish side joining fucking hands with a select few group of nutters on the Christian side. I guess the Christian ones like kind of outnumber everyone else in this equation though. Cause like there are a lot more of these religious nutters on the ones that like legitimately believe that, you know, the, you know, all of this stuff needs to happen so that the prophecy can happen. And then Jesus Christ can come back to earth and in Megiddo fight the devil, duke it out, you know, apocalyptic prophecy and all. Oh, there are so many of them in America, dude. And they're like normal people too. It's kind of scary to think about. Anyway, let's continue. And was a, um, a cataclysmic opening of a, of a new era for Israel and for the whole world. This was seen by some as a divinely ordained event and a necessary step towards the re-establishment of the Holy Temple. But there's a problem, a massive problem. The Jews believe this temple must be rebuilt on Temple Mount, meaning the Al-Aqsa compound, the Islamic holy site, must be destroyed. And so despite controlling Jerusalem for the last 60 plus years, Israel has been quiet about any intentions to rebuild the temple, as this would be seen as a major provocation and incite a war between Israel and the Muslim world. But working in the background are groups dedicated to the destruction of Al-Aqsa and the reconstruction of the temple. One such group, the Temple Institute, has worked diligently for years raising money and awareness and building relationships with powerful forces both in Israel and around the world to facilitate the construction of the Third Temple. And after decades of occupation and growing disinterest in the cause of the Palestinian people, their calls for the reconstruction of the temple have grown louder and louder. Talk of rebuilding the temple is no longer considered a fringe idea. Today, there is a lobby in the Knesset of how, how many members of Knesset that are constantly speaking about Jewish rights to pray on the Temple Mount. There are members of Knesset that actually talk about the rebuilding of the Holy Temple. Do you understand that 20 years ago, these people wouldn't have been given a moment on prime time television in Israel. Bro, don't flex, dude. Oh, no. He's, he's not wrong. It's fucking terrifying. Just say these things. They would have I mean, been he's celebrating it on CBN, by the way. Laughed out. So a few Christian years ago, Christian Broadcast this was Network. It's considered fringe. Zealots, lunatics, peculiar. Today it's mainstream. And this group is all. My man found the fucking red heifer right here. Is that guy American? Yes, both of those guys are, I think, American. Lunatics, peculiar. Today it's mainstream. And this group is also supported by powerful evangelical Christians in the West. For evangelicals, they view the construction of the temple as a necessary precursor to the return of Christ. It's a bit of an unholy alliance because the Jews believe that all Gentiles, AKA non-Jews, will serve the Jews when the Messiah returns, while the evangelicals believe that Christ will return and either convert or kill the Jews. Bit of an awkward relationship. The means to get there are the same for both groups, however. Al-Aqsa. It is, it is weird as fuck because yes, the hogs on both sides do think they are going to dominate the, everyone else on the other side. That's why I always say it's like a, it's like a death cult. It's like a suicide pact they got going on. My, my cousin just came in. It's crazy, dude. ...must be destroyed and the temple must be rebuilt. And this puts them at odds with the Muslim world, primarily the Palestinians who view themselves as the defenders and custodians of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Okay, so we have historical context now, but what does this all have to do with cows? Well, according to Jewish theology, the temple cannot be reconstructed until the Jews of Israel are purified. And the process of purification requires the sacrifice of a rare type of cow. It says that God spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, this is the ritual law that God has commanded instruct the children of Israel to bring you a red cow without blemish in which there is no defect and on which no yoke has been laid. So it says that we're supposed to take a perfectly red cow with no uh, white hairs or dark hairs at all and a cow that no yoke has ever been on. So as a result, it's very, very rare to find a baby cow that is completely red. It's basically the bougiest cow of all time. This kind of red heifer has been incredibly difficult to find. Even with genetic modification and breeding, finding the perfect red heifer domestically in- The one thing that's holding us back, boys. It's literally Winnie the Moo, by the way. I checked. I checked. Winnie the Moo. 
at Alvea Sanctuary is the cow. Oh my God. Israel has been near impossible, but in 2022, five of these perfect red heifers were discovered on a ranch in Texas. The Temple Institute in Jerusalem spent over $500,000 to airlift these red heifers to Israel, where they were placed on a secretive farm for protecting and grooming. Now, they were too young to sacrifice in 2022. Per the rules of their theology, the Jews cannot sacrifice these heifers and purify the Jews of Israel until they reach a certain age. The book of Numbers explains that ashes of the red heifer are used to purify priests for their service in the temple. These red heifers are now between one and a half to two years old. To replicate the ceremony mentioned in the Bible, they need to be at least three years old. In April of this year, these heifers will be of age and a sacrifice can commence. To prepare for this, the Temple Institute and other groups have been making all sorts of preparations. Firstly, the sacrifice must be made by the perfect priests, not only trained in the process of sacrifice, but also with a direct bloodline to the prophet Aaron, the brother <laughs> of the prophet Moses. The sacrifice must also be made east of the Temple Mount around the Mount of Olives where the priests can be within sight of the compound itself. And this land has already been purchased. According to those working on the project, the ceremony of the red heifer needs to be performed on the Mount of Olives and in a place that would have looked directly into where the temple stood. Dude, it's so sick. It's like, it is very anime, okay? I mean, it's maddening when you think about the actual implications, like, of the fact that people are just straight up hallucinating, like a non- like a not insignificant amount of people are hallucinating and and now we have to fucking deal with the outcome. Ay ay ay. It's just so fucking annoying, dude. I hate this. I feel like I'm I always feel like we are just held captive, held hostage by the sickest fucking freak perverts. Okay? The very notion. Obviously all of this like religious stuff on top of everything that's going on is simply just to to further uh, uh, galvanize the public and I would go so far as to say that this shit is infinitely more impactful for Christians evangelical Zionists specifically than it is for Jews uh, especially Jews in Israel too I'm pretty sure when you look at it like I don't think you would find you would have a much harder time finding uh, uh, a genuine political support for this kind of behavior in Israel than you do in America this is partially the reason why American Christian Zionists are the largest supporters of not only Israel, but specifically the occupation of the West Bank. It's very annoying. The land I'm standing on, bought 12 years ago, fits both of those standards. It's had to be exactly at the front of place that the priest that made this ceremony can see the holy of the holy place. Rabbi Yitzhak Mamo owns the Mamo. land here on the Mount of Olives. And we hope that in a year and a half from today, we can make here in this area the ceremony of the red heifer that actually will be the first step to the temple. Mamo says the ceremony needs priests who have not been defiled by touching anything dead. The Temple Institute actually has uh, nine. You can't argue with these people. My mother is one. Even when you spell it out for them, the dogmatism is too deep. Even when I'm like, you donate 25% of your retirement to cause the end of the world, she just rationalizes it away. Yeah, so many, that is the greatest, dude, dude, the greatest secret, like unironic conspiratorial secret is not that the Jews control the world or whatever the fuck. It's the fact that we consistently in America think it's Jews that have any say in this process across the board. And it's not simply like as far as religious justifications goes, nobody gives a fuck about Jewish people. Okay. Okay. Americans don't give a fuck about Judaism. The fact that these like 4chan groypers are constantly fucking talking about like, oh yeah, look at the Torah, look at the um uh, the the fucking Talmud. Ooh, they're fucking sacrificing children. Like they are literally so fucking dumb. It is straight up evangelical Protestants who don't do it in secret either. They do it openly. It is not a secret. It's so not a secret that fucking Gilad Ardan went to John Hagee's church. In the middle of October, like, why the fuck did the UN envoy to Israel 
fly in between fucking putting the star of David on his chest to be like, you and his Hamas. Why did he fucking fly to Dallas, Texas, to a goddamn mega church to be like, this is a religious war and we are doing the religious war for you. Why? Why? Because that is the most rabid, most fanatical group of support that Israel could ever get. And it's so funny that it's like something that even a very well-read anti-Zionist Canadian Jew like David Maklovich, okay, Dave one of Chromio didn't know about. Like, think about that. He's so fucking well-read. He's so well-read on this issue. His whole life, he's like defended Palestinians. Comes from an academic family. He's a college professor. And even he didn't fucking know about it. When I talk about it here, when I talk about it on those terms, people will always like go, what the fuck do you mean American Christians are responsible for Israel and like what Israel gets to do and why there's so much fucking unconditional support, at least amongst the population, for Israel's atrocious actions. <laughs> Beyond the obvious material reasons beyond the obvious reasons of imperialism the way to prop up support on the ground the way to propagandize the support for israel is by telling every fucking christian that at the top of the hour there's a three minute ad break and it's coming and it's kind of like a rapture where all of those who are subscribed will be propped up into the heavens because they've already subscribed they won't see the three minute ad break and the rest will burn in eternal damnation. Those who are unsubscribed at the top of the hour will see a three-minute ad break. Now, of course, if you no longer want to see those ads, you can subscribe. You can convert to evangelical Christianity. Okay? Born again. Baptize yourselves by subscribing for $5 or free at the top of the hour. Uh, or by getting gifted a sub by those like Black Kakarot. Black Katarot, sorry, not Kakarot. My red heifer is uncomfy. That's right! Here's a three minute ad break now. Kage Kam. Thank you for the five tier one gift subs as well. Saving five of those destined for eternal damnation from the fires that would have bound their lives in existence. Florida dropout and Emilio O face. Thank you for the five individual gifted subs. Let's continue. Pure priest and they are pure and they are waiting. So we have the priest, we have the red effort. We have the land and uh -huh. we have everything ready. We just need to wait another one and a half year. The Temple Institute is so serious about these preparations that they have already used diamond cutting tools to form the massive stones that will be used for construction of the new temple. As per Jewish creed, the stones cannot be carved with metal tools. And they have even prepared the ornaments that will be placed inside the temple once it's rebuilt. And there are many other specific requirements for the temple's construction that have been undertaken. Okay, so now you should understand why Abu Ubaidah made it a point to mention the arrival of the red heifers. To you and I, it may seem like a superstitious ritual with no bearing on the situation, but as I have already laid out, it is the first major step in a series of steps that will facilitate the destruction of the Al-Aqsa compound. And this is what will trigger a catastrophic showdown between civilizations. Once the heifer is sacrificed, it will be burned and its ashes will be mixed with water, which will be used to purify the Jews of Israel, who will then be allowed to construct the temple. With the ornaments and construction materials already prepared in accordance with Jewish law, this process will be rather quick. Another thing to keep in mind is the archaeological excavation that has been taking place underneath. I'm sorry, I, okay, this seems like a fun way to cover this, but like, I don't know what it is. And I think, I mean, I, I, I think I've seen some videos from these guys before, but there's just something about the tone that like something about the tone that they're taking in the video that like rubs me the wrong way. I can't be the only one who feels this way. Right. Where like they almost are covering this as though they're, it, it's like real, you know what I mean? Like, sure. It's fucking spooky. I don't know if it's a TikTok accent or whatever, but like, I needed to, at some point, be like, hey, this is fucking bullshit, by the way. Like, this is insane. Like, we need to, we need to just, like, take a deep, bre deep breath here and acknowledge how fucking stupid this is. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is. I just, I do, I mean, I know he, like, already said that it's, like, superstition and it's, like, silly, but, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. But, like, 
it does somehow what okay what do you want what do you want? are you bored are you that bored you had to get out you had to escape it's crazy my red heifer is acting out the Aloxa compound the Israelis claim it's for archaeological purposes, but they have never allowed Palestinians to participate or even observe this process. Many believe that this excavation is part of a dangerous agenda to weaken the foundations of the Al-Aqsa Mosque and bring about its collapse. There are reports of growing cracks in the foundation walls and ceilings of the mosque itself. Any attempt to repair them has been ignored and rejected by the Israeli government. In 2023, these excavations reached their most extreme point, with unprecedented levels of digging taking place underneath the compound. And in May of 2023, just a year ago, Netanyahu's cabinet held a meeting underneath Al-Aqsa. If you still aren't convinced of the intent of the Temple Institute to destroy the mosque, just take a look at this purpose statement on their website. In it, they detail that the Temple Mount rightfully belongs to the Jews, that the Palestinians are the modern people of Amalek, a tribe which the Jews destroyed thousands of years ago. This is pretty f***ing crazy, right? This isn't just the mission of some NGO operating in Israel. It's an entire movement picking up steam that is pervasive in Israeli society. The Temple Institute has given custom-made battle horns used during the war with the Amaleks to the IDF so that they can blow them in the Gaza Strip. And soldiers can be seen erecting signs, flags, and graffiti on homes in the Gaza Strip, announcing the coming of the temple and the destruction of the mosque. The writing is literally on the wall. Most Christians, I think, don't think about the third temple, uh, but those who do uh, believe that it will be built before Jesus returns and that the Antichrist will take over that third temple during the tribulation and try to rule the world from there. Could it happen in our lifetime? That, to me, is intriguing. I, I think we don't know. I don't know the channel, but maybe he hasn't been clipped enough to know you shouldn't go that long without giving critical commentary law. I do think people don't do enough critical thinking on their own. The videos like this may inadvertently have the opposite effect. No, it's just like, I just find it really fucking strange the way he's, the way they're covering it almost like lends credence to the conspiracy, not being a conspiracy, but real. I, I don't think he believes that the conspiracy is real, but he's like, it's almost like he's, I think he's one, greatly overemphasizing the impact that this kind of conspiracy has on uh both jewish culture and israeli uh society in general like i think i think um as far as as far as i have read into it a little bit it does seem to me like the attitude that many in israel have towards this these guys is that they're just like fucking nut jobs right and for a very long time as they openly showed in the video without mentioning it but definitely showed in the video that um, these guys were literally cast aside. They were like zealots, right? Now, I guess like a comparison I would make would be to like uh, post 9-11 Americans, right? We looked at a lot of those like fucking right-wing Christian freaks, but we kind of aligned with them on our endless conquest of, of killing anything that was even remotely Muslim. So I think now... It's just like, uh, yeah, those guys are fucking weirdos, but like, you know, they're, they're on our side type shit. I don't think, I don't think people understand like Jews as a whole are so much less religious than fucking Christians are in America. It's like very weird that like, that's why a lot of these conspiracies, in my opinion, about like Judaism or like the Talmud is, is so stupid. Have you like never fucking... Have you never met a Jew? No, they aren't. Yeah, they've 100% are. No, dude. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day because there are plenty who are Zionist, okay? And not for, like, Jewish reasons. I love people being like, you said most religious, you meant to say least? Oh, wait, did I say most religious? Sorry. I meant Jewish people are less religious as a whole than Christians are and and... They're more religious, the more religious Jews have less power overall than the most hyper fixated Christians in America. Shit will be clipped like crazy, let's go. Wait, what did I say? I know what you mean about this video. It feels like the type of video where people are going to start thinking that Jews are really up to some shady shit. 
You said most unreligious the first time, by the way? Oh, okay, so I was right. Yeah, okay, I didn't misspeak at all. I'm pretty sure I said it. Okay, if I said unreligious, that's what I meant. But yeah, I don't think it's like, um, like, I don't think the, the, the religious reasons, it's funny because like, it's been that, it's, it's been that way since the inception of Israel. Theodore Herzl is secular. The, the justifications for Israel being where it is now was so that like the, the, uh, ultra religious Jews that believed in, uh, Jews being nationless until the Messiah would at least be somewhat on board. At least they could pick some of those guys on uh, to, for the cause at a time when it was like not as popular. Zionism wasn't as popular amongst Jews and actually very unpopular in general. Like none of these motherfuckers give a shit about Judaism, bro. Most of these guys don't care. Most Zionists are not like, oh yeah, we're doing it because of religious reasons. Like they don't give a shit. It's kind of stupid. Oh, but there are some Jews who are really making, as you're, as you're reporting on, preparations to get ready for that moment, and that's something to watch closely. To many, this isn't just a war between a rebel group and an occupier. It's a war of conquest by religious zealots in the same vein as the Crusaders and ISIS. And it's all coming to a head. This felt so strongly about this provocation that they cited it as a motive for October 7th. نذكر بعدوان بلغ أقصى مداه على مصرانا وأقصانا وبدأ تقسيمه الزماني والمكاني فعلا وأحضرت البقرات الحمر تطبيقا لخرافة دينية مقيتة مصممة للعدوان على مشاعر أمة كاملة It wasn't only a desperate plea to the world to pay attention to the plight of the Palestinian people. It was a warning to the entire Muslim world that one of their holiest sites is under threat of destruction because they see the writing on the wall. They see the calls from organizations like the Temple Institute and the people who fund them. They see the policies being enacted by the violent and religiously extremist Israeli government working hand in hand with evangelical Christian extremists. They see the indoctrination of their children the future generation where they make yes dude you're right council communists are correct people who are oppressed by um uh by by <clears throat> colonialist movements should just fucking die because no war but class war shut the fuck up jesus christ dude so fucking annoying i god damn it i fucking despise the left so much to my very bone okay oh my god one day bro magically bro it's gonna happen bro i promise you're no different than the fucking dudes who think that the red heifer is going to be sacrificed and the Messiah is going to come back. But for fucking dialectical materialism somehow. I don't know how. Fuck. I try my very best not to shit on like different subsects of the left here, but sometimes you make it so impossible. Yeah, dude. You know who's actually engaging in bourgeois movements? The Palestinian National Liberation Front. Like what a fucking mentally unsound take, bro. How could you fucking write those words and like type enter and not feel deep shame in your soul? It's insane, dude. Like they're in no, they're not a troll. They're just a fucking, they're left comp. So they're just basically in the real world. They are regarded as like insane individuals. Sent clear to destroy the mosque and replace it with the third temple. They understand that these people are working towards their prophesied end times. And they understand that these extremist Jews and evangelicals believe that the key event to triggering this violence, destruction, and chaos is the construction of the third temple. And the construction of this temple doesn't begin until the red heifers are slaughtered, sacrificed, and burned on the Mount of Olives in East Jerusalem. Now, if you think all of this is nonsense, that it doesn't matter, well, it does. And this kind of religious extremism should be worrying because just imagine what the destruction of the Al-Aqsa Mosque would do to a world currently reeling from the conflict in Ukraine, the genocide in Gaza, the Houthis blockade of the Red Sea, and the Iranian proxy skirmishes with the United States. Such an event would have the potential to kickstart not just a wider regional war in the Middle East. At best, it would result in global energy and economic crisis, and at worst, nuclear world war. So I don't know about you, but I'm kind of hoping these red heifers grow a few strands of white hairs to invalidate them for the sacrifice, and that someone starts reining in these Israeli and evangelical extremists.
the same way they reeled in ISIS, because at least ISIS didn't have nukes. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel and don't. Yeah, bro, this is like <clears throat> my take ultimately is that it's greatly overstating, in my opinion, it's greatly overstating, in my honest opinion, how important this theory is to Jewish people and to people in Israel overall, and that it's infinitely more important for Christians than it is for Jews, okay? And I'm not even talking about, like, Zionist Jews, anti-Zionist Jews. I'm talking just, like, in general to Judaism. It's ridiculous. Most Jewish people in Israel look at those guys as, they, as though they are smelly, weird losers, okay? And this doesn't mean that, like, those people in Israel are not in support of completely fucking reducing Gaza into rubble. They certainly are. It's just that those guys don't have as much power, as much political power as, like, our religious nutters do in America. The inception of the Israeli state is already technically an irreligious act against the messianic conspiracies. It is literally against Judaism. It is against the Torah. So even if you were like super fucking religious, the Netarai Karta and other Orthodox factions that are anti-Zionist, also somewhat conditionally, but anti-Zionist regardless, are more in line with the religious scripture, the religious text, than these guys are because they're literally sitting on top of Israel. I don't know. I think the, the greatest responsibility, once again, is obviously uh, the Israeli state, Zionism, which is ultimately a secular concept and, very, and has very little to do with Judaism in general. And then American State Department interests, obviously, but also American Christians. If we're going to talk about like actual propaganda, it is American evangelicals that are infinitely more important to this equation. If Al-Aqsa was reduced to rubble, people wouldn't celebrate it for some like random... Uh, reason due to judaism they would celebrate it because they're fucking fascists who would love to see palestinians and muslims suffer okay polls show that 50 percent of israelis want to build the third temple over al-aqsa that's more than support for population uh, abortion bans exact okay great you're you're saying exactly what i'm saying building the temple over al-aqsa is a fuck you to the muslim world and a fuck you to the palestinians they like that because they're fucking fascists not because they're like really religious we are heading to the suburb. Let's talk about Pennsylvania, our red heifer. We are heading to the suburbs of Philadelphia. You're going to a place that is the whole ballgame for Democrats. The power is in your hands, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania elects presidents, and Pennsylvania knows President Biden. You know, we know Pennsylvania is going to be a, a battleground state this November. This is total Trump country. Trump won about two-thirds of the vote in both 2016 and 2020 in this county. Pennsylvania is incredibly important to President Trump. It's common to hear about immigration, without a doubt. They're worried about inflation overall. But, like, women's reproductive rights is still a huge one. We will restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land. This is also funny and true. Jewish laws and beliefs are all about argument and disagreement. Problem is there are thousands of years of text that even the rabbis of the time felt were unhinged and wrong, but they preserved it as guys so you can understand the arguments of why X or Y believe is wrong. People just read the unhinged shit and take it as all Jews believe it and bam, conspiracy. I studied to be an ultra-Orthodox rabbi. Yeah. Like, the Talmud is, as far as I understand, not meant to be taken literally, but instead to be debated on. It's the most argumentative religion for sure. Straight up. Is this the rich guy? Rich people who live in a rich suburb and a land banking and empty house. Just remember to change the law. This is housing advocate Purple Pingers, a.k.a. Jordan Vandenberg. And he's got a message for the owners. Dude, this guy's fucking awesome. Some of Australia's roughly 136,000 empty homes. Homes are for people to live in, not for rich people to make money off. Late last week, Mr Pingers let the internet know he was collecting the addresses of vacant properties through his website. There's a link which will let you submit just a vacant house. And oh. over the weekend, he published a handful of set addresses, albeit for a few hours before deleting them, encouraging anyone who needed a house to go for it. Fun fact, squatting in Australia is not necessarily illegal, which is the best type of legal, especially if the front door doesn't actually lock. It's a free house if you want it. 
in Australia, everyone has the right of entry to a property, an implied right of entry. You can enter a vacant property through an unlocked door, but as soon as the owner of the property realises you're in there, they can ask you to leave uh, and you can't disobey that order. As soon as your town... Why can't I know fucking actually sick Aussies like this guy and I only know fucking Alexa and Alex? You support squatters? What the fuck? That's so funny because I talked to Graham Stephen about this as well. And yes, of course, I think housing is a human right. What the fuck do you mean? If a house is not being utilized, then and some family or someone is like, well, I don't have a fucking home. I don't have shelter. This is great. Yeah, of course I would. Why the fuck wouldn't I? Top of the air. Oh, fuck you, mate. You fucking sick cunt. Fuck. Let's go. Let's go. Fucking got him, Chad. Fucking got him, chat. Let's go. Or no. It's top of the hour, mate. I let my guard down. I let my guard down. I got so fucking fired up by what this guy is doing. Let's go. At the top, at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. Right? If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for five Australian dollar dues, all for free with a Twitch Prime. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully that's me, right? Or get gifted a sub. Here's the Freeman outbreak now. Tampering with locks or breaking windows or something like that, that may count as burglary or trespass, and they may get the sheriff or the police it's called involved. Primos. For his work, Ping has received a mixed response of praise and death threats. But when news of his exploits hit the States, this is how they took it. Yeah, I wouldn't try that crap in Texas. Arrest this criminal! You will get a lot of people killed. We have the right to remove squatters. Labeled a commie, reported to Elon Musk, and with his DMs popping off, Ping has decided to start a list of vacant properties in the United States, too. And here's how that went down. No! God, please, no! Anyway, it's all kicking off. So, any regrets? If you need a house, I'll, um, I don't know, keep letting you know where some are for you to live in. Well, joining us now is Purple <laughs> Fingers himself. It's Jordan. G'day, Jordan. I mean, it's, it's pretty basic stuff. Like, it doesn't... I feel like that makes sense, right? Am I crazy? Like, what he's saying makes sense to the normies, maybe? No, I guess normies fucking, like, hate crime. They're like, oh, is something considered a crime? I hate that, right? That's, like, how it works. They're like, oh, I perceive this as being a crime, even though it's, like, technically legal, but it just feels bad because it makes landlords upset. Look, I know we're in a, a pretty serious housing crisis, but do you really think that encouraging people to squat on private property is the way to fix it? Yeah, look, let me answer your question by asking you another question. Um, do you think it's right that we have thousands of vacant, abandoned homes while we have people living on the street? No, I don't. I don't. Oh, but sorry. Is this, no, is this I don't. Oh, my God, Australians, be for fucking real for, like, three seconds, dude. I'm sorry. If you don't want me to make fun of your accent, like, don't sound like that. That's insane. No, I don't. It's a crazy way to respond to anybody. Just like that one girl that was like, Stop drinking Coke Zero! And I was like, is Pepsi all right? And she went, no! How can I be serious in that situation? How can I be serious? No! No, I don't! <laughs> oh, God, I love Australia. At what point is this racist to Aussies? Oh, my God. First of all, I can't be racist to Aussies. I'm a true blue Aussie. Which, by the way... A lot of people were fucking mad at me. Turns out, dude, the Australian left, the Australian TikTok left is so much more rabid than like our American rad libs. They were fucking mad at me because they thought I was being like unironic and being super serious. They were like, um, they were fucking posting the, uh, I think like the, the indigenous flag or whatever, like the indigenous flag colors in my, uh, in my comments on Instagram being like, why are you showing the, the genocidal colonies flag my fucking apologize now? And it's like, have you seen like three photos down? I'm literally holding up an AR-15 while wearing a fucking Texas flag on my chest with a vest talking about how I stormed alongside my fellow pitchers stormed the, the, the White House or not the White House, the fucking uh, Congress. They go way nuttier, bro. The online leftists in Australia go way nuttier. They go way harder. No jar, no jokes. 
The Australian Radlibs are feral. Yeah, it's crazy. How can you be against settlers but for, but for squatters? Make it make sense. Easy. One is violently displacing an indigenous population. The other one is literally taking shelter inside of empty, vacant properties. One is good. The other is bad. Oh, my God. Bro, they have royals on their money. They can shut the fuck up. No, it's just like, like, I didn't say I'm in support of, like, someone breaking into someone's fucking domicile where they're living. I didn't say you can go into someone's house when they're away for the weekend or something and start living there. That's fucked up. How was the weather in Melbourne? It was actually awesome. For the record, if I were to say, no, it's sick, actually, to fucking break someone's door down and go in there and live there forcibly, then you could be like, well... That's kind of similar to settler colonialism because that is what the settler colonists did. So, you know, nah, you go in and start living there. The right way to handle it, though? I mean, shouldn't be focused on policy? Um, yeah, I think there's definitely room to focus on policy, but what do we do in the meantime when people are on the street while we're focusing on policy? You use the word abandoned. Who owns a house and abandons it, Jordan? Uh, many people, I don't know if you've ever gone down the street and seen, like, houses empty for decades, but uh, I certainly... No. Have. Decades? No. Oh, really? Interesting. No. How many... Do, do you have any abandoned investors? Okay, this guy is so fucking mad. Oh my god, this interview is perfect. I love every part of this. No, I haven't. I haven't seen abandoned buildings. It's like, yeah, maybe in his fucking neighborhood. So the difference is a lock for you? Wait, what? Vacancy is temporary and a reality for all property. Or oh, no. Or oh, no. Brother, if a property is vacant, okay? If a property is vacant, it means it's not being used. I don't know how to describe it to you, okay? And it's, if it's especially fucking not being used for extended periods of time, that means someone's just sitting on it with hopes that they can either sell it later down the line or the the uh, rental price that they put up is entirely too high there's no occupant in there okay it's good vacancy is temporary and a reality for all property it's like yeah one day one day i'll be able to find someone to rent it dude well okay well guess guess what dude sucks i said this straight up to graham steven as well on his podcast as you guys know he's a real estate developer guy i said listen anything any measure that discourages private ownership of property as an investment vehicle i'm on board with this absolutely makes it harder for landlords. And for that, I think it's a good thing. Among many other reasons, I do think that housing is a right. And shelter is something that even animals need. And feral animals of the wild need shelter. Investment <clears throat> property is safe? No, I don't. But I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to get to the economics of this. If someone yeah. buys a property, I mean, yes, we've had land banking, obviously, <laughs> from uh -huh. foreigners. Uh -huh. But that's not widespread. There's not thousands of them. Uh-huh. He's like, yeah, if you're going to squat, do it in a Chinese house. <laughs> if you're going to squat, find a fucking Chinese house, mate. Not a fucking true blue Aussie landlord. Why aren't you finding a Chinese house to squat in? <laughs> oh, this guy's awesome. That is that guy's genuine opinion. No, I, I know that that is that guy's genuine opinion. Listen, I understand the racist component. But when it comes to a true blue Aussie, I'm not on board. These are Australian business owners. Stop them. Uh, on the census night, we had 10% of all housing stock um, vacant. But like, you know, I asked people for less than 48 hours and I've already got over 300 responses. Um, yeah, this guy's looking at this house. The chatter's looking at this house and going like, hey, vacancy's only temporary, mate. Vacancy's a temporary mindset, mate. He simply hasn't found the time. To occupy this building. So, and that, like, I'm not temporary. The so, I don't have the resources to ask everyone. But yeah, if you've got like over 300 places that have been abandoned for more than two years, some up to 20 years, uh, I think it's a problem that exists. Thank you for clarifying. You are not indeed the government. Mm -hmm. Jordan indeed. Martin, Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, so, you put this up. Are, are people actually moving into these homes? Um, yes. Not from the public ones, though. So, not from the ones you've listed? Yeah. So, it's happening. What, privately? Word of mouth or something? Yeah, yeah. Like, if someone, if someone needs a house, they can reach out to me and I can send them an empty home. What uh, sort of people are moving into these homes? You're seeing families with kids and...? Um, it's mainly people just experiencing housing insecurity and that can, yeah, that can look like anyone. Do they hook the house up to electricity? 
power gas? I haven't asked him. <laughs> so, so they're so they're just basically camping out in abandoned homes with no power. Yeah, I guess it, like it's raining in Melbourne at the moment, so um, I guess camping out inside is probably better than camping out in a bush. What about the idea that you might be encouraging people to you know break the locks and and move into a property? I mean, you say you don't do that, but if someone finds out from you, Jordan, that this house in this street's vacant, has been for two years. Wait a minute. It's got a lock on it, but it's been vacant for two years, three years. They're breaking the law. Don't you think you're culpable? And it is locked. How do you know they're not going to go around there and bust the lock and get in? I'm definitely not advocating that anyone well, I know breaks you're not into advocating it, but how do you house. know it's not going to happen? Well, like, squatting's legal. Breaking and entering is not legal, and I think... Purple Pingers also tweeted that this old dude goes to the same cafe as him in the mornings, and there's four properties abandoned on his walk there. Oh, that's awesome. That's where I'd leave it. You also say good people disobey bad laws. Mm, certainly, <laughs> yeah. So is that one of those bad laws you would want them to disobey? No comment while eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I Dude, I, I like that... <clears throat> I like that some of the guys on the show are kind of vibing with them, dude. Uh, you, you can say no comment, but it's kind of the heart of the matter, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Like, I, th I think this is, a, like, this is a pretty big ethical question that we need to ask ourselves. I have. I'm a little biased against people squatting on private land and building houses on there. What do you mean? What? Is this like a thing that's happening? Like to you? Why are you guys keep sending me this shit? <laughs> what do you mean? I, I don't understand it. Like I, I, I genuinely don't get it. Like technically, my house almost entirely occupies the plot that it sits on. But if someone were to like go in to the backyard and build a home there yeah i would be like that sucks dude don't do that the fuck are you doing okay at that point it becomes a matter of privacy like that's not what we're talking about here <laughs> yeah i'm a fucking fake leftist for that for that take hassan you a bitch um and we've got you know the government promising a couple houses in a decade or two from now while we have people living on the street and empty homes and i think like you know we've got adverse possession laws in Australia and we've got, um, you know, squatting is legal in Australia. So what's the solution? I think it's staring at us. Well, how'd you like to have someone squat in your place that you own? Uh, it's not vacant, nor is it. <laughs> Dude, oh my God, it's always the same argument, bro. How'd you like someone squatting in your place? Well, I'm living there. Does that seem like it's a vacant property that I'm setting up for investment purposes? God damn, dude, people... Dude, why are the arguments against, like, any kind of ostensibly leftist position always the same and always so fucking idiotic? Conservatives have one speed, dude. It's like, oh, yeah? Are you saying this mother stole a loaf of bread to feed, his, feed a family? What if she fucking shot you in the face and stole your car? It's like, that's a whole different thing that just happened. Oh, you don't like that, do you? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize these, these two things were the same. No, I never advocated to shoot people in the face, actually. <laughs> yeah. An investment property, so... You understand um, my question, don't you? Uh, it, look, if I had an investment property that was vacant for more than two years, for example, I would put it on the list. So, Jordan, I think we can all agree that what you're proposing is not the ideal solution. No, the, that, the ideal, Yeah, the ideal solution is that there would be some kind of policy response to deal with land that's just not being used mm -hmm. in this way. What would you like to see? Well, I'd like to see like a national vacant residential land tax that is quite prohibitive to either encourage people to rent out your house or sell it or do something with it. Just don't let it sit there while we have a housing crisis. It's pretty simple. I tell you what, Jordan, I follow you on TikTok and I always thought you were kind of putting on that cool voice, but now I hear it and I'm like, <laughs> my, I'll follow you into battle. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Now, this has blown up a bit, especially online in America. How are you going with, with that attention? Are they angry at you? And Americans can be very angry with people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Americans just want to kill homeless people. That's what I've noticed. It's not nice. <laughs> well, squatting right. isn't really legal in the States, so is that a concern for this whole kind of idea? <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. He's so right. Americans want to just kill homeless people, I've noticed. <laughs> also, okay, okay. Why are there like 700 hosts on the show? How many more new faces are we going to see in this process? This is, this show has too many hosts. I'm sorry. Some of them are very cool, 
but there are far too many hosts on this show. What, there's always like a new face. I'm like, all right, well, they'll get back to the old guy or the lady. And it's like, nope, new guy. Yeah, last time, look, I'm not an American lawyer by any stretch of the imagination, but last time I checked, adverse possession laws existed in every state, each 50 states. So, uh, I don't know, I'd have to ask a lawyer, I reckon. All right, Jordan, uh, well, it's quite the crusade. Thanks so much for talking to us tonight. Thanks for having me again, appreciate tonight. it. I don't, I don't agree with the way he's doing this and the yeah. tactics he's using, but I think one thing he has highlighted is we do have a lot of vacant houses. Mm. And so I think it's incumbent upon... 10%? Count, no, wouldn't be 10%. I just want, we should clarify, that, that census figure is not a good figure to use. No. Because yeah. that, all that captures is what dwellings were vacant on that night. On one night. And that was during a lockdown. I love that he's also, like, evil-looking. I love when evil people also look the part... Like, he just looks like he's permanently angry. Like, his eyebrows are all busted and shit. He's like, yes, I'm mid. I'm fucking mid. I'm big mid. I don't lock it. I don't quite lock it. He just looks like he's uh, permanently frowning. Down. So that could be people Great. who are trapped overseas. They could be yeah. people who are on holiday. There's all sorts of things. Yeah, so that's can, a bad stat to use. We shove that to one yeah. side. So, but but I think status, it's incumbent yeah. on local councils and state governments to do a, uh, a, a proper survey on how many places are vacant how long they've been vacant for. Once we've got that real data, then let's work out what to do. Would you do a data? Data? A vacant land no. tax? Well, no. What else would you no do? No way. No. No, no I, I think you could probably... Damn, he won them over so hard, they're, like, owning this guy now. They're debating him now. You could probably for sales of these places. Whew. Mm -hmm. that's, that's more bullshit than the land tax. He's, he's gone really commie. Well, I mean, you know, Steve, he's got, he's got a history, this guy, and you, you <laughs> yeah. delve into it. That's not Comrade the history. Steve. <laughs> yeah. What drives me insane is even by investor logic, investment comes with risk. Raising the price increases the return, but also lengthens vacancy, which raises the risk of damage and squatters. If landlords want risk-free return, they should get a high-yield savings account. You're absolutely correct on this, um, because a lot of the investment protections, or not investment protections, property protections, were actually designed originally to, like, protect single homeowners basically real estate owners are the most entitled motherfuckers on the planet when it comes to protecting their investment they act like their investment property is literally uh supposed to be protected in the same exact way as their fucking house that they live in with their goddamn families and people simply do not understand that reality you are so right on this polygon you are so fucking right about it they are such entitled babies, bro. It's insane. It's like, why is the government not protecting my investment? It's like, what are you talking about? Like, it's fucking ridiculous. It is ridiculous. <laughs> Landlords provide housing without them. We would all be homeless. True. Truly. Oh, yeah, it will be coming to an end. Also, you keep your crap up. It won't be pretty for you. Why is... Who's Anthony Scalise? <laughs> you type like you're currently eating a pot of PVA glue, mate. You triggered... Lol, I triggered you. Threatening someone with violence is actually illegal? Unlock squatting, babe. Any investment properties you care to share? There is no... There is no group more entitled than motherfucking landlords, dude. With respect to, like, how their the government has to, at every step of the way, no matter what the fucking cost is on the other side, they have to defend their investment. What is this? 28th of May, 2023, 10th of April, 2024. Time does fly when you're having fun. All right, now let's watch Real Estate Expert answers U.S. housing crisis questions. But my salary doesn't, sad face. That's really disappointing. So if we look back to 1995 to now, the percentage increase is almost 100% increase in the amount of rent people are paying. But income doesn't increase as quickly. Of course, rents increase with inflation, but this is more than that. A lot of the low cost units are disappearing from the market because they have transitioned to luxury housing. Landlords are charging more and more based on upgrades they've made, or they've transitioned to for sale homes. There's also been an increase. Prop 13 rook the entire state of California. My landlords pay like 5K a year on a $1.3 million house that I get to pay 3K to rent. Yeah, isn't it fucking wonderful when you get to pay someone else's mortgage, by the way, and then some, and pocket change for them? It's great. I mean, that's what this is. You're just working every fucking day of your life to subsidize someone else's living conditions. You literally work every day 
so you can give someone else who got the money before you, who was able to sit on this fucking land and lord over you, basically, and subsidize their lifestyle. That's it increase in what's called institutional investment. These are corporations buying up homes and also multifamily residential buildings to rent them out to make a profit. In 2001, only about 18% of rental units were owned by corporations. Today, that's about 50%. So it's really- Oh, she's Canadian, that's why, okay. Really likely that you're paying your rent to a corporate landlord. At Gareth McDade asks, is there a housing emergency or not? We are in a housing emergency and we're also in a housing crisis. A housing emergency is actually a legal term. If a vacancy drops below 5%, the municipality can declare a state of emergency. And that allows them to access all these different kinds of policies. Rent stabilization, rent control are examples of this. A healthy housing market has above 5% vacancy rate. The vacancy rate in New York City is actually 1.4% right now. Anything that charges less than $2,400 a month in rent, the vacancy rate is actually 0.4 to 0.8, a very low vacancy rate. I love B43 asks, why are houses so f***ing expensive? Houses are really f***ing expensive right now. Number one, it's a supply and demand issue. The U.S. is short about 4 million homes to meet the current demand. And a scarcity of any commodity means the price goes up, up, up. In fact, 2023 was the least affordable year ever to buy houses in the United States. Interest rates are increasing. It's very expensive to invest in development projects. And it also encourages developers to develop luxury housing rather than more affordable housing. Because this wealthy market it exists developers yeah except when you know the interest rates were low they still weren't fucking developing affordable properties sorry to you know disagree with your urban housing professor chatters but are building to target that market they're building very expensive luxury homes that means that other housing isn't getting built so everyone's prices increase as a result of more luxury development at true nyj seems like Seems like interest rates increase, only expensive properties get developed. Interest rates decrease, only expensive properties get developed. Does seem like only expensive properties are getting developed. It's not like the incentive structure changed. Jet GC asks, why are cities not using these abandoned towers to create affordable or homeless housing? What the f is wrong with this country? Depending on the age and condition of the building, sometimes it can actually be more economic. Yeah, except the... That that ch that person has asked that question specifically about the fucking half-built tower in the middle of goddamn downtown Los Angeles. And that was a newly built tower. They just didn't finish it. Just finish the fucking project. What do you mean? Economically viable to demolish the building and build something new. Older office buildings or pre-war office buildings, ventilation required that windows be provided for every office space. So it's easier to convert these older office buildings to residential because they're already laid out like our residential buildings. Newer buildings are very difficult to convert to residential and it's very expensive to do this. If you want to convert this into a residential building, you have to replace all of these windows. You can't have a bed bedroom without an opening window. You would have to puncture a hole in the middle of the building to provide window access, reconfigure all of the plumbing in the building to hook up to all of the individual bathrooms and kitchens, change the electricity supply, change the HVAC systems. So this requires just completely transforming the inside guts of these buildings. In New York City, there's about 94 million square feet of unused office space. That's equivalent to all of the office space in Dallas and Houston combined. It's a huge amount of vacant space right now, and we have to figure out what to do with it. At High for Housing says, what housing technologies are here to stay? Modular? Modular housing can also be referred to as prefab. Different components will be manufactured in different manufacturing sites. They're all brought back to the site and assembled kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. The manufacturing can take place where labor is cheaper, and it also doesn't disturb the neighborhood as much. Another newish building technology that I'm really excited about is something called mass timber, where wood is laminated together with a special glue to create really large beams of wood that are very strong. They're also fire resistant. They have a lower carbon footprint as well. Mass timber is now becoming stronger, and so it can be used to build higher and higher buildings. Previous to a couple of years ago, the highest building you could build in the United States out of timber was six stories. Now you can build 18 stories. So we're going to start seeing high rises 
built entirely of wood. It's pretty amazing. At Readlight says, it will be interesting to see how the value of oceanfront property changes as sea levels continue to rise. This will be really interesting. So far though, it really hasn't affected home prices. At Schmohawking, Hmm. asks, what is redlining? It's kind of come to signify any sort of racial discrimination in housing, but actually there's a really specific history around redlining. This is a redlining map from Cleveland. In the 1930s, the United States federal government decided to start a new mortgage program to allow home buyers to access federally backed mortgages. The government created these maps to determine where their investments would be safe. Green areas, mm -hmm. you see down here, it's where the federal government felt that their money would be well used. They also created a D class or a red class, which was really a no-go zone where the federal government did not want to provide government-backed mortgages. These redlined areas were where black families lived. It made it very difficult for residents living in these areas, predominantly black residents, to access mortgages. Many of these maps exist for communities all across the United States. These maps were not made public until 1978 when a historian stumbled upon them. If you look at the neighborhoods that were historically red- Not being explicit about the racism? Yes, she is. What are you talking about? This is a fucking academic. She 100% is saying that. What are you talking about? What, you think she's like saying, oh, they accidentally stumbled upon the black neighborhoods that they purposely excluded from fucking mortgages, like federally backed mortgages? No, she's like very openly saying that that is what is going on. Blind, these are still some of the most racially segregated neighborhoods across the United States. And those effects are still felt today. Many of the historically redlined neighborhoods have experienced disinvestment, and more recently, many of them have become targets for gentrification, displacing many of these residents as well. At Don Gotti says, is gentrification all bad? Pretty much. There's something called direct displacement. People are directly displaced from their homes because they can no longer afford the high- Chatter's doing what they do to you to the video. I know, literally. She'll be in this, she'll be explaining it. And Chatters will be like, the thing that she's explaining, I think she should be explaining harder. Your rents. Something else happens as well that's called indirect displacement. The shops are different, the community members are different, and so this is kind of making you feel uncomfortable in your own neighborhood. Both of these things are bad. I think a lot of people think about gentrification associated with these kind of design choices that hipsters make. So you think of the Helvetica house numbers or sometimes the gentrification fences around homes. Really, these are kind of an effect of gentrification. They're not causing gentrification. Gentrification is really caused by institutional investment in lower income neighborhoods. Investors are coming in and recognizing what's called a rent gap. The gap between the current rents that are charged in low income Income area and the potential to charge higher rents. These neighborhoods might be really centrally located, might be near transit, and so investors see an opportunity to buy up and improve buildings and then take advantage of that gap by charging higher rents. At Burns 12, Regina says, I'm confused as to how exactly our Airbnb. These usernames are so funny. Oh my God. Burns 12 Regina. He's affecting the housing Regina. Market. A lot of rentals that would have been provided for permanent residents have transitioned to Airbnb housing, which means it reduces the amount of total rentals available on the market and drives prices up. For example, we can look to London. It is the city with the largest number of Airbnbs in the entire world. 50,000 Airbnb units were previously long-term rental units in London. That means that 50,000 rental apartments were taken oh, off the market and are no longer so available bad. to permanent residents. Also, some research has shown that Airbnbs increasing actually contributes to gentrification and raising home prices in certain neighborhoods. At Scotty ZS says, how the f did my parents buy a house at 26 years old? Well, I have $2,000 in my bank account. I feel your pain, Scotty ZS. Really, things are much different for millennials than they were for boomers. When boomers were reaching the age to buy a home around the late 80s, early 90s, if you made about $50,000 a year, the average home at that point was about $121,000. So that's oh really my God. only about a two times increase from your income. There is a little bit of a dip here following the 2008 recession, but it increased dramatically since. The median home price increased by 43%, where the median income only increased by 7%. The average right now in the United States is a home price that is about six times the median income. 
you think about very expensive places like the California coast or New York City, that can be about 11 times the median income. At Kevin V. Dahlgren asks, mm. what is the leading cause of homelessness? There are a lot of common misconceptions around people who are unhoused, that perhaps drug use is involved, that there are mental illnesses, and these things do exist, but they are not the drivers of homelessness. Recent research from the University of California, San Francisco actually found that the leading cause of homelessness is a lack of access to affordable housing. What? No. What? No. No. What? What? Oh, come on now. What's next, guys? The leading cause of gun violence is unrestricted, unfettered access to a market of guns? I mean, come on. Who told you that? Fucking Mao? Who did that study, huh? Mao Zedong? Is that who? Come on. Come on. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Yeah. Okay, dude. That's bullshit. What's next? Paywalling access to healthcare actually yields worse returns for the overall healthcare of every citizen? Pfft, no. No. Wait, wait, what, what, what else? What else? Uh, privatizing otherwise public education leads to worse educational outcomes overall for every citizen? Stop, dude. There's no way those are real things, okay? La 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 I can't hear you. Stop it. Fucking stop. Stop playing with me. Stop. Privatizing prisons leads to mass incarceration? No, that would never happen. Creating a profit incentive to lock up more people would not lead to locking up more people as a consequence of that, especially, especially when you can legally enslave people that are imprisoned. No, I will not believe you. I will believe other things instead. I choose to not believe what you're saying because it sounds like some commie bullshit. I choose to instead believe in other things, like how you are wrong and gay and possibly a Marxist, which is worse than all the other things. It's very easy to lose your home. 8.5 million Americans right now are at risk of becoming homeless because rents are so high and incomes are so low. Any increase in rent or perhaps a medical emergency could be the difference between someone remaining in their home and becoming unhoused. At News Manu says, why are there so many homeless in Los Angeles? There's a common myth that there are a lot of unhoused people in Los Angeles there because are. they That's move there for access to oh, the good weather. Yeah. This is really not true. Researchers have found that the vast majority of people experiencing homelessness in Los Angeles are from California and even from that specific county. Okay, yeah. That they previously <laughs> I was wrong. She is right. My bad had housing in that area and were then priced out of it and became unhoused. California, as you can see here, has the most number of unhoused people of any state across the country. God, this is the most cursed map of all time, dude. Who's in the shitter? Which state is worse, has a worse fucking housing crisis than, than the next? You're joking, right? What do you mean? Oh, everything I was talking about with uh, with like the guns and the healthcare and all that stuff. Yes, dude, I was being, oh, I was being facetious. <sighs> Fuck. Country. This number has increased forty percent since two thousand seven. New York also has a very high number of about one hundred three thousand people. Bro, how the fuck are there homeless people in even Wyoming, dude? What is happening in this country, bro? How how is that possible? How is that possible? There are 500,000 people in Wyoming. How the fuck are you homeless? How did they let this happen? That makes no dang sense. There are 2 million cows in the state of Wyoming. 500,000 people in the state of Wyoming. People. There are differences, though. Most of the unhoused people in California are unsheltered. This means they don't have access to temporary shelter facilities. In New York, the majority of those people are sheltered. That's a result of a policy in New York City called Right to Shelter. New York City is the only city in the country that mandates the city to provide a shelter bed to every single person who requests it. At Don J says, why are corporations buying up houses just to rent them? Why should any house be owned by Walmart? 
I don't know about Walmart, but corporations are certainly buying up houses. There was a lot of internet speculation about a company called BlackRock, which is a private equity firm, buying up single family homes and renting them out. This isn't really happening. However, BlackRock is investing in real estate investment trusts that are investing in apartment building acquisitions and rentals. So BlackRock isn't buying up suburban homes, but they are investing in the rental market. And so corporations are recognizing real estate as an asset class that they would like to invest in just like stocks it's the same fucking thing no but she's right she's right to parse through it everybody thinks like it's like blackrock 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 and and that is only one part of the puzzle i don't like that people i don't like that people think that it's just like it's just blackrock or that it's like uh speculators that are like fucking up the housing market when it, it existed even before blackrock was like wow this shit's actually pretty pog and bonds. This is a form of what's called the financialization of housing. And this really means the transition of housing from a social good, from something we need to live, to something that can be bought and sold and traded and where people can make lots of money. At Hody Hydebar Alley One asks, why are there so few houses on the market? It takes a very long time for developers to receive approvals to build their projects. In Santa Monica, California, the average development takes 48 months to be approved. That's 48 months where the developer is waiting for approval before they can begin construction. Increasing interest rates are also affecting housing supply. Okay, she's a little bit of a, I feel like she's she's a bit, a little bit of a yimby, I think. Like, a little bit, a little bit. She yim doing the yimby thing, yeah. But to be fair, I mean, she is Canadian and also like a urban policy professor, so you gotta be a yimby. Wait, why does Zana not like yimbies again? <laughs> Any policy that libertarians advocate for i'm going to be a little bit questionable on okay if larry elder is is saying the same things that you're saying on twitter then maybe there's a little bit more to the problem than what you think is the solution that's all i'm saying libertarians are not yimbies by and large uh yes they are yimbies are fine they're just annoying i mean there's a lot of things that yimbies advocate for that are correct okay more housing is not a bad thing it's a good thing it's also the type of housing that it needs to be built that is important, though. I never know how to respond to Yimbis who cheer for, like, she doesn't cheer for luxury housing. She openly stated that that's a problem. <laughs> I never know how to respond to Yimbis who cheer for luxury housing with the thought that it increases the housing supply and thus reduces rents for the average renter. I feel like there's evidence on all housing is good side, but it, I don't know. It doesn't feel very socialist. It's not. And they're wrong. It doesn't. As a matter of fact, luxury housing has slated to uh, or has, has sometimes in some instances actually only decreased the uh, overall inflation of the cost of housing but never decreased the cost of housing and sometimes it actually leads to increasing the cost of housing even further because now there's more expensive real estate in the market so all of the other landlords go oh look see this is a gentrified neighborhood now we're gonna fucking increase our, our rent because there's a whole foods down the line Huh. Why are libertarians yimbies? Um, yimbies, yes, in my backyarders, are a response to nimbies who uh, say, not in my backyard, which is to say, no development in my backyard. Yes, development in my backyard. Yimbies are not as bad as nimbies who uh, object to any kind of development whatsoever because they fear that it will change the culture and the overall vibes of the city which is to say we don't want fucking poor people or black people living in our neighborhoods. That's usually what NIMBYs are doing. Anyway, in Miami, a bunch of NIMBYs were happy at the rezoning and building up a bunch of new apartments near me. My rent went up and I'm moving back in with my parents. Yeah. NIMBY, a person who believes building more housing and getting rid of cars would solve the homelessness crisis but doesn't dive deeper into housing policy or fixing public transportation. Usually tech bros from San Francisco love Airbnb. No, NIMBYs don't love Airbnb. Yimbies are in favor of deregulation and the abolition of like zoning restrictions, specifically single family zoning, single family housing units are actually genuinely an issue in cities like San Francisco and even in cities like Los Angeles. Um, I don't think Yimbies are in favor of Airbnb. I've never met a Yimby that is in favor of Airbnb. It's funny you mentioned Whole Foods because I was just about to mention an apartment building in my neighborhood in San Francisco that's right across the street from Whole Foods. But it's going to be 100% affordable units and it's being built giga quickly, which is sick to see. I don't know how to properly word this, but I feel like the label of luxury housing ruins the overall understanding of what you deserve for housing. Obviously, having a dog washing station is a luxury and perhaps excessive. 
But the idea of having in-unit laundry and a dishwasher being classified as luxury is insane to me. Everyone is deserving of good housing. The problem is, even if it's good housing, the pricing is luxury. Even if it's housing that everybody deserves, the pricing is at a luxury price point. That's the issue. Once again, market conditions and all. Ultimately, my major my major issue with Yimbis in general, even though some might correctly call me a Yimbi as well, because I do believe that we need to build more housing. Oh, my major disagreement with the Yimbis is that this is not like a like the market doesn't work. And this is not a market solution to a problem. In a perfect world, there would be no market whatsoever when it comes to housing. Or at least a market would exist for, I guess, second houses or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Only for uh, your, your vacation homes in a perfect future where everybody already had a permanent housing. Kaya, Place, what are you doing, baby? Why are you sitting on the ground? It's bad for you. Place, no. Get, no. Oh. Do not look at me like that. Do not look at me like that specifically for existing homes. If you purchase your home prior to the recent increases in interest rates, you don't want to sell and buy a new home and risk getting a bad interest rate. If we look at- Thoughts on Fiverr One style housing? Don't get me fucking started. I think it's ugly as shit. I think it's ugly as sin. I honestly think boring ass, gray ass, brutalist architecture, uh, Soviet style apartment blocks are infinitely preferable to the fucking ugly ass Five over one housing units that we see everywhere. I think they are a stain. They are a stain. They are a blight on every fucking modern city. I despise it so much. It hurts my soul to see. For those of you who don't know one, uh, don't know what I'm talking about. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what the fuck I'm talking about. This is the perfect representation of... Five over one buildings right here. You see this shit? Oh, God. Oh, what a fucking blight this is. Oh, my God. I hate it. I fucking hate it so much. I hate it. Isn't that mixed-use housing? No, dude. The fucking look of it, okay? Did you not hear what I just said? I think this design is dog shit. It's not... Oh, God. Oh. I, I just hate it. I love having all these just so we can use the rest of the area for parking spaces. Yeah. It's so nasty. I fucking hate it. Sorry, boss, but five over one is the only density America's ever going to get. It just sucks so much ass. Bro, you have zero taste. You think this is taste? This is cyanide. That's what you're tasting. What you're tasting right now is fucking poison. Okay? Meanwhile, in Superior Soviet building... Unironically, much prefer this. At least every fucking unit has a balcony, bro. What do you mean? And probably living spaces in between as well, like public spaces uh, in between it. Oh, God. Someone said my trigger word, Culver City. Oh, God. Oh, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it, chatter. I love how fucking stupid people are, where they think, like, I'm not grossed out by this design, and I just hate the concept of multiple family units. Like, that's... That's what I'm advocating uh, against here. I hate multiple family units and not like how ugly, how much of a blight this fucking shit is. It's so stupid. I, while I'm literally in the process of explaining to you how I would prefer even this, which is my least favorite uh, uh, overarching uh, style in architecture. Yimbies have no fucking brain processing power. You, they're, they're like, no, my way or the highway. It has to be this ugly ass dog shit. Anyway. Bungalow court apartments are a good small solution. Too bad they don't make them anymore in LA. What is this? Commie blocks are awesome, actually. A reply to living ironically in Europe. years behind the socioeconomic their own people. In June 1940, 50 million people live in comprehensive policies for human and industrial resettlement in historic shift, of course, required effective and quick urban planning. So, consider. This is one of the only Victorian style American mixed use streets. Oh, don't tell me. I'm gonna nut. Wait, is this Hoboken? It looks like it might be Hoboken. This is my shit, dude. Oh my god, I nut when I think about this, This okay? I think, unironically, it kind of looks like Hoboken, doesn't it? The sidewalk is still much too narrow. This is every small town in the Midwest. Have you heard cities are trying to let the homeowners rent tiny homes in their backyards? Yes, well, they do that in California, too. That's everything in the Midwest, Lamont. I know. 
I, I know places that used to places that fucking straight up are still like main streets in every fucking small town is kind of like this. I'm born and raised in Hoboken. This is in Hoboken. I'm Bungalow Valerie Guston, and I've been an architect in Los Angeles for over 20 years. Today, I'm going to break down architectural details of some of the most popular. Architect Sylvanus Marston is often credited as oh, being the inventor I know what of these are. These are sick. Apartment, and a lot of his buildings are concentrated in Pasadena, although many of these buildings were going up around the same time all over South and East Los Angeles. In this image here, we see a couple of things that characterize <sighs> a bungalow court apartment. So you can see here that there's a central walkway that went down the middle. Every house had a sort of front porch that faces the courtyard for access. And people also had ample garden space that made it feel much more like a single family house than an apartment building. Most of the bungalow court apartments were built at the turn of the 20th century. They're also an endangered species in Los Angeles, much like the dingbat apartment. It's so funny because like almost all of the fucking Everything in Los Angeles was built in nineteen twenties, man. Is there's no there's no weather. <laughs> so it, literally nothing nothing withers away. Because current zoning laws wouldn't allow for this many units to be built on these size lots. The houses were small, typically five to six hundred square feet, but you could essentially fit sometimes four to six units on the same lot that would hold a single family residence. That density is crap, still preferable to the fucking single family zone zoning that exists now in its place um have you heard of earthquakes wait what everybody have you lived or been to los angeles so many of our fucking apartments were built in 1920s now let's take a look at how the bungalow court apartments organize the lot so in this one block we can see three different types of bungalow court apartments the first one has a nice generous courtyard in the middle and you'll see that each one of the buildings is separate. The courtyard is lushly landscaped, and you'll see that there's a unit at the end, and parking happens at the rear of the building. The second building provides... They have these in Beverly Hills too, but of course, as always, um, that's all been turned into single family. Like, they're, they're all separate units now. Smaller separate units, houses. but then there was a slightly larger unit towards the rear of the apartment. Each of the units is its own standalone separate house. There's a generous courtyard in the middle, and the houses get light on all four sides. It's so What sick. a contrast to a dingbat apartment. In this example here, it's a much more dense example of a bungalow court apartment, but many of the characteristics that we love about a bungalow court apartment are still available. There are small courtyard spaces. The courtyard is still landscaped. An abundant before the fucking yimbies like lose their goddamn minds having uh making sure that there's like ample natural light and also having access to like a shared like green area is incredibly important in city planning in general so shut the fuck up okay not every fucking aspect needs to be this disgusting dull concrete bullshit like oh that's space that's space you could build a fucking you could put a you can put a five over one there. <laughs> That's too much space. Natural light goes into every unit. The bungalow court apartments were a great first stop if you were coming to live to Los Angeles, because wherever you came from, you really got the LA experience of being able to enjoy the outdoors. It was really communal, and it was the closest you could come to living in a single family house if you couldn't afford one. So many of the things that bungalow apartments did at the turn of the 20th centuries and into the early 20s the city of los angeles is revisiting now they realize that density really helps with affordability <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> many new no ordinances way. are allowing your standard single family lot to be built with more additional units next up mission revival now, what makes Mission Revival so enduring to Southern California is because it's familiar and traditional. It has a certain warmth that people like and These can houses relate are to. sick. It really speaks to the history of California before it became part of the United States. Mission Revival is the style of some of the earliest built structures in California. The Spanish so built sick. a total of 21 missions in California over a period of about 65 years. You actually find it in many neighborhoods of Los Angeles, San Fernando Valley, South and East Los Angeles, and also all over West Hollywood. To learn more about Mission Revival, let's start by looking at an actual mission. The first thing you'll notice is the thick walls that were built typically of adobe. They had clay barrel tile roofs. And then finally, the arched colonnade, which provided temperature control. The missions are now sick. Yeah, bro, I'm not talking about like, no, when I say Mission Revival as a, 
as a style of architecture is sick. I'm actually saying what the missionaries did was awesome. I'm glad you you were able to parse through my words and find the truth behind what I meant. I fucking love missionaries, famously. Pro-Catholic missionaries all the way. By blocking the direct sunlight from these interior spaces, one of the elements we typically would define as sustainable in today's time. Now, a lot of ideas from mission architecture made its way into residential architecture in the early 1900s. Architecturally, see a lot of similarities between these two buildings. First is the use of the colonnade. And in the residential example, you'll see that it happens at both levels, up here, and there. These deep overhangs would protect the interior of the house from direct sunlight and keep it cool during the hot days and warm during the nights. Both use the red clay barrel tile and of course the arch. In addition to that, you'll see that the corbels that extend out from the roof is also evident in both of these examples. You also oh. notice, however, some significant differences between these two examples. The arch at the front of the house has a more peaked apex and the ones at the second story, one is more shallow and the other is more circular. Another important difference to note is that much of these residential buildings were built out of wood framing, whereas the missions were built. You're, you're actually not wrong. Chatter, who said, is that the house from uh, Grand Theft Auto V? Yes, technically, I think, uh, was it Michael? Michael's house was uh, like this style, like Spanish style. Out of action. Moon Sanim, thank you for the 20 community gifted subs. You might not be able to get a missionary style house, but you will be able to get a gifted sub at the top of the hour. <sighs> and no longer see the ads at the top of the hour, that is. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or free, baby. Here it is. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Actual adobe or stone construction. And on a typical single-family house where you're building out of a wood frame wall, the wall doesn't have to be as thick. So you still were able to get some of the shading value of these colonnades, but because these walls were built out of wood framing, you didn't get the same insulation value out of these walls that you did when you built out of adobe or stone. Let's take a look at what Mission Revival architecture looks like in a more contemporary example. Sick. Now this house is much smaller, but once again, we still see a lot of the techniques that made Mission and revival architecture pleasing to the eye these houses were able to be air conditioned but we still have this colonnaded protected entry with a deep overhang we also still have a large arch opening that goes into the primary public spaces of the house typically the living room there are a few decorative elements on the facade wall sconces and then also a decorative roof vent which allows all the heat to escape from the roof during the hot summer months. Mission Revival architecture is not only popular for residential architecture, it's also used all over Los Angeles in places like- I also love a lot of the intricate tile work that many mission style homes use on the floors and even on the arcs. Yes, that's another fucking awesome fact. I grew up on these houses back in San Diego. My parents still live there now, but it definitely was weird feeling considering the history since I'm Mexican indigenous. Union Station, Beverly Hills City Hall, and a host of other building types including hospitals, churches, schools, and train stations. And people often talk about Los Angeles doesn't have much architectural history, but Mission Revival architecture is- God, LA is so ugly. Bro, this guy is literally showing some of the best architecture in Los Angeles. The fuck do you mean? This is unironically some of, I think, some of the most cohesive, coherent, structured architectural choices that you literally do not see in many cities in this country now. This is actually good. You are uncultured. Oh my God. A history that's always visible. Next up is a type- Shadows will go to like a European city. They'll go to fucking like, they'll go to, to, to uh, Italy and be like, oh my God, look at how beautiful. And then shit on this. Of house that most people dream about when they think about living in Los Angeles, the Boardwalk Beach House. LA is famous for its boardwalks, like Santa Monica, Venice Down. Beach, or Manhattan Beach. So what makes the Boardwalk Beach House different from a Down. typical beach house? Let's start with the back, which really reads as the front of the house. There's a couple of important things to note when looking at the Boardwalk Beach House. First is directly in front of the rear of the house where the best views are is also a public boardwalk. Another important thing to note is that the rear of the house is typically very expansive and open, providing the views to the beach which is why you live there. Much like a dingbat, the space between the houses is relatively narrow, so there's not much emphasis placed on windows or natural light at those locations. All of the energy is put towards this rear facade that offers these amazing views to the Pacific Ocean. 
One of the things that sets Boardwalk Beach Houses apart from its... I do think that the uh, the the beach houses, like the Boardwalk Beach Houses are kind of ugly. ...other counterparts is the fact that they're more likely to be a custom home. Unlike a developer who might build six or seven dingbat apartments at the same time, a boardwalk beach house is more likely to be commissioned by someone who will hire an architect. You end up with a much more varied and eclectic beach house. Yeah, and they're fucking uggo. Because every boardwalk beach house architect is a fucking crackhead, dude. Look at this front than you would in a typical urban neighborhood in Los Angeles. One of the main challenges with a boardwalk beach house is how do you deal with public access and protecting privacy and views. One of the main ways is to either submerge or elevate the primary floors of the house. Other examples mean that you kind of close more of that front part of the house down when you're at street level. And in other houses, they'll use landscaping. I often like to think of the boardwalk beach house as a mullet. Business in front, party in the back. Now let's take a look at the business side of the Boardwalk Beach House. Boardwalk Beach Houses are typically on narrow lots, and the front of the house is typically on an alley or a small street with limited views. The business side of the beach house is pretty boring. All you typically got is a two-car garage. Much like their friends, the Dingbat, you typically also have a pedestrian entrance that happens along the side yard of the house. So it's a typically dark, it is low-key kind of dope, though. Like, this area is... I mean, I've never lived in it. I've never lived in that part of town. But the vibes are very different, but very cool as well, I think. Um, like, Venice is what this is. And also, canyon-like entrance into... I feel like it's, it's an entirely different vibe overall in this part of Los Angeles. People joke about how, like, yeah, Manhattan Beach, Venice... Uh, these part well not my hemorrhage but like Venice specifically uh, feels like an entirely different part and that like when you live in Venice you never leave Venice and vice versa to the main house which is all about parking and the utilitarian needs the back of the house is really where all the action is the great views of the beach the sand the people all of the things that make living in California great. Boardwalk beach houses do provide a great opportunity for architects to experiment and create really unique houses. Now let's take a look at a true classic, the California bungalow. The California bungalow was one of the other housing styles that became popular at the turn of the 20th century as California's population continued to grow. The great thing about the California bungalow is that these homes could be purchased from a man. These are also sick. Magazine. The lumber arrived pre-cut, much in the same way as if you might get a piece of flat pack furniture and could be assembled right there on site in a number of weeks. Bro, remember when people did that? Weeks. Now, one of the most popular... Well, not remember. Obviously, you weren't around. I was. I'm that old. But that's how motherfuckers build bungalows houses, bro. Is the craftsman style bungalows. You'll find them all over Los Angeles, but also in areas specifically like Silver Lake, Echo Park, and also parts of South Los Angeles. So what are some of the characteristics that make a California bungalow quintessentially California and so popular in Los Angeles? Craftsman style architecture has some specific characteristics that we can clearly see here in this image. Those include exposed rafters, a large deep open porch, tapered columns, and gabled roofs. A lot of this dates back to the relationship of craftsman architecture to the arts and crafts movement, which was really popular in the 19th century. Craftsman is often what we associate with the California bungalow, but it's probably important to note that not all California bungalows were built in the craftsman architectural style. There were a wide variety of California bungalow styles, including shotgun style houses, where all the rooms were laid one after another in a sequence. You also had smaller two-room bungalows, similar to the dog trot house, which you might find in the American Southeast. So-called because it was basically two rooms on either side of an open open breezeway and a dog could just trot on right through the middle. The California bungalow epitomizes the Californian lifestyle. One of the great things about living in California is the indoor-outdoor living experience. The word bungalow comes from a Hindi word meaning a house in the Bengali style. A house in the Bengali style typifies some of the same characteristics that we find in the California bungalow. A wide veranda, a low slope roof that allowed shade and protection from the environment. 
The California bungalow epitomizes the California living experiences. As a single family house, it offered all of the great things people came to California for. Abundant sunshine, great weather, and the ability to be outdoors for a large part of the year. Those are just some of the architectural styles that define life in Los Angeles. Let me know which is your favorite in the comments below. That was sick. Can you cover the Apple River stabbing? No. Why would I cover it? local minnesota news with 400 views on it that's wild bro what have you not heard of this no what is that you missed the first two styles yeah i skipped the first style not the first two dingbat apartments is the only one i skipped here we'll watch it to allow cars to park first up the dingbat typically a 6 to 12 unit apartment these are ass but whatever building the front of the building is elevated to allow cars to park another thing that you'll notice about the dingbat is that it's a box it's all about efficiency and filling the lot to maximize the number of units that can fit on a piece of property dingbat apartments really define neighborhoods all over los angeles they can be found pretty readily all over the san fernando valley west los angeles and neighborhoods like culver city and palms so why is it called a dingbat? The term dingbat comes from typography. It's a symbol that's not a letter or a number. Many of your dingbat buildings featured a name or had a symbol on the front, a way to sort of decorate these flat, banal facades. The construction of dingbat apartments really exploded in the post-war boom of the 50s and 60s in Los Angeles, when many people were moving for jobs. What better way to give some sort of character to a building that essentially had none than to provide some sort of symbols or some sort of fun, playful elements on the front of the building to make people feel my environmental geology professor says stay the fuck away from these because in what equaled they will drop through the carport a little bit more excited about their homes here's how to spot a dingbat in the wild first off it's essentially a big box the ground floor space yeah <laughs> why do you not love these they have so much character probably because i lived in one and it's ass <laughs> When I lived in one, I fucking hated it. It is so ass, dude. This is then cannibalized. This is the starter apartment for many Los Angelinos. Like, inevitably, you are gonna, at a certain point in your life, you are gonna live in one of these fucking piece of shits that has not been updated since 1948 when it was first built. You know what I mean? As to allow parking for cars, which is known as. A yeah, always the double. Always the fucking double parking space Soft too. Ugh. The apartments are typically accessed by stairs along the side yard. And you can see that they've got this dingbat symbol of a flamingo. What you've also got is a full width curb cut that- Law, maybe the people you know, the people I know in LA live in tents, Law. Wait, what? Sick chatter. Like, what the fuck? Why are you making it seem like living in a fucking piece of shit apartment like this is like somehow the lap of luxury? Are you okay? Chatters will be like, no, dude, it's a competition and I'm winning. I know way poorer people than you. Okay, sick, man. That runs the full face of the building. And so the entire width of the lot is given over as essentially a driveway. Now, as someone who's almost been hit by somebody backing out of their dingbat apartment, I can tell you dingbat apartments really don't make for great pedestrian friendly streets. Now, let's get a better look at how dingbat apartments really define neighborhoods all over Los Angeles. So one of the first things we're going to... I work in asbestos removing these dingbat apartments in my bread and butter. Mark my words, folks. Do not buy these under any circumstances. The cost involved in revamping will be so high you won't be able to subscribe at the top of the hour and it's never worth the cost bro i ran it already you fucked up son to see when we look at this image is how closely spaced all these buildings <laughs> are to each other there's only street frontage which is dominated by the parking spaces for the cars and every building just has a tiny side yard which you can see here or there another thing you'll notice is that all these lots are maximizing the buildable square footage the typical side yard setback in los angeles is five feet so you can see here that the developers went with the minimum and didn't offer any other space for common areas to make sure that they could get the maximum number of units but essentially the tiny lot sizes meant you had no privacy so if you opened up your window you were looking directly at your neighbor now this type of building wouldn't be allowed in los angeles currently zoning wouldn't allow for this many units to be built on a standard 50 by 100 typical la lot so these middle density buildings are something that are a dying breed dingbat apartments really are quintessentially la it's something that makes them home it's kind of like bad pizza it's bad pizza but it's still pizza next up is the bungalow court in yeah, bungalow courts are sick. Anyway, um, 
Would you ever consider getting a Kaya size hamster wheel for Kaya? I feel like it would be impossible to buy one that's that large. New Joker, Joker 2, just been released. Okay. Let's go, boys. Hey, Fleck. Joaquin Phoenix, my goat. He signed the letter defending uh, Jonathan Glazier. Got a joke for us today. Stop. No. Don't bite your paws. Don't do it. We use music to make us whole. Wait, is it musical? To Shut the, the fuck up. Within ourselves. I'm nobody. Is that? Is that Lady Gaga? What the fuck? I haven't done anything with my life like you have. Let's get out of here. Yo, what the fuck does what? she know about acting? Uh, I like some of her music. What the fuck does she know about acting? Uh, I'm just kidding. Didn't she act in the fucking uh the the other thing? Uh what was it called? The fucking country movie or something? What's changed, Arthur? Well, I'll tell you what's changed. We're not alone anymore. That's what we should be talking about. <laughs> yeah, calm down. I was making a Kanye joke. Man. Jesus Christ. You guys fucking suck. Oh my God. Everybody's such... A lot of Lady Gaga defenders in the chat, bro. I, I know. It was my mistake. This is a queer community after all. The Joker. Okay, bad joke, apologize. Okay, calm down, everybody. A lot of chatters discovered yay after the anti-Semitism, probably. Yeah, like Weeby. Weeby discovered yay after the anti-Semitism and loved it. The little monsters are in shambles because she's only been shilling pharmaceuticals. Wait, what? Mmm. Mmm. Sorry, I'm, I'm imitating Kaya. You guys can't hear her. But she's growling because she wants to get out of bed. Okay, um... What is Nurtech? Hey everybody, it's LG. I just wanted to come on and talk to you a little bit about my partnership with Nurtech. Um, I have had migraine for a long time and I really wish that I had found Nurtech ODT sooner. And <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? I mean, pharmaceutical ads is already weird as hell. It is kind of shocking. I forget that like... <laughs> In America, not only are pharmaceutical ads allowed, but of course they're doing influencer infomercials too. That's crazy, dude. She's not about to talk about glycine, no. Anyway, the liberals are mad at Civil War. They watched it. One, because uh, Andy No got credit for it, which I think is shitty, but I guess they used some of his footage. And a special thanks to Helen Lewis. Who's Helen Lewis? No, I'm not going to watch Nancy Pelosi get confronted. Some turf? Stop sending me the super eye patch video. Oh, she's a British journalist? Oh, God. Lewis coined herself, referred to as Lewis Law. The comments on any article about feminism justified feminism. She dedicated transgender issues, edited a week of articles dedicated to transgender issues in the New Statesman. For anyone interested in equality, it should be obvious that trans people are subject to harassment simply for the way they express their gender identity. While supporting transgender people's rights to freedom and her from harassment and abuse, Lewis wrote about her concerns that gender self-identification would make rape shelters unsafe for women. Oh, she wanted them like, uh, like I'm, I'm, I'm pro trans people, but also like they might do rapes by saying they're trans. Is that the type of shit? People spraying opinions about movies before its wide release date triggers me to no end. I mean, they've written on it too. The Atlantic wrote an article about how Alex Garland's, uh, Civil war was made in anger. What would it take for California and Texas to unite against the White House? Nothing good, according to Alex Garland. When the first trailer of the Civil War, a harrowing depiction of conflict between American states in the near future was revealed, I'll be honest, I didn't have much expectation. I didn't have a lot of great expectations for this movie, only because, like, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll watch it, but I get why people would complain about it, and not just the credits. Oh, fuck. There it is. Oh, wait. Does that work? No, it doesn't. Ah, although the larger history within Civil War is oblique, Garland's script lays out enough to explain why tanks might be rolling across the country from California to Washington, D.C. Off from his character as a three-term president who's begun staging attacks on his own citizens, he's disbanded the FBI and become what Garland calls essentially constitution-smashing and fascistic. Suddenly, states that might not necessarily be allied are allied against the threat that they consider greater than their partisan differences. Ugh. Back then, he seemed confident about the open-endedness of his storytelling. 
Garl's been in a hurry to make Civil War completing its script in 2020 just as COVID lockdowns took hold. I just, if this is, I'll be honest with you, if this is personally offensive to liberals because it was too centrist to liberals, then it's got to be dog shit. Motherfuckers decide if they like or hate a movie before even seeing it. People love discourse more than art. No, I mean, I'm excited to watch it regardless, even if it's bad. So we'll see. But I felt like, I felt as though liberals chirping about how centrist it was made me feel like maybe it's not very good at all. Anyway, when can I watch this, I wonder? I would like to see it ahead of time. Civil War, what a truly awful infantile film that doesn't understand politics, warfare, or journalism. Disgusting. Not to mention it trivializes all human conflict by making it senseless. That's what they said. Comes out on Thursday. Yeah, Ex Machina was great. All right, I'm going to skip all of this stuff, and I'm going to instead watch this. Apparently, Train is, is uh, popping off again. It's the number one botter, though. I mean, I, I, I mean, I know who you guys want me to say, but... Wait, That's what? not the I number don't... one botter. The, the number one botter is I on don't... Twitch. Oh. Unless you count, like, unless you're counting these people who are botting. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Unless... Is he talking about Elon Musk? <laughs> wait a minute. The number one botter is not on Kick. It's actually on Twitch. He's such a gossip girl. He knows from experience. Yeah, yeah he's like, it's me. <laughs> when I was on Twitch, I was the number one botter. <laughs> Unless you're counting the stupid ass no. streams that get bought it's like 2 million viewers. Like, then sure. We, I'm talking no, like. No, 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 no. Let's move on from that. Who's the Twitch guy? Oh. It's multiple people, actually. Good PR. That was good PR. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. No, it's multiple people that are botting massively. Who are they? And making a lot of money from it. And by massively, is this <laughs> more than 20,000, 50,000? How big are we talking? Careful, Train. Don't let him do that to you. I would never. <laughs> I'd say between, I'd say minimum between 10 and 20,000 bots. It's the number one botter, though. Who's he, who is he talking about? Why am I doing this? Why am I fucking uh, falling in for the bait? This is typical Train, dude. Typical Train. Somehow you're going to catch a stray. I just know it. First of all, there is not a... There is not a per. There, he probably means me misgiving Pokey because that's all he talks about. Wouldn't boss be more expensive than the ad revenue you would get? Yes. Are we the bots? Remember when Train Straight Ray said you have six mil in the bank? Yeah, I know it was awesome. Hoss and Obby, Pokemon, Disney streamers. Not you said twenty k to thirty k. No, he didn't. He said ten k to twenty k. Dumb fuck. I know you said that to be like huh, that's not you. I miss the days when you would go on scuffed and he would just talk about sucking your dick. Yeah, the good old days. It's Fextra Life. I don't think Fextra Life is is botting. They're doing um what is it called? It's a different thing. They are they are inflating their views, of course, famously. I've talked about it a lot. They're they're embedding. Yeah, thank you for the many bots in the chat immediately chirping in and saying embeds. Yeah, those bots are very generous. Whenever you run a charity stream, yeah, it's crazy how many bots also have just like a shit ton of of uh, money as well. Jinxy? He probably means Jinxy, Keizo, or Kai. But they have the fastest moving bots. Yeah, I don't think any of the top streamers are, as far as I know, botting. I mean, you can also tell by looking at the activity in the chat. These are fucking streamers chats who are going like a mile a second. And not only that, but also beyond that, you can look at the things that they're saying in chat like i know uh almost every single fucking kick streamer is is uh either willingly or unwillingly being botted so many i mean this was a major issue with kick from the jump and like it's always fucking literal random emote spam <laughs> train is the mike lindell of live streaming always got some secret info he's about to drop yeah the rumors are Jinxie apparently the second he goes live is 25k people in chat waiting. Meanwhile, his offline chat is dead. I doubt it. Yeah, I remember this though. Kick permabank streamer for showing how easy view bots are to code. One other thing that you can tell is like if these guys were view botting, how the fuck are they view botting on like every platform? Their their TikTok accounts, their fan made TikTok accounts pop off. They have a shit ton of fan made TikTok accounts. They all pop off. Like they have a a, a lot of engagement if they were if it was completely manufactured out of nothing then it wouldn't work that way jinxy has a first to come gets one thousand dollars as his invite message i fell for it once which explains the 20k initially god i love i love a 13 month subscriber of the hasanabe broadcast 
being like, oh, maybe I'll win a thousand dollars by 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 falling for the fucking dumbest bait of all time. There's no way that's real, right? Like, you're just joking, I suspect. I presume you are joking. I don't want to believe that you are being for real. We're pro we're poor, bro. Fuck off. Bro, we're poor. That doesn't mean you're fucking stupid, I hope. Like, I'm confused. There's a difference between being poor and being so fucking dumb that you fell for literally the dumbest scam of all time. That's like baiting 12-year-olds. I could be the first you don't know. That's crazy. Chatter believe there's hot milfs in his area. Yeah. What won't Chatter's... What? Is, there, is there a fucking lie that Chatter's won't fall for? What the fuck? I downloaded RAM earlier. I keep falling for gaming. What do you mean you keep falling for gaming? That's like, that's ridiculous. When I say I might game later, potentially, and I was planning on it, I was planning on playing Walking Dead, Telltale Definitive Edition. A lot of people have hyped it up. I used to play a lot of Telltale games back in the day, and I've never actually personally played a single fucking, uh, I've never watched The Walking Dead either. We're doing it. They really did a great job with this one. Yes. Solid, solid work. That was the best ending I have ever played. I've heard this is phenomenal. I've played a lot of Telltale games back in my day. I used to do that all the time. Uh, I am interested in playing it. I'm interested in playing this. Um, but the one thing I will say is this. It is that uh, people are like, oh, you bait with gaming all the fucking time. Bait who, bro? When I say I'm going to play a video game, it's, it's probably fucking making less people join. Okay? That and Wolf Among Us are the only ones worth it. I loved Wolf Among Us. It's so funny that people are like, dude, you bait people with gaming. Like, yeah, I bait people into not joining the stream, dude. Let's be real. The overwhelming majority of my audience literally, and I mean literally straight up, despise gaming. They actually fucking hear that I might game some somehow in a later date, and they go, I don't want to even watch this motherfucker anymore. I don't even care about his stupid ass fucking political takes. I hate gaming. I fucking hate gaming on my life. I hate it to the very core. I'm downloading it right now, bitches. I'm downloading the Walking Dead Telltale game right now. Watch. Watch. Game at like hour six so the East Coast can stay and watch. Sometimes it's pretty depending on the game, but I try to stick around more often for gaming now. Yeah. I'm beginning to believe. I'm beginning to believe that the gaming frogs in this community aren't necessarily real. Look, look. I even brought up gaming. Went no, it didn't go up to 90k, it went down to 16k. I mentioned the mere mention of me potentially playing a video game immediately leaves, immediately, immediately creates a, a vacuum in here. And, and thousands go, Nope, not for me, dude. Fuck that. I thought this motherfucker didn't play video games. Fuck that shit. Band politics only viewers. I would be out in the street tomorrow. The bank would come and seize the home. If I if I banned the political uh, if I banned the politics viewers and only gamed, the bank would seize my home and the car. Then I'd be a real socialist. Will you play Rise of the Ronin? It's actually pretty good in my opinion. No, it's not. You're wrong for that. I actually did. I actually did play Rise of the Ronin. I have been playing it on my Steam Deck as I remote play from my PlayStation Five. And let me tell you, let me tell you, that shit is not that good. It's not that good. All right, we're twenty five percent in. We're twenty five percent in. To the game. All right, while we wait, what is this? There's a Kaisenat drama as well. Say that I was out there mocking Jamaica, bro. A nigga that's not Jamaica I'll make a tweet, and every everybody, right, and everybody, um, under it and shit was agreeing, was saying that don't, what I was doing in Jamaica don't was do not it. culture. Bro, what? Bro, let me tell you something, bro. Uh oh, Kaisenat is now at a point in his career where he's got Twitter chirpers. That's not good. That's not good. It's only downhill from here. Don't respond to them. Don't do it. Don't fucking do it. Bro, what the fuck? Lenny Kravitz is working out at my old gym. WeHo uh, West Hollywood. Uh, I mean, uh, WeHo Equinox. Life ain't never been better than it is now. And he's dressed up like this. And doing this fucking weird ass exercise. What's happening here? Oh, wait. Maybe it's not West Hollywood Equinox. It looks like it could be. Bro, what is he doing? This is the craziest ab workout I've ever done seen in my life, dude. A bunch of people call Kai gay because he's acting too straight in Jamaica. Yeah, well, I mean, 
They think Kai is gay now, so people are turning on him. Wait, what? They think he's gay? That's so funny. Wait, why do they think he's gay? Bro, you're talking to... Okay, this is the people that don't know me. You're talking to a son of a, 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 son of a mother who's from Trinidad and Tobago. P now, the Caribbean. Okay? My pops is Haitian. Okay? I grew up eating straight roti. Um, rice and peas, China, bust up shot, curry goat, oxtail, um, jerk I grew up eating all that. You feel me? I grew up eating all that. Then I had a group of six people in my school who were straight Jamaican. Why you keep thinking I keep saying I'm from Spanish town? I had friends growing up that were strictly from Spanish town, Kingston, Portmore. Okay? I was rushing, I was rushing home after school. With my Jamaican friends to go play dominoes, Ludi. I was playing Ludi every day after school. She had chore number six like Ludi. No cap. And a lot of y'all niggas don't even know what Ludi is. Okay, I have no idea what this is. I, I, like, I mean, I guess he's saying that like he's more tapped into Jamaican culture or something. What the fuck? Why are people chirping at him? That's they're mad. They're mad that he was what? Because he was acting like this. What the fuck is this, bro? Jesus Christ, I fucking hate Twitter so goddamn much, bro. God damn it, it's so fucking nasty. Immediately, the first fucking reply, top, top reply, blue check mark, Elon Musk, I fucking hate you so goddamn much. I swear to God, fix your fucking platform, bro. Fuck. They're mad because he was acting like this. And they were saying he was letting his friends bash out the culture. Wait, why was he bastardizing the culture? What? Can a Taiwanese boy do some daggering? I don't get it. Low bitch rate detected. I heard there were cultural appropriation accusations. This is so... Bro, this is... Yeah, they're daggering. What's up? What's the problem? How is this allowed on Twitch? I mean, it's fine. It's... He's doing Jamaican Stolen Valor. I'm on his side, to be honest. He's goaded. Yeah, it's just like he's in Jamaica, surrounded by Jamaican people, daggering Jamaican people. Like, why the fuck are, why the fuck are Americans mad? Yeah, he's like looking at his phone. The worst part is like, you're against sex workers advertising on Twitter? Yes, bro. I'm against sex workers advertising on Twitter with blue check marks that come up on the top of the fucking replies with a, I sucked this person's penis with a fucking, luckily it was censored by the way, half the time it's not, censored post, yes, yes bro, if that makes me anti-sex worker then fucking yeah, I'm, I guess I'm anti-sex worker, what the fuck are we doing? Being pro-sex worker doesn't mean that like, you know, you put titties and ass and dicks and shit right in the fucking center of Main Street, by bots too. You're defending a bot. I saw tweets saying this is not African slash Caribbean culture. You can't hurt. You can hurt your dick doing this. It's super dangerous. Please don't platform this. <laughs> I just don't understand why people are. I, I don't get why people are mad at him. Um, the real question is if Black Twitter is going after him or are white people doing it? It could be Black Twitter. I think mainly Jamaican people on Black Twitter are mad because they didn't want the general public thinking this was representative of Jamaican culture. I think it is black Twitter. Wait, really? Okay. Shonda Black, our black Zoomer correspondent, has chimed in and said he thinks it's black Twitter. Okay, if it's black Twitter, I side with black Twitter. I'm so sorry. Uh, yes, Kai is wrong. Please don't yell at me. I'm so sorry. If this is ADOS versus diaspora stuff, I would not get into it. I think, like, a lot of Americans in general, a lot of Americans in general, have a... um have this like weird notion that people in people in the actual nations have the same attitudes about these sorts of things and how it will be received as people that live in America do. And in many instances, that's like, uh, it's just not the case. You know what I mean? I guess the example I will always give is the cultural split between uh, Asian Americans, specifically Japanese Americans. Oh, there it is. Walking Dead, the Telltale game has now been downloaded, which I will be playing. But it's uh it's specifically it's specifically like Japanese Americans love uh white white people wearing kimonos and shit. Whereas like or not Japanese Americans, Japanese people love white people wearing kimonos. 
whereas Japanese Americans hate it or used to. I don't think they care about it as much, but there was like a lot of chirping about people wearing kimonos and shit way back in the day. Or Mexicans? No, Mexicans don't give a fuck. Mexicans, Turks, I don't think they give a fuck. They don't care. Mexicans, as far as I know, don't even give a shit when like a depiction of a of a Mexican is even racist. Like they like <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez is like a like a cherished figure. Even amongst Chicanos, you know what I mean? They, they just, they think it's sick. <laughs> They're like, hey, at least people are paying attention to us. Yeah. Turks are similar as well, where they just, they love when a turkey is mentioned. As long as you don't call them Arab, most Turks will be super excited. There's even a term for it. Masadamis, are we at the table? They love, they fucking love being mentioned. Turks, I mean, they, they think it's dope. <laughs> they think it's awesome. This tweet is calling Kai gay. He is gay. He's so gay is obvious. Is so obvious. I don't think this person is even home. This person's not homophobic though. Are they? Maybe. Also, Jamaica seems awesome, dude. What the fuck? Same with Filipinos too. We will literally go nuts every time we see an ounce of representation or in mentions. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Kai should have responded to this shit. Never respond to Twitter as one professional take that I have that's the most prescient that I always violate. Hi Hassan, I understand your fears of the east side, west side beef, but you should visit New York more? Yeah, dude, I'm worried they're gonna kill me because I'm such a fucking shooter for west coast always. <laughs> Honestly, the most offensive part about the situation is Aiden Ross is there. Wait, what? Aiden Ross was there? Check the following list. Nikki Stan account. Wait, so they are gay. So when they say Kai Sanat is gay, they're just like, they're saying that as a positive, right? You can't be a fucking Nicki Minaj Stan account and not be gay. What the fuck? Dude, being a Nicki Minaj Stan account is way gayer than sucking a dick. Okay. That's crazy. Nikki lost the gays is on. Wait, Aiden is there? Wait, what? Oh, he is? I think this neo-Nazi being here is a much bigger issue than Kai. The guy's basically a white supremacist. I mean, popped off. King. Correct. Aiden Ross of Jamaica scaring the huzz. The barbs are going to come after you now. Why? For saying barbs are gay? What are they going to do, bro? I'm not going to Sephora, okay? They can't get me. They're too busy trying to kill Dua Lipa stands, okay? All right. The Walking Dead, the Telltale definitive series is on, baby. Are you going to do polls for hard choices? Ooh, I might actually do that. I'm going back to my roots. This is a gaming stream now. Fuck it. Playing the Walking Dead Telltale series. Let's go. Gaming is back in a big way. Okay. Detroit become human for the fourth time again when? I have only played it one time. Wait, what the fuck did I just click on? Oh, shit. Is there jump scares in this, by the way? Be honest. Wait, this is the concept gallery. Pre previous menu. Are there actually fucking... Wait, how do you start? Oh, season select. Are there jump scares in this? Bro, I don't like that. The Walking Dead. Walking Dead Season 2. A New Frontier. Oh my god. How many fucking episodes are there? Jesus Christ. I didn't read anything. Shut up. Stop saying I'm spoiling it. For the record, I don't know anything about Walking Dead. I've never even watched the show. I've never even watched the show. This is the OG, right? This is the right one, right? This is the right one, right? The show is trash. Is it? Standard. More help from UI and feedback when you make important choices. Definitely doing that. Episode one, a new day. Let's do it. Let's get it. Turn down the volume. Here, I, I, I lowered it. It is loud as hell, bro. I have to lower the audio. It's crazy loud. I don't know why. I don't know why it's so goddamn loud. Okay. Wow. Even in a fucking zombie apocalypse, dude. Racism. White supremacy never changes, huh? Well, I reckon you didn't do it then. Oh, wow. Wait, is there a timer? What the fuck? Does it really matter? Nah, not much. You know, I've driven a bunch of fellas down to this prison. Lord knows how many. Usually it's about now I get the, I didn't do it. Wow, I was trying to flex. And what do you say? I say, yep, I know you didn't. That's it? That's weird. I followed your case a little bit. 
you being a making boy and all. Oh, making. Oh, Georgia. Right? You're from Macon, then. Yep. Came up to Atlanta to be a city cop in the 70s. I always wanted to work a murder case. Like that senatorial mess you got yourself mixed up in. Wait. All right, one more setting, one more setting. Why would the subtitles be fucking off, bro? I don't understand. Show reticle buttons, mouse sensitivity. Should I show reticle buttons too? No, fuck that. With all due respect, a real shame that is. Hell, the whole family used to be regulars at your folks' drugstore right in downtown. Still there? Sure is. Good. Any of that seem important to you? All of it, but that box never shuts up. Sit in this seat and pay too much attention and you'll drive yourself crazy. I got a nephew up at UGA. You teach there long? Going on a six year. You meet your wife in Athens? You wanna know how I see it? Sure. Regardless, could be you just married the wrong woman. What did I do? <sighs> what the hell did I do, bro? Wait, why didn't she why didn't he answer that? Did I click on the wrong thing? Okay. I'm driving this man once. He he was the worst one. He wouldn't stop going on about how he didn't do it. He was an older fella, big soft eyes behind a pair of smart folk glasses. And he just wailing back there. Says it wasn't him. Crying and snotting all over right where you're all sitting. Officers are available for him coming to once then before long, he starts kicking the back of the seat like, like a fussy baby on an airplane. Not tell him he's got to stop, but that's government property, and I'll be forced to zap him otherwise. So he stops, and having exhausted all his options, he starts crying out for his mama. Mama, it's all a big mistake. It wasn't me. Why is he so fucking stoked about a, a dude that he is, like, robbing of his fucking freedoms right now? Like, I robbed so many at the top of the hour with a three-minute ad break from the freedom of seeing the fucking stream uninterrupted. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free, baby. That's right. That's right. Proven. Guilty until proven innocent. That's how I seize it. Many of y'all are proven unsubscribed until I see those subscriptions at the top of the goddamn hour. That's right. Hell yeah, brother. Raise hell. Praise Dale. Here's a three-minute ad break now. You literally are that driver with ad breaks? Yeah, that's right. I am. I'm the sheriff around these parts. I'm the gosh darn sheriff. Here, I'm fucking spamming that link, too. Urging y'all to retweet and like and, and organize around so you can get your friends in to watch me play this gosh darn game. All right, let's go. Maybe he was innocent. Innocent? They caught the fucker red-handed. Stabbing his wife, cutting her up as the boys came through the door. He sits in my car screaming bloody murder that it wasn't him. I think he actually believed it himself. It goes to show. I love the art style so far. People mad when they believe their life is over. I got another good one for you. This one's a little bit less depressing and a bit more hilarious if I do say so. What's this other time... <laughs> That's like, that's not even a zombie. That's not even zombie apocalypse activities. That's just like regular cop shit on any given Sunday, dude. I swear to God. Wait, what the fuck? Is there like actual shit that I need to do on this game? Holy fuck. Cops drive like shit. Average cop death. You know what I mean? GG's. Oh, shit. Lost a QCE. Ah, fuck. Where the fuck the cop go? Oh shit. Hey, hey officer, are you all right? I'm still cuffed back here. Bro, not sure if he's all right or not. Wait, look at the show. did he have his gun out? Oh shit. I don't think he can break that that easily. I need to drag myself out that window. Use, move forward using the W key. Look at the door. Damn. He's fucking doing the damn thing for being handcuffed. That's crazy. At least he got the front cuffs, dude. Normally, they don't give you that courtesy. That's a courtesy front cuff, fellas. Oh. Oh, god damn. I'm blading. I'm blading. Need to move along the car. 
the zombers couldn't get me. I, I'm supposed to not know that there's zombers, I suspect. Bro, get the shoddy. Get the shoddy. My boy, get the yeah, shoddy, the boy. Yeah, okay. That? No, pick up the shotgun, bro. What the hell? Oh, come on. Come on now. Get on the fucking ground and pick that shit up. Empty. It'll be bro. easier to carry with these cuffs off. Bro, pick up that shell. There ain't no fucking way, dog. Come on. Officer? Bro, he's God got to have damn. the fucking keys on him, right? Okay, I'm already scared, and this is a fucking telltale game. What the hell's going on here? Oh, hell yeah. Okay, get them goddamn keys off his ass. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wait, did it not work? Oh, my God. He's going to turn into a zomber. He's going to try to chomp at me, bro. He's going to chomp at me, bro. Unlock this shit right now, son. Oh, my God. Okay, okay. All right, we got that shit off, boys. Okay, okay, get the fuck out of there. Get the fuck out of there, bro. Get the fuck out of there. He's Officer. a... You said no fucking... Bro! Oh, what? You said no jump Holy scares, shit. bro. What in the hell? Get the fucking shoddy, man! Get away from me! Put that shit in there! Yo, are you... Yo, hey, yo! Make me do this. Oh, bro, y'all said no jump scares. That was a fucking lie, I guess. That's crazy. No jump scares, my ass, dude. Man. Fuck. A cab. A cab. Wait, what the hell? Go get someone. There's been a shooting. What do you mean there's been a shooting? You shot the fucking cop, bro. Brody said there's been a shooting. Ah! Bro, get the frick out of here, dude. Ah! Ah! Bro, at that point, adrenaline has to kick in. That's crazy. How does adrenaline... By the way, I lowered the audio. This is insane how loud the audio still is, despite me lowering it. At that point, adre adrenaline has to kick in, right? Like, sorry, I, I was installing. Come on, man! Kaya isn't missing. I just let her ride. She's on the ground. She doesn't want to be on the bed no more. His leg hurts, Hossie? Bro, there's no fucking way where your leg... You're thinking about your leg in that situation, I feel like. Soil scientist, thank you for the five tier one gift. Ah, offense. The natural... The natural enemy to zombies, bro. The one of the chest of soil science, science is sick as fuck. Hello? Anybody, bro? What is? Oh my God! That's anybody's home. Yeah, fucking zombers, dude. That's who's home. But Yolo, I guess. I wonder if anybody's home. Hello, anybody home? I need a little help. He is so cool. Like Hello? all things considered, remarkably cool for the circumstances. He's just like, yo, I got a little bit of an injury. There's a cop that was killed. Very odd. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Coming in. Don't shoot, okay? Dude, this is <laughs> black ah. man walking into a home unannounced Hello? in Atlanta or in 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 Georgia, in the state of Georgia in general. No zombie apocalypse is still a dangerous prospect, okay? <laughs> Castle doctrine. This is a stand your ground state, my friend. What in tarnation do you think you're fucking doing out here? Bro, did the zombie apocalypse happen like weeks ago? What the hell? Jesus. Oh, come on, brother. Are you serious? Yo, he is so goofy. I'm going to die. How is he going to? We are not surviving this zombie apocalypse with this dude, bro. I swear to God. What's that beeping? What? What? Test it. Brother, test it. Marshalls. That's a Savannah area code. That's the type of note you'd leave a babysitter. How did this house get so fucked up if the zombie apocalypse just happened? Am I asking too many questions right now? This place has been ransacked. Just about anything worthwhile is gone. I, I will still look at every cabinet, okay? You never know, chat. You never know. Sometimes, sometimes the little rascals forget. Oh, that's probably bad water. Where the fuck is the message beep? No, we saw.
Imagine if COVID had a 2% death rate instead of like 75%. If he slips and falls again, how am I, how am I supposed to bring up my inventory or whatever? Chat, what is the, how do I, how do I access the fucking thing? Oh. Maybe there's something. He's Sandra. Crazy guy near the hotel, so we had to get him to the ER and he's not feeling well enough to today. For looking after us will be bad time before. Oh my God, finally. So if you tried us, all, all the calls are getting dropped. Not letting us leave and aren't anything about Atlanta. Please, please, just leave this to Marietta. Please let me know. Uh-oh. Clementine, baby. You can hear this. Please, one, one. We love you. We love you. We love you. Bro, what the fuck happened? How long was I out? Like, there's no way this timeline doesn't make sense. Like, the guy was just like totally Hello? chill. Huh? Hello? You need to be quiet. Are you okay? I'm okay. They tried to get me, but I'm hiding until my parents come home. Bro, you are so cooked, kid. What's your name? I'm Clement. This is my house. Hi, Clementine. I'm Lee. Where are your parents? They took a trip and left me with Sandra. They're in Savannah, I think. Where the boats are? Are you safe? I'm outside in my treehouse. They can't get in. That's smart. See? Can you see me? I can see you through the window. Aww. Oh shit, bro. What the fuck do I do now? What the fuck do I do now? Oh, just this is Ben Q? Oh, QTE is literally Q any. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god, bro. Fix the knee, bro. Get out of there. Fuck. Oh my god. Clementine, save my ass, Clementine. Clementine. Clementine, give me the motherfucking. Give me the motherfucking hammer, bro. Oh my god. Clementine, give me the hammer. Give me the motherfucking hammer, Clement. Clemmy. Give me that motherfucking hammer, bro. Oh, yes. Fuck you. Dumb fucking. Oh, oh, yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up? Get some stupid ass. Old stupid ass. Oh, you thought you could babysit? How about you babysit this dick? Let's go. Hi there. Sorry. Did you kill it? I don't know. I think so. Sometimes they come back. Have you killed one? No. <laughs> That's a weird lot. question to ask a baby. You've been all by yourself through this? Yeah. I want my parents to come home now. I think that might be a little while. You know? Oh. Look, I don't know what happened. But I'll look after you until then. What should we do now? Look for help before it gets dark. Get out of here once the sun goes down. Wait, what? No. Bro, we should look for help before it gets dark. I feel like that's number one rule in zombie shit is like zombies go extra hard at night. You know what I mean? Like night zombies are hungrier somehow. Who the fuck says let's wait for... We need to find help before it gets dark. Yeah, it's not safe at night. See, even the baby knows. Chatters are fucking L takers, bro. Uh, go out. Go out. You should split up. Yeah. Listen, as a black man, I am not splitting up in any circumstance in a horror movie situation, okay? Come on now. Are you kidding me? That's like rule number one of horror. Are those zombies or peoples? Oh, man. Oh, shit. I ain't never getting home to mama at this rate. This sucks. Oh, it's hot dish night. Oh, hell yes. There's humans. Let's go. I wonder if they're going to be racist. Is there racism in the zombie apocalypse? No, right? There can't Should be. I stay? What? I don't want to sleep in the treehouse tonight, but I don't know if I should leave. What if my parents come home? I won't leave you alone. Well, let's go somewhere safe that's close, okay? That's a good idea. Hey, man! Holy shit! Don't eat us! We're not gonna hurt you. Yeah. Thought for a second you and the little one were both gonna give us the chomp. We need help. Are you trying to get out of here? Because you should be. Those things are all over the damn place. I haven't seen anything as gnarly as this neighborhood since downtown Atlanta, 15 miles back. I'm Sean. Sean Green. Lee, this is Clementine. Racially motivated, by the way. I'm that Jeff. was crazy. That was crazy. They're like, oh, you see a black man? How you think I'm a zombie? I see how it is. You and your daughter out of here and down to my family's farm. It should be safer there. I'm not a dad. I'm... 
a neighbor. Her parents are out of town. Let's get going. Staying put for too long is a mistake. Sean noticed what you said? What do you want to do? I... Your monster's coming. You gotta go. Leave quick. Let's go. Bro, ain't no fucking way. What the hell? Why are we pushing the car, bro? Oh, there's a... Oh, because there's a fucking... The, the other car is in front of it. Okay, I see how it is now. Don't worry. Come on, bro. Give me the fucking prompt. Let's get the fuck out of here. We put Wait, the fat man in the bike. Is this a bad time to ask a political question? Unless it's about racial motivations in the zombie apocalypse, I am not. I am not trying to hear no political questions. I am not fielding political questions right now. Dude, this game is sick, by the way. Actually, like, not even a joke. This game is woke, too. Okay, bro, this is the most racist ass ha Bro. Bro, fuck out of here, bro. This is the mo- Oh, come on. This is a diabolical- this is a level orange threat, dude, okay? This is like, at this point, the zombies might be better. Bro, you see those cornfields? You see those cornfields? You see that plantation-ass house? It's so Jover. There ain't no fucking way. Zombies, at least, indiscriminately kill every single human. These guys are specifically in the interest of killing black folk. Yeah, get out, looking ass house. Oh my oh, god, nice. no Good shot. Work. He just just went right into Thank the plantation God. home. Okay. Is that a I cop? Was to be bad here too. Been quiet as usual the past couple days. Old Brecken down the way thinks his mare's gone lame, but that ain't nothing new. I wouldn't have made it back without Chet. Well, I'm glad you took him with you then. Even though he's you a black man, your boy's a lifesaver. Glad he could be a help to somebody. So it's just you and your daughter then? Oh, not his daughter. He was her neighbor. Honey, do you know this man? Oh my god! Yes. Okay then. Thank gosh she lied, bro. Oh my god, imagine. You your leg pretty bad there. Uh, yeah. It's not doing so good. Okay, to be my fair, god. I don't know if that's racially motivated, to be honest, because, like, that is the appropriate thing for adults to do in that circumstance. I think I'm going to put myself in the top corner here. I feel like, is that a better place to put it? I've been looking at where I might put it. Um... I increased the volume chat. I think that is the right appropriate thing to do in a in a situation like where you're an adult and you see a young girl with a dude who's like a random person. Oh, they will remember that is in the top. Okay, like maybe down here then. Cuz I feel like it covers a lot of the heads. Help you out. Sean, run on in and check on your sister. You take a seat up on the porch and I'll go see what I have. Let's have a look. Yeah. This is swollen to hell. It's not too bad. Tough guy, huh? What did you say your name was? Doesn't matter, right? Oh, huh. shit. I... Well, if you're going to be here overnight, I'm going to need it. Unless you'd rather... Fuck! The I fucked it up. It's Lee. Well, Lee. Just Lee. I'll take it. I'm Herschel Green. I... I... I <sighs> pressed the wrong the... button. Car accident. That's so. Where are you headed before the car accident? Jail. I was getting out of Atlanta. The news says stay. Yeah, well, that's a mistake. We hit a guy. One of those things you've been hearing about. On the road. Who are you with? The girl? Nobody. Wait, is, is it we? so? Yeah. What? It is. You said we. That's all. Fuck! The house is full up with mine. We got I'm fucking up. I'm fucking up. I'm fucking up. The barn. You and your daughter are welcome to rest there when we're done here. I'm fucking up. I'm already lost. Ah, GG's. It's over. It's over. He's gonna kill me. Clementine. <laughs> Can't imagine what you've been through, Clementine. Um, looking after her until we uh, find her parents. Hey, Dad. So I'm thinking, first thing tomorrow, we gotta reinforce the fence around the farm. That doesn't seem necessary. I don't know what you saw on TV or heard on the radio, but there's some serious shit hitting the fan. I yeah, say it quietly so Clem can't hear it. Your son's right. You're going to want to fortify this place. Stuff like that doesn't happen around here, Sean. Dad, I'm serious. <laughs> Bro, Please, he's so racist. Tell what you saw out there, man. I got chased by a couple of dead people. Well, do what you think you should. We got plenty of chores as it is. Oh, my God. You, you know fucking suck, dude. Help out in the morning. We got to do it. Really. 
I already said okay. Well, I'm all done here. It should start to feel better tomorrow. This is a classic small town racist chat. Chat, this is a classic small town racist, okay? Someone in the chat said this is a liberal by Georgia standards. I agree. Okay. Oh, that kind of stuff don't happen here. It happens in Atlanta where the blacks are. That type of shit. Okay. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't see color around these parts. Classic. He'll heal your leg if you come to his house. He will say the N word behind closed doors and he will shoot you. Okay. If he if it reaches a certain level on a sus meter. If your leg gets hot or the swelling doesn't go down, you're probably dealing with an infection. What do we do then? We'll probably just have to shoot you. We'll clean it, redress it, and you'll be fine. Okay, that'd be preferable. There's blankets and such in the barn. We'll be seeing you bright and early. Come tomorrow, which way you think you're headed? Towards Macon, I suppose. Macon, huh? Good folk live out there around those parts, let me tell you. All right, then. Might not like your kind. <laughs> Don't you overextend it your welcome here like now. Manure. Manure? Like when a horse plops? Just like that. I miss my mom and dad. Someone said Meg is like 50% black. Yeah, 50% black, 50% racist. How far is Savannah? Pretty far. Oh, okay. Yeah, they he put him in the barn, bro. You know, you know what's up, okay? You know what it is. You know what's going on. Yeah, go sleep in the barn with them undesirables. <laughs> I love you, baby. That's where we keep the Mexicans. <laughs> that was before the zombie apocalypse I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking recreationally, we used to do that. <laughs> hey, get up. What <sighs> an itchy. Well, you slept in a barn, little lady. Lucky you don't have spiders in your hair. But I bet your daddy scared them all away, huh? I'm uh, not her dad. Name's Lee. I'm Kenny. Dad, we're friends. There's a tractor and everything. Oh my we God, Toy going. Story looking we ass kid. The end of it. That's my boy, Ken Jr. We call him Duck, though. Dodging or quacking? Quacking. Dad! See? The word is you were on your way to Macon. My family's from there. Well, Macon's on the way, and personally, I'd appreciate the company of a guy who can knock a couple of heads together if he has to. Bro, this guy looks racist, too. Sure, we'll tag along. It's a plan, then. Honey, Duck, this is Lee. And, uh, what's the girl's name? Clementine. Clementine. That is a very pretty name. Actually, Thanks. that's not true. Well, we should get... He's probably not racist, because he's got the, the puka shell necklace, or whatever the fuck it's called. That's a telltale sign that he's actually not. You know what I mean? You think, you, you want to think he is? But he's one of those dudes. He's just a swagged out white boy. To work. We've all seen what those things can do out there. So the faster we get this fence up, the better. I want to build a fence. Yeah? Well, I need a good foreman. You can sit on the tractor and yell at me whenever I take a water break. On the tractor? Cool! Duck and I will hop to it. I can keep an eye on your little girl here on the porch. We can visit. I can see Kenny having like a racially charged moment, but like... He doesn't mean it's it, you know what I mean? It's not the most reliable pickup in the world, but it gets the job done. Excuse me, that's a Toyota Tacoma, sir. Are you out of your fucking mind? That is the most reliable truck you can get in hey, the market. Uh, Kenny? Need any help? No, I think I got it. Do you need any help? What do you mean? Well, I mean in taking care of that little girl. You know what you're doing? You got kids of your own? Damn, he clocked me. Nah, nah, no, no kids. Would have liked one then. You know. How's your son doing? Good, I think. Kachi's got a sister up in Memphis. We were coming back from visiting her. We were in a gas station and some guy grabbed my boy. I thought he was kidnapping him. I was on the fucker in about two seconds and... Christ. Just lucky I was there. We saw a lot of bodies before we stumbled upon Herschel's. But we're a tough family, Lee. Ain't nothing gonna faze us. So what's your family's plan? Get back on down to Lauderdale and let this mess get sorted out. Oh, no. The government will start handing out shots and the National Guard will do its thing. On the odd chance things got too bad, we could hop on my boat, I guess. Oh, dude, he likes the government shots? Okay, that's my boy. He's based. He's a base Lauderdale man. That's a base Florida boy right there. He, he, he not an anti-vaxxer, okay? Maybe this game actually predates that kind of thing. So <laughs> he's like, yeah, I love the government jab. I'll take it. I hope it makes me gay and autistic. You've got a boat. 
I'm a commercial fisherman, catching mackerel, dolphin, whatever's biting and paying. Katya wouldn't be wild about it, but the boat's not that bad. See you. Hey there, girls. You two actually look relaxed. I think we're doing just fine. Clementine was just telling me about first grade. Oh, is she uh, German? What's happening here? That? It's easy. Well, yeah. So, you're good? Anyway, it's almost like we didn't see people eating each other for the past three days. It's peaceful here, no? She's Russian, huh? So, uh, what do you do when corpses aren't walking around? I'm a veterinarian back in Fort Lauderdale, like Herschel here, except more with dogs and cats and uh, not horses. What is it that you do, Lee? I used to teach up at the University of Georgia. We need to hope that we can go back to our jobs soon, Lee. Back to normal. It can't stay like this. Uh, yeah, my mistake. We'll all be home soon. Bro, why why is he so voluntarily trying to tell everybody that he's like potentially a murderer? I don't know what the fuck he did, but he's like, I used to be a professor. I said I used to, as in I was in jail. I was on my way to go to prison. Like, what the fuck? What's wrong with him? How did you handle getting through the city? Kenny just drove. We passed so many people that needed help, and we just passed people over some. Just, just. It's okay. It's fine. You don't have to say anymore. I want to go home tomorrow, but even then I can't take away the things we... the things Doc went through. Don't you want to go back to the moment before you knew about all of this? Anybody in their right mind would. Families and barbecues and beers with good friends. All of those things. Those are the things we live for, right? With those gone, what's the point? Okay, bro, you're day. fucking up the vibes okay. a little bit. Everybody's trying to have a good ass you time. You a nice time with Katya Clementine? Yeah. He's just fucking up the vibes endlessly, bro. Oh, yeah. What's the point of living? I want to die. It's like, bro, chill. People are trying to just live out here. You're like, what's up, duck? That's it? You know how to drive it? Sure don't. I can give you a hell of a critique of the U.S. farm bill, though. I'm good. Oh God, he's like, oh God, he's a politics Sean's nerd. Shut up. Fence. Sean's still working on that fence. Do you uh, think this thing will keep him out? Not yet. I'm planning on coming back through on a fortification pass, if you will. We'll lock this place up good. Hey, Lee. Need a hand? That'd be great. If you could cut those two bites to length, that sure speed things up. QTE. QTE. My dad doesn't know how bad it is. No, he doesn't. I saw a guy in Atlanta kill a kid. A boy. Just shot him right in the face. You gotta do what you can to survive. Like put a gun to that kid's head and pull the trigger? Fuck that, man. He didn't even hesitate. He just turned, put the barrel of the gun right between the kid's eyes. I'm fucking bad, bitch. I'm a bad bitch. I've decided. You don't see things like that. It's not like in the movies. They don't fall like you think. Did you have to do it? Do what? Kill. Have you had to off one yet? Oh. Uh... I bashed a poor girl's brains in. Whoa. I couldn't do that. I'm just. I didn't want to say I killed a cop. Dad just wants to keep the family safe and thinks about people. I feel like. I feel like admitting that I killed a cop is gonna be like too 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 much you know what i mean like i i'm still suspicious that these guys are racist okay is a bigger threat than whatever's out there how about yours how's your family my brother and parents are in Macon. i hope no oh, man i hope so too maybe it's not too bad there that's probably all i need cut for now thanks and sean thanks again for the ride no problem lee couldn't leave you behind Anyway, when you see my dad around, he might want some help in the barn. Bro, I am not trying to hang out with that man, okay? Let me tell you. I'm going to talk to Doug instead. Doing, Good. I'm going to drive the tractor. I'm the foreman. Lift with your back, Sean. Hey, Doug's a bit of a dumbass. Product of American education right there. What's up, Herschel? You should know that if you weren't leaving with Kenny today, I wouldn't stand for your lack of honesty last night. I'm not sure I follow. 
A man asks you your name, you give it. Unless that name is no good. God damn! How'd you get out of Atlanta? Oh, shit! I got a ride, and then I was in a wreck. I walked until your boy found me. Hmm. Well, you're no worse for wear. Uh, this farm's a nice plot of land. Huh. Had you told me 20 years ago I'd still be doing this, I would have told you that you were full of crap. Never was a plan, having a place like this. It was in the family, and I guess so was I. I'm sorry. Family's important. It's all that matters. You agree with that? Was brought up to, yes. Where's your family now? Parents? Wife? Girlfriend? No wife anymore? Why? Bro, why would you even have that as an option? I almost clicked on it. It's so stupid. It's like I almost misclicked and said I have no wife no more. Like, bro, I need to stop clicking, I think. I don't know. It's just like... Brother. Well, I hope they're all right. But now you've got this little girl to take care of. Clementine, is it? You just stumbled up on her? Yeah. Yeah. I was looking for help in her house. Hmm. Can I give you a piece of advice? Sure. I don't know who you are or what you did. Let's say things don't get better back in the cities, or they get worse before they do. You're going to have to depend on the honesty of strangers if you're going to make it. And if those same people get to questioning yours, you're going to be in trouble. He's right. He's At racist, least, but he's right. Common sense to listen to a man giving you advice. <laughs> I'll get my gun. What's happening? Uh oh. Dude, oh my god. He's fucking. That is the shittiest wall of all time, bro. My leg is stuck. I gotta save Duck. No! Strike her off of me! Please, help me, please! Oh fuck, they're gonna eat his ass. Oh, they literally eat his ass, bro! <laughs> Did I fuck up? Should I have gone for Sean first? Kenny ran away because like, I mean, that, that's his boy, you know what I mean? Like, that makes sense. Get out. Get the fuck out of here! Bro, that's literally your fault. You I'm said sorry. no to the you said sorry. no to the wall. Your son is alive. You don't get to be sorry. And you you didn't even try to help. I was worried about the boy. But you weren't worried about that. Please just go. Get out and never come back. Yeah, I want to build a border wall. Hell yeah, brother. That's why I voted in Trump. Bro, you want to know what I did there? I'm going to be honest with you. I knew I was fucking getting the fuck out of there. And the dude's son was fine, but the dad was racist. I was like, all right, fuck this. Fuck this dude with a racist dad. I'm putting my eggs in the basket that I'm going to be driving in. Okay. The dude who fucking owns a Toyota Tacoma, the Fort Lauderdaleian who is a uh, pro vaccination. I'm going with that guy. Okay. Sorry. It's called survival, bitch. You've got that ride to make it if you want it. Bro, how are you gonna give me grief? I saved your stupid ass fucking son. Old dumbass that fucking got him trapped with the tractor. Old dumbass that fucking killed him. Dumbass duck. Well, this is as far as we're going. Bye, Thanks Herschel, with up. your dead ass son. <laughs> hey there. You oh, friendly? God, bro. Don't signal Trucks to the. Run out of gas. That's a zomber, bro. Are you fucking stupid? I mean, yeah, they are stupid. We're trapped. Oh my god, old oh, bum over here, fucking duck. Run! What is that posture? These guys hate gates. They hate like fences. This. Walls work, baby. Walls work! When I say that door stays shut no matter what. I fucking mean it. We don't know who these people are. It could be dangerous. Worse, they could have let them right to us. Where the hell is your humanity? We have kids with us. I see one little girl. What is it? I, I have to pee. I'd go out there again in a second. I bet you would. Then just go. Wait, why am I yelling? They've got kids, Lily. 
Those things outside don't care. Maybe you uh -oh. should go join him then. You'll have something in common. God damn it, Lily. You have to control these people. Carly and Glenn just ran out there. She's not wrong. They took a risk. Yes, we did. And we appreciate it. Now let's settle down. Holy shit. Son of a bitch. One of them is bitten. He wasn't bitten. Hell, he wasn't. We have to end this now. Over my dead body. We'll dig one hole. No, I'm cleaning him up. There's no bite. He's fine. Don't you fucking people get it? We've already seen this happen. We let someone with a bite stay in, and we all end up bitten. Shut up. We gotta throw him out, or smash his head in. Kenny, uh -huh. stop him! Hey, what do we do about this guy? Dad, it's just a boy. It, it's... Lily, I'll handle this. But your heart, Dad. You need to calm down. We reason with him. With the bloody end of an axe handle, maybe. Nobody threatens my boy. Everyone, chill the fuck out! Nobody is doing anything. Shut up, Lily. And you, shut the fuck up. They will find us, and they will get in here. I don't like and his none of this subtitles. fucking matter. Bro, his subtitles are red? I don't like that, okay? I don't like that one bit. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, is is villainous, okay? He's giving villain vibes. With the words he's saying, and also even the subtitles are red, I don't know. Right now, we're about to be trapped in here with one of those things. What the hell are you talking about? <sighs> he's bitten! That's how you turn! He's not bitten. Please stop this. It's upsetting him. Oh, I'm upsetting him. Upsetting is getting eaten alive. What if this was your daughter? Never would have happened. She's not <laughs> some snot-nosed toddler, okay? She's United States Air Force. Fuck you and her. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him, Cat. Just worry about Duck. Lee! Yeah? There's someone in there. It's just locked. Keys behind the counter. Probably. Wait, what? Hey, There's I'm not the bad guy here. I'm just looking Wait, out for my what's in there, dog. bro? What's no, in there? just the guy arguing for killing a kid. He's covered in muck. She'll find the bite. Watch. She won't. And if she does, the first thing he'll do is sink his teeth into his mom's face. Then, when she's dead, he'll probably pounce on your little girl. It's a little boy. I think we can handle it. A little boy? He'll be an uncontrollable man-eater. It's not gonna happen. It is. And we're tossing him out now. Knock this guy out. Happily. Oh, oh. Jesus. Oh. oh, man. Oh, he got owned. Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't know he had hands like that. Oh, oh summer time. Oh god, I suck so bad. I'm such a fucking L nerd, dude. Get away from her, you son of a bitch! I'm such a freaking L nerd, bro! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's not working. It's not working! Oh, I almost died. I almost died. Thank god they saved me. The QTE is so much harder on keyboard. It's not even a joke. You okay? Just great, thanks. Bro, I bring nothing to the table. Guys. Everybody down. I bring nothing to the table. I'm falling around. I'm backing the wrong guys. They're gonna get in. Shut up. Are they eating? The walls? What the fuck? Is that the military? I don't know. Thank God for whatever it is. We almost died because of this bitch and the Richie trigger finger. That was stupid. That was... Uh, uh, Dad! Oh. oh my god, God took care of it. Was he the one bitten? <laughs> Don't be crazy. It's his heart. My pills. Um, nitroglycerin pills? Yes, we're out. We've been trying to get into the Oh, I'm not finding those fucking here. pills, let me tell you. Please try to get in there. Oh. Behind the counter oh. where the are. Oh. oh, you want me to save that fucking asshole? Uh, excuse me. Ain't no fucking way. There's probably another entrance be through the office. How do you know that's an office? Uh, educated guess. It doesn't matter. We need nitroglycerin pills. Please get in there. I'll keep an eye on my dad. Everyone else should get comfy and look for anything useful. We could be in here a while. I'm starting to think this drugstore isn't a permanent solution. You're right. This ain't exactly Fort Knox. What do you suggest? We need as much gas as possible so we can all get out of downtown Macon. Fast. Agreed. And I'll head out and get gas. There's a motel not too far from here, out towards the end of Peachtree. I'll work my way towards it and then loop back, siphoning what I can. 
You're insane. Well, it's got to get done. Plus, I'm quick. insanely cool. Make it. Local, born and raised. If you're gonna do that, here's a walkie-talkie. If you get in a tight spot, hopefully, you won't need it. Cool. Clementine's got the other one. Check in with her and get back here as soon as you can. Yeah, you, here. What's your name? It's. Here's a walkie-talkie. On the other end, a baby. Okay. There you go. I will give you a walkie-talkie so you can talk to a fucking child. Lily, my dad's Larry. Keep a good eye on him. These boys will work on getting you your medicine. That's right. And you, you keep an eye on that front door. You're our lookout. It's Doug. You got it. And I'm Carly. Okay, Carly. You'll shift in with Doug when he needs it. For now, get some rest. You're a good shot, and I'd like to keep it that way. You got it, boss. Now get Why him is he boss? Pills. Bro, we just dramatically restructured the fucking hierarchy here, like dramatically. You're a pretty good shot. Damn, well, you Riz. Don't fuck with a reporter, Riz. especially one that's three days out from her last cup of coffee. You seem to handle yourself pretty well. <laughs> really? I'm a disaster. I can't tell. My news editor was eaten about five feet away from me, and I would have joined her if it wasn't for that dorky guy on watch over there. I'm sorry. She was an asshole, but you know. Yeah. Damn. What are you messing around with there? A radio. I can't get it to work, though. Here, let me have a look. Let a man do it. A man's got to do what a man does. All right, first, let's take a look. Well, no there's your problem. What now? Do you know that there are no batteries in that thing? Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, yeah. No. I can try to find some. Needs two. Thanks. I wouldn't even really know what to look for. A man's got to do what a man does. Heard or seen anything? Nothing, luckily. Want to step outside, have a look around? <laughs> I'm not suicidal yet. No, the gate out there is closed. We can hang out in front of the store and be fine. Oh, huh. Uh, not right now. All right, let me know if you want to. He needed that W? I really did. No, I'm sorry to hear your loved one was eaten by the living dead guards. <laughs> Black owned business. Joe Brandon's America destroyed this, dude. I don't even know what I just picked up. Oh, batteries. Can't okay. let anything happen to Ducky. I know, hon. Oh, good. These newspaper clippings, I can totally I read them. them very well. Wait, wait, this is my family? I don't remember them very well. We just well, need wait, to get what? back to Fort Lauderdale. We'll do our damnedest. Hey, Lee, maybe punching him wasn't such a good idea. There were worse plans. Says the guy who didn't get punched in the mouth. Anyway, we, Kat and I, appreciate your support. Thank you, Lee. So that's how he knew it was an office, bro. Context clues, I'm so smart. How's Duck doing? He's okay. It was just a shock. We're lucky as hell nobody got nabbed on the way in here. No kidding. How's she doing? Well, her family's dead, so... That's awful, Lee. <laughs> yeah, well... She seems to be handling herself all right. She's just a little girl, Ken. Lee says <laughs> she spent days on her own. <laughs> That's such that a dumb... Toughness. I chose that on no my own, too. All on my own. Emotional damage is happening to her every second her family is gone. Why can't I click on this shit? Plan? Hang tight, I suppose. Seems pretty dangerous out there, so we ought to wait for things to clear up. You said your family was from here in Macon? That's right. Yeah, that... Where that, are they? That choice, 100%. That her well, her family's dead, so is one hundred percent something I would say in in similar circumstances. So I had to hit that. Okay, I had to hit that. Like the top of the hour ad break has to hit you if you're not subscribed to the top of the hour. I hate to do it to you, but you know, at the top of the hour there is a three minute ad break, folks. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for five dollars or for free with a Twitch Prime, baby. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Hell yeah. Raise hell, praise Dale, brothers. That's how it be. <laughs> Can you boost dialogue volume? Is it low still? I'll boost it once, because this fucking... The audio is on steroids, son. Actually. Hey, Adrian is online. Thank you for the 5 2 one gifted subs. I've noticed there's more gifted subbers out here. Gamers got deeper pockets than the fucking dirty socialists. They, uh own this place they're gone oh sweetie cat they were good people i wasn't around much but yeah they did are you guys all right oh, we're just fine considering How maddie Coes, thank you dc baller thank you we've all been through a lot lee you got a second sure 
I, I did the big reveal. I told him. Back on Herschel's farm. Is socialism yeah. or barbarism? Anonymous gifter. We didn't even try to save him. Ty Yob, Marco that Fleet. That blood is on our hands, you know? It happened pretty fast. I guess. And I can't stop seeing him in my head. We can't kill ourselves over We it. killed I that boy. I told thank you for the ten. We could have saved him together. We did what we could. Bad things happened. We didn't make a choice that killed Sean. Your you dumbass you son did, though. Your dumbass moment, son did. When Duck things did. Are really out of control. You don't have any choice. I guess. Thank you, damn it, Daifuku. Trying to let it go. Your dumbass son was fucking playing choo choo on the goddamn tractor and he fucking chewed the other dude's ass before the zombies killed him. So who's at fault? Who could really say? Maybe you're a bad dad and you fucked it up. I'm taking all the energy bars, bro. This is my fucking pharmacy anyway, you know what I mean? At first I was like, maybe I should leave it for some other people too, but fuck it. This is my goddamn house, dude. Fuck you. It's not damaged. Glad this place didn't get looted. <laughs> Yeah, the ATM. That'll Looks definitely. Like nobody got a chance to donate anything before this all went down. Central High Tech State. Papers a week old. Feels like years. Hey there. Hi. Any word from Glenn? Nothing. Is he okay? Yeah, I think so. You're doing a good job. Can I uh, get you anything? I'm okay. Maybe I'm a little hungry. I'll see about that. So, um... Are you okay? What? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I just, uh... I'm good. That's good. Yeah, I think so. Uh, being good is good. Despite the circumstances. What the fuck? Yep. Well, sit tight. Okay. Honestly, the dialogue is pretty good. I know it's like a meme to the say it right there. now. But it is actually pretty good. This is a How's fucking great I'm not sure I story. got name. It's Lee. Lily. My dad's Larry. I was just doing what I had to earlier. Everyone was. Now his heart's acting up again and I'm powerless to do anything. And that violence before with my dad, that didn't help. What's wrong with him? He's got a heart condition. He takes nitroglycerin tablets pretty regularly. I've seen a few bad attacks that he couldn't get over and needed to go to the hospital. Yeah, that's uh, not really an option right now. I'm just trying to keep him relaxed. He's got a temper. Ah, oh, uh, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't mean it. It's just that... Yeah, just yeah. like the racism. We've got kids here. Family. He and I are a family. I'm just saying some people can't handle a temper like that. Hell, barely seems like you can. It's just his way. Don't make him the reason everything's screwed. Oh my god, they both suck. Where's Damn. her mom? They both have an attitude Savannah, problem. I think. Oh, you guys aren't together. Oh, uh, no, I'm not her dad. I found her in a house when getting out of Atlanta. She'd been surviving by herself. I think the girl's parents didn't make it. Oh. I heard an answering message. They were in Savannah. She was home with a sitter. It wasn't good. Well, she's lucky to have you. You're from here? I work at Warner Robins, the Air Force Base. Yeah, I know it. Pilot? Nah, just mechanical admin stuff. I deal with a bunch of shitheads and bureaucrats all day. Sometimes a plane, if I'm lucky. You? I work up at UGA. Was anyone here when you guys got here? No, this place was pretty wrecked. We pulled a couple of bodies out of the office. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Did you know anybody here? Yeah, the owners, they were, uh, we were close. I'm sorry. We found an older couple in the office. Dad hauled them out in case they weren't really dead. What do you think about all this? What is there to think? <laughs> Larry dead killed them. Walking around, eating people, and turning them into more... more of them. I mean, Jesus. We need to stick together and get through this. I'm gonna get back to him. Sounds good. I'm letting Larry die, bro. Straight up. No shot am I keeping that fucker alive, bro. He killed my family. Racially motivated, 100%. He 100OP saw a black couple thriving in their fucking family-owned small business pharmacy and was like, I hate that. I'm a racist. I bet that's what it's he said, much, too. But here you go. Thank you. Of course. Fuck you, Larry. Fucking bitch. That's crazy to me. Some, some a bitch. Try to get some rest, hon. How can I with those 
things out there. All right, where the fuck is the the sexy ass journalist chick here? This battery should fit the radio. Great. Here you go. Thanks. And here's another one. I'm gonna fucking riz should her up even. To work now. Damn, I got not one but two batteries. You know what I'm saying? It's still not working. Yeah, I can't figure it out. Let me have a look at that thing. Let, let a man handle it. Go ahead. Let a man handle it. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna be like, the batteries were put wrong. I swear to God, bro. Bro, she did. She put the fucking batteries wrong, bro. Are you for fucking real? I was just joking, dude. Bro, how do you not know how to fucking... That's crazy to me. You fixed it. Bro, that's what... Dude, come on. Okay, that's like... That's gotta be misogynistic. That's crazy. That's crazy, dude. Bro, she put the batteries in wrong. That's like military, by the way. No, she's not military. The other girl is military. This girl is a journalist. Skyrocket. WABE urges you to stay indoors and avoid any contact with individuals you suspect may have been exposed. The station is okay. In the event of a full... Uh, uh, my, my producer's telling me we have to get off the air. Steve... God bless you all. Wow, that happened right at that moment. That's crazy. Hey, Connie, that guy saved you? Yeah, can you believe it? Those creeps or, or ghouls or whatever the hell they are. They were pulling our van apart and that guy, Doug, just came to the rescue. You can never tell who the heroic ones are gonna be, I suppose. He's kind of cute. In that parent's basement what? sort of Yo, way. chill! Oh. Yo, he sucks. Huh? Oh, nothing. He sucks! Are you okay? The video sign off didn't sound too good. Are you okay? I'm fine. You don't have to be. It's traumatic. I'm sure some people got out. Maybe they're all being rescued. Then again, maybe not. Bro, I'm literally taking care of a child. Do you know? Think about how sexy that is, okay? Really re examine your priorities. I was about to give you a fucking snack bar, too. Guess what? Maybe I'll give it to Doug so he can get his fucking stamina back laying pipe. You know what I'm saying? God damn it, dude. I got you two batteries and shit. What the fuck? Doug's not even doing nothing. He's just macking. Bro, the sign literally said alive inside. You went in there and you killed them, Larry. You fucking piece of shit. You goddamn monster. I fucking hate Larry, dude. All my homies hate Larry. I can't. I can't think about them in here. This door leads to the back alley. Bro, Larry definitely murked them. Kid. 1 hundred percent Larry murked them. Dad's came in here hoping to survive. Looks like one of them was hurt. I wonder if it was my dad. And to be a hero, maybe. Protector at least. There's a photo over there. There's a photo over there. Look at the photo, bro. <gasps> it's a family photo. Okay, Larry 100 percent racially motivated. What? Find anything? Just a picture of whoever was here. I know who you are. You're Lee what? Everett. You're a professor at Athens who killed a state senator who was sleeping with your wife. This is your parents' store. Folks around town know the owner's son got himself a life sentence, but I'm a reporter for WABE in Atlanta. Damn, that's why she... to that trial. Maybe you're a murderer. Damn, bro. That's why she was like, I want to fuck Doug. I, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I, you can't riz me up. But I don't really care. Frankly, that's a skill that might come in handy. <laughs> Did you tell anyone out there who you were or that you were tied to this place? What's it to you? To me? I'm not the one with the felony record. You seem like an okay guy, and the last thing we need is drama out there. You've got this little girl to take care of, and look, don't make me wrong on this. I don't plan to. Good, because if this lasts longer than a few days and you're a detriment to the group, then we'd have a problem. I hear you. I'll just keep it to myself. Bro, what's a felony? There is no fucking, there's no criminal justice right now. Innocent until proven guilty, bitch. How can I trust you? You can't, I suppose. But you don't have many other options. Yeah, give me those goddamn batteries back, asshole. He's been the racist one the whole time, I know. Buzzfeed quiz, Buzzfeed quiz writing ass, dumbass. He'd zip around here on it from time to time. Was he sick? Nah, uh, he was okay. I actually saw him whoop shoplifters with it. <laughs> this cane's protected this place better than any guard dog ever could. Plus, he knew how to make it look cool. Like you and your hat. My dad gave it to me. See, dad's just smart like that. I ought to clear a path to opening that door. We ought to clear this door for when we find the keys. 
Better get this door clear, huh? Can I help? Sure. Here we go. Watch your fingers in the drawers. Mm. How are you doing? Yeah, it's not that heavy. How about with everything outside? It's not good. No, it's not. But I think it'll be okay. Okay, here we go. Damn, Clem is actually goaded. Do you have kids? She's playing her part. No. You don't have a family? She's not asking no dumb questions about how I'm a murderer. What do your parents do? My mom is a doctor, and my dad is an engineer. Those are good jobs. What's your job? I uh, teach history and writing and things like that. Like, um, social studies? Yeah, like that. You didn't answer my question. All right, a little further. <sighs> Why don't you want to talk about your family? Do they, like, hate you? Because they're dead. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You didn't know. I'm just sorry for being mean. It's like, that shut her the fuck up, you know what I mean? It's like, shut the fuck up, Clementine. I like you, but, like, you're pushing it right now, okay? Look, my family's gone, and I just wish things would have been different. Yeah. I got into some trouble, and, and I didn't talk to them for a while. This used to be their store. But let's just keep that between you and me, okay? Okay. Because of the trouble? Yeah, that's right. Now, uh, let's get this done. Bro, the fact that there is a fucking dialogue option to tell a literal baby that I am a ruthless murderer is savage. Like, what? what it, why does that dialogue option exist? Yeah, I fucking murked somebody, okay, Clementine? I'm a fucking straight-up murderer, dog. You don't understand, okay? I fucking... I, I kill people I've killed, and I want to kill again, okay? Let me tell you. Every time I'm not killing a zombie, I want to kill humans, as a matter of fact. Are you okay? Damn, she's bleeding a lot. Is it bleeding? A little. I'll find you a bandage. She's fucking That's hemorrhaging, bro. There, I bet. Oh, good. Let me open this drawer first. Dad, get the remote for that thing in here someplace. Lee? Yeah? What if my parents come home and I'm not there? They'll, uh... <laughs> I don't think they will. Don't worry. Yeah, okay. We should keep a lookout. I've got my walkie-talkie in case they try that way. Stay close to me until then, okay? Does she think the walkie-talkie is going to work have a look miles that away and make it? No. It hurt. Let's see if we can do something about it. We gave the fucking walkie-talkie to Glenn. Let's get this cut covered up. Yes, please. Dumbass. Dumb baby. <laughs> Leave that dumbass baby alone. It's the remote to my dad's TV. Turn that shit on, bro. Let's see if we got any TV channels on here. That's what I figured. You never know, bro. You never know. You gotta check it out. It's locked. We need to track down the keys if we're gonna help Larry. Who are you talking to? My boy. Everyone out there seem all right to you? Yeah. Well, maybe not the sick guy. Yeah. We'll keep an eye on him. And there was that thing in the bathroom. It tried to get me. I know. But you stopped it. Yeah. Barely. Can no, I do didn't. That more? Well, I'm not gonna go looking for. I mean, get the dangerous ones. I'm gonna try. Good. Have you heard from Glenn? Not in a little while. How's your finger? It's okay. Thanks for fixing it. I'm gonna keep looking around. Okay. My pants came in here hoping to survive. But it looks like one of them was hurt. I wonder if it was my dad. <laughs> Trying to be a hero, maybe. Or a protector, at least. Yeah, y'all yeeted that first time chatter. He was cooking, I think. Wait, how do you examine the bedding? Like, I'm trying to find... That's the door to the pharmacy. We should be able to find pills for Larry in there. Where are the fucking keys at, dude? Don't seem like he's in this room. Wanna head back into the drugstore with me? Okay. Lee? Yeah? You're not bad, right? I, uh... Why are you asking me that? That lady said you killed someone. Was that because he was one of the things trying to eat you? It's complicated. Sometimes things happen or you do things and you can't explain them. I don't want to lie to her. Let's, uh, I'm talking to her to about the morality of murder. Hey there, this is Glenn and uh, I'm kind of in a jam here. Uh, little girl, if you're there, can you put your daddy on the phone or on the talkie or whatever? This is Lee, what's up? 
So, I'm down at that motor inn, and, well, uh, I'm stuck. Stuck? Yeah, I uh, saw a chance to get some supplies for the group, and a bunch of the Roman ones got the jump on me. I'm hiding over here, but they won't leave. What's up? Glenn's trapped down at the motor inn. Hey, Glenn, we're gonna talk it over and send a group to come get you, alright? <sighs> awesome. I'll sit tight till then. Sounds good. I'm gonna hold on to this until we get Glenn back, okay? I'll take good care of it. What do you think? I think Doug's not great around zombies. You got your family here. I'll take Carly and her dead eye down to the motor inn, get Glenn, and get back here as fast as I can. If that's what you want to do, somebody's got to. Yeah, I'm in. Good. Doesn't sound too bad there right now. Let me know as soon as you want to head out. I could use yeah, a Yeah, bro. Job. I'm taking I'm taking Carly down there to kill her because she knows my secret, dude. That's right. You already know what the fuck's going on there. That or maybe if she's like, oh yeah, I was just kidding. I actually love a fucking rugged murderer sexo. You know what I mean? How we doing? Good. Wanna go have a look around outside? Let's have a look around. Okay. Sexo. I'm actually gonna feed Doug to the fucking zombies. Jesus. And then we're gonna do sexo. Just eat. As far as I can tell, that's all they care about. And if one gets you, they eat you. And whatever's left comes back as one of them. How the fuck? I think it might be more than a couple days before all this gets sorted out. Yeah, Who was shooting at them before? I think so too. We better keep it down out of here. Use the Ramona. It's a combination lock. Open the lock? What the fuck? That place is full of TVs and electronics. Did you guys try to get in there and get weapons? I did, but it was too risky. And then a bunch of guys showed up and they tried. And what happened? I think they're most of who you see wandering around out there. Yeah, that's a hasty fortification job over there. Yeah, it didn't work. <coughs> oh, that's Better his brother. Us, huh? That's definitely his brother. That's one hundo P his brother. Oh, shit. What? Do you know that guy? He could be a drugstore employee. So you're saying he might have the pharmacy keys? I'm saying he might have the pharmacy keys. I don't know. It could be anybody, you know. If they start rotting and get all chewed up and... Shut up, Doug. Look at the uniform, though. He could have worked at the drugstore and died with keys in his pocket. It would take a lot of effort to make it safe enough to go out there and see if he has the keys. If we could somehow prove that he worked here, I think it'd be worth it. I'll see what I can find. The fuck do you mean, bro? Use the remote. Give the remote to Doug. I have the photo, bro. We should think about searching that guy across the street. Maybe he has them, but who knows if he actually worked here. How do I give him the fucking... How do I change my... How, how do I change the inventory? It's like on TV remote. How do I grab the... No, I have the photo on me. You can uh, you can see it. I, I just don't know how to give the photo to... I can't reach that brick. That guy over there has the keys. How can oh. you be sure? I found this in the office. That boy in the photo worked here. The keys being on him is as good a bet as we can make. Yeah, I agree. Just need to figure out how to get out there and get them. Bro, Good Chad deal. is so racist. Chad is so racist, bro. He said, you dropped this part of the photo when you ripped it. How are you going to be racist to literally the main character and his brother, bro? How is that possible? No, the part of the photo that I ripped off was me. I ripped myself from the family photo. I'm just kidding. I'm Mormon in heart. heat. It was a mistake. Switch the controller. It plays so much better. Yeah, oh, I man. think so too, but it's fine. I'm playing with this right now. Maybe there's a way to distract them and buy you some time. Maybe the remote works on this thing? Think you can do anything with this? You know what I could do? What's that? He's gonna throw it. It's universal. I could program it to work with those TVs across the Damn, street. Damn, Doug, you fucking nerd. Good on. shit. You can just do that? My some kind of hacker. AV. Let's try. Well fucking done, Doug. All that dork nonsense might save a life. Who's to say it already hasn't? I got a few of them to take notice. But not enough. What the hell? 
I can't reach that brick. Not that far, bro. Did you guys try to get in there and get weapons? I did, but it was too risky. And then a bunch of guys showed up and they tried. And what happened? I think they're most of who you see wandering around out there. There should be a skip. Doug, you want to get this door open? About that. You've got the combo, right? No. Did anyone ever have it? Look, man, there were a lot of those things trying to get in here. And now we can't get back out onto the street. Well, we're also party to some egregious fire code violations. Bro, you are an unconscionable nerd. I swear to God, Doug. How'd you end up here? Well, I moved here to live with my uncle. He does tech stuff, and it just made sense. Wait, how so the fuck did Glenn get out you then? Knew the owners of this place. No, not really. I've only been here a couple months, and I spend a lot of time. On the computer? No, just doing my own thing. What about you? Pierre, been trying to get home since the day I came back. Oh, so you probably knew the owners then? Yeah, I did. Good people. Okay, so we're fucking cooked out here. Like, there's not really any... There's not... Let's head back inside. Okay. Bro, we can't search the guy. We need to find the code to unlock the gate. Oh, Doug is the IT guy from on that list, bro. Hey there. I better get back to it. Yep. Thanks, by the way. Don't mention it. Just remember what I said. Yeah, I will. Talk to Carly? No, that's Lily. Who the fuck is Carly? It's all melted now. How are we doing? If you don't mind, I think my family and I are gonna rest for a bit. Alabastrian, you know thank you for the five turn and give the subs. Worse. You got it. Man, he shut my shit down. He was like, nope. How'd you end up here? We drove oh, off shit, to cover the golden cabin train. Let's go. Real hard hitting stuff. Sounds worth it. I better get back to it. Yep. Thanks, by the way. Don't mention it. Just remember what I said. Yeah, I will. Golden Kappa Train. Is there a way to get into the bathroom? No. Alright, I gotta get back into the fucking pharmacy part. Maybe there's some more shit that I missed there. I don't really understand. Like, I feel like I did a thorough... I feel like I did a thorough search. You know what I mean? Why can't I grab the cane? Uh, the keys are on that zombie out on the street. I can't get the cane, chat. I, it's not letting me. It's not an option. I'll go back into the first aid kit again, Luckily, but... there's nothing I need in here. Post life, thank you for the 10 gifted. King Henry the fourth, thank you for the 20 gifted. We're at fucking level four, it's crazy. My streamer is dumb as fuck. No, I think I can't do anything further here to progress. I just, I, I need hey. to go get Glenn before we continue, I think. I'm gonna get back to him. Trinrec, thank you for the five, get the subs. Ramona, Ramona on the TV, babe. Babe, babe, I already tried that, babe. Okay, here, I'm gonna pee real quick too. Babe, thank you the big sod and i'm i'm sorry in girth burgers and lesbian boulevard should i stop coming thank you danny all art i think i need to leave we're leaving now that's what we're doing we're done we're leaving i've exhausted all the options here pretty sure bolivar you ready to head out you got it you search the bed poppy i did bro i did yeah. let's go Shit. get down bro ain't no way did you see that Sure did. Be ready to shoot. Guys! Oh man, I'm glad you're here. Jesus, Glenn! All right, that wasn't so hard. Can we get out of here before any of these things notice us? Not yet. There's a survivor trapped up there. No way! We gotta go, now! Listen, I was out here looking for gas, and then, up there in the corner room, I heard crying coming from inside. Who is it? It's a girl. We talked and she got frightened. I was trying to get in and help her, and she started yelling and saying I was bitten. I tried to convince her I wasn't, and that's when all these guys came out of the forest. A, a couple almost got me, and, and I ended up hiding in the ice machine. Lucky you. Now let's go. We can't just leave her. Damn right we can't. You guys are suicidal over a girl. I'm saving her, with or without you. Think about wow, it. Wow, she's you. just jealous. She wants to be the eight girl, bro. It's obvious. Mama, let's go save Glenn's dance It's obvious. Wow. She's like, oh, only me. Only I get to fucking be the girl here. Oh, me, 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 me. He's fucked up. Honestly. Wait, what am I? What am I looking at over here? Where am I? Okay, this is the plan. We don't know how hard it's gonna be to get her out of that room. Yeah, it's boarded up. 
So we have to kill every one of them in here. Quietly. Noise attracts these things. Now let's have a look around. She's eating something. So we got one right there, close. We can hide by that RV. If we're quiet and keep our heads down. We can hide by that pickup. Behind that door. Those two seem to be on the scent. Fuck. Oh my god. I don't fucking know, dude. I don't know. Should I go behind the RV? I feel like there's hella way more zombies there. I think we go with the truck. Shit happens. I don't think you can save scum in this no game. If there's anything in the pickup, way to stop these guys quietly. Now we just have to get it quietly. Oh, I'm not punching that fucking door a window. That's crazy. Open the door, bro. Oh, of course it's locked. That's cool. That's cool. Of course it's locked. Why wouldn't it be? Bro, I am not punching that thing. Are you crazy? Wait, up and the right goes in the same direction. Okay. Can do something with that car, I bet. If it weren't for that fellow looking near the front. Oh, he's alive? What the fuck? Barely. Barely alive. Bro, I don't want to break it. But I feel like I got no other option. How are you going to kill that one by the car without attracting the others? There's a pick in the truck. I have to break it. Hey man, that drew some attention. Be careful. That's crazy. Do I try again? I'm done trying to check windows. Wait, what am I doing here? Fuck, bro. We're a little naked out here, except for Carly's gun, and we can't use that much. Not sure I can take them both out myself, even if I had a weapon. Fuck. Wait, I'm fucking cooked. We're going to need weapons. What the fuck am I supposed to? There's this there's no option here. Like I I've looked through the whole There's a truck over there. Maybe we can find you a weapon. We should keep looking around for weapons. Yeah, I can't break through the truck, chat. Up arrow takes me to the window again. That's it. Like right when I hit right. No, up also takes me to the fucking window, chat. You guys are wrong. Okay, this is fucking annoying. He's not going anywhere. Grab pillow? Where the fuck's the pillow? There's no pillow. This level is confusing if I... Pillows by the wall? I don't see no goddamn pillow, bro. Fuck you mean, pillow. Michael pillow ass. There's nothing here. They really want to get into that room. They really want to get into that room. It was right there. Bottom right on the ground. It's on the floor. What are you talking about? Where? That? Bro, it's not letting me get it. Oh my god. There's a pillow over there. That's about as far as I got when it came to supply guy. I might have an idea for it. That's crazy that that is just like... Good luck smothering them to death. That's not really what I have in mind. I can break the fucking window now with the pillow. God damn, that shit was hard as fuck, dog. Oh my god. Stop saying astigmatism, Andy, okay? The solar eclipse fucked me up. What are you gonna do with that? I don't really know. Do you have any tricks for getting into cars? Not without tools or making a bunch of noise, and none with pillows. Use the fucking pillow on the window to break it, bro. What do you mean? I'm done trying to punch out windows. Wait, that's... Oh my god, I'm so annoyed. Maybe I can fucking smother that zombie? Get out your gun. But the noise. Just follow my lead. Stay right behind me. Wow. That was sick. The pillow really softened the, the noise. Famously, pillows do that. Park plug. We take those. Never know. Unlock gear shift, put that shit in neutral. Spark plug. You should hold on to that. Could come in handy. We can get that guy by the way. We can hide. Okay, both of those angles do the same thing. Alright, I gotta push it, I guess. 
is awesome. Okay, well, I'm out in the fucking open now. How can I use a spark plug to break this shit? Let me see the spark plug. The porcelain inside these things turns car windows to tissue paper. That could scramble a brain pretty good. That's exactly what I was thinking. Real, I was the window. Y'all are dumb as hell, bro. Wait for him to get closer. No, his head, bro. Dumbass. Oh, fuck. One more. Lee, Let's go. Get him. Easy peasy, baby. Nice. Thanks for Easy fucking back. peasy. Sure. Dude, that shit is nothing to me, dude. I'm the zombie murker, dude. Grab that shit. Grab that shit and fuck him up. Okay, spark plug his ass. Yeah, easy fucking easy, bro. Dude, where'd your weapon go? Into that ice pick sized hole. <laughs> Holy shit. It's cool. Now we've got this. Are you two done? Upgrade. 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 Door. Big time. That should help. Is there anything else over here that we can use? No. Why don't you guys lag behind just in case this goes to hell? Okay. We'll be right behind you. Hassan is with a big titty zombie girlfriend, goth mommy. No thank you. No zombies. How the fuck am I going to cook both of these? How am I going to sauce them up? Easy peasy, baby. Rat. Oof. That was fucking... I'm sauce gardener, dude. Hello in there. We're here to help. Please just go away. Let's go, guys. In a minute. Oh my God, she's if you such open a classic. Up, we can take you I can't safer. get along with ladies We've got a group type in shit. No, no, no. She's in trouble. No. Miss, we're coming in. Oh my God, here. <laughs> we're here to help. Sorry, whether you like it or not. How does she block the door from the outside? Is a real question. Stop! Just stop! I'm coming out. I think. Wonder if she's the infected one. You're hurt. Oh God. I, I said stay away. We need to get you help. It's too late for that. Guys, she's been bitten. What? I told you, I said go away. I'm bit. But you wouldn't just leave. Let's calm down. You could be fine. I won't be fine. My boyfriend was bitten. You get sick and you die and, and you come back and you kill anything you can find. You have a boyfriend? Glenn. I don't want that. It's not Christian. Please. Just leave me, please go. Glenn is horny, bro. Respect. Okay, we'll leave. Just try to take care of yourself for whatever time you have left. You have a gun. So? Can I borrow it? What do you mean, borrow? Give it to me. I can just, you know, end this, and then, and then there's no problem. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Please, I don't want to be one of them. They're, they're satanic. We can't let you do that to yourself. Then do it for me! We need to get going. Yeah, I'd rather kill her. Give it to me, please! Just fucking kill crazy. her. Please, step back. It's just two seconds, just one bullet, and I can be with my family, and it'll all be fine. Miss. Back up! Please! Oh my god. Whoa! <laughs> You're right, I did make a difficult choice. I should have just fucking axed her ass, dude. Whoa, take it easy. We just want to help. You can't. Miss, just relax now. You need to think this through. We'll find you a doctor. It'll be okay. Yeah, That's okay, dude. Yeah, I got the best zombie no, doctor no. in America, in Atlanta. Bro, come on. Come on. Of course she was supposed to be killed. Like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, Glenn. Weak constitution, my boy. She she heard doctor and thought it was the medical bills. Here they come! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Get in! Yeah, the real problem is the fucking noise, dude. That was Everyone a big right? L. Yeah, we had some close calls, but Glenn is fine and well yeah. We're okay. I've got a few cans of gas for your pickup in the trunk of my car. Good to hear it. And things back here? Quiet. Our friend is still in and out of won't survive any more stress. The next order of business is getting those pills out of the pharmacy. 
But the real next order of business for now is to end today's broadcast after a measly 10 hours. Apologies to the chatters who are like, bro, that's a half day. Um, but, you know, sorry to do it to you, but had to do it to him. <sighs> I'll, uh, I'll start gaming earlier tomorrow. I really enjoyed this game. So, so fear not. Amazing gaming session. Another 10 hour in the books. You already know what this is about. You already know what it is. What a fucking day, dude. What a fucking day. Gaming is back. Immaculate gaming session. The Walking Dead, more like the Walking Peak. Actually. Anyway, love you all, and I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye bye. Yeah, yeah.